I always knew we'd win. Men are haunted by the vastness of eternity, and so we ask ourselves, will our actions echo across the centuries? Will strangers hear our names long after we're gone and wonder who we were, how bravely we fought, how fiercely we loved? The time traveling YouTube gaming philosopher kung fu artist footballing Buddha from the home and that's how it's done. of the undefeated racing schooner Blue Nose. Ragnarok Total War is back on a YouTube boys. Finally, I am back and ready to play lots and lots of Total War. I hope everyone is well today. A little bit of technical difficulties. We're about seven minutes late as per the scheduled time. Let's get ready to rumble. Total War, Troy Mythos. One of the underrated games of the of the genre. Comrade Guy says, Nanu, what do we have here? A Ragnarok scream. Comrade Guy, great to see you, my friend. So this footage here, let me just read the description for the box. Let me see if I can find it. Um, just so you guys are aware of what's, what's, uh, what you're witnessing. Um, show more. Okay, so uh, we're playing some good old-fashioned Troy Mythos, obviously. As Odysseus on legendary difficulty, as usual. I mean, is there really any other difficulty than legendary? The first three Master parts of this of let's play, so this is part one, consists of pre-recorded early access gameplay that originally aired as a 30 plus hour continuous stream. That 30 hour stream is now lost to time, but thankfully, all my videos are stored in the vault. Uh, we'll be continuing live gameplay of this campaign from part four on. But for now, I need to get you all caught up on what's gone down thus far. I'll be providing live commentary. Obviously, I'm live right now for part one and two. While part three, part three will be pre-streamed live commentary. So it'll be a little bit wonky because I will be talking to a chat that is in the past so that should be interesting um we'll see how that that works out but uh comrade guy says yeah i'm a noob i can't handle legendary that's cool that's cool um you know like it's you know it's it's not as uh i i when i start first started playing total war i thought the same thing but legendary is not as is um as tough as you think it is i think i think like a big part of legendary is um the psychological aspect of it um thinking like oh this is the hardest difficulty it's gonna be it's just you know they just the ai gets just more more cheats and more units and stuff but if you're organized and patient and take your time it's um it's very manageable 
Uh, Karma guy says normal. Uh, so normal is the campaign for me. Hey man, I mean that's if that's the way you want to play it, most definitely uh, get your experience in that way and um, just have some fun. I know like the normal difficulty campaigns can be a uh, you know it's just you, you nice a lot more relaxing and you can do the th you have a lot more flexibility to do the things that you want to do. Whereas a uh, legendary difficulty, um, you have to. Um, kind of um you, you, or sorry what i'm trying to say is i'm playing on legendary difficulty sometimes you're forced into a lot of situations that you don't really want to be in a lot of uncomfortable situations and stuff so that's cool but yeah comrade guys great to see you man i'm happy to be back finally um, but I've got I've got heaps of content coming for you guys. Uh, we're we're gonna be this is gonna be a long stream today. We're streaming for you've risked the safety of like ten or eleven hours. So yeah, but again, this is pre-recorded gameplay. You have my we'll be caught up soon. You will be returned to you, brother. I can fight. Go. Seek shelter. Mm, Karma guy says, yeah, the There'll biggest reason in the fact that I can't zoom in on the troops and I like to look at the troops during combat. Yeah, no, that's a big thing. I've actually, I don't know if we're going to do it in this Helen's campaign when I pick it up, but I've been playing a, a lot of, um, King a lot of historical total war of late without using the battle interface. Like I've been Troy. playing in cinematic mode and Just I've been loving it, intended. absolutely loving it. So we might try it in this. The only thing with this is that we'll have to switch in and out of it to use the general commands um, because there's no, as far as I know, I'll have to look and see if there's some hotkeys for the general commands, but um, yeah, maybe, maybe we'll see that. Uh, see some of that in this campaign. We'll see see how she goes. But uh, yeah, that's part four, which will be on Wednesday. Wednesday, part four, when we get this rolling, uh, will be live gameplay. So yeah, uh, comrade guy says, well, I can. It's just hard. This I gotta do the battle to too. Helen's yeah, it, it's and you know. That is war. Play the game the way you uh, way you enjoy it, man. That's the way to do it. King Agamemnon of High Walled Mycenae must avenge this. But my goodness, this is a brother. gorgeous. Uh, I, I love I love the ambiance for this uh, for this game, and I think this is one of the. Um, you are king of Ithaca. One of the most of underrated deception. total wars out there right Wise now. It's just kind of everyone's just kind of like great heroes, you know, like Achilles himself. You know, everyone tried we'll it and, and just forgot counsel. about it and I'm like this game is freaking good nobody covers each it, of Helen's which original is kind of sad because uh, whether to honor their oath yeah the, on the music the ambiance all the top notch and there are some really cool campaign mechanics own. in this as well um, Comrade Guy says, Owens, you have gotten the chance uh, to play Warhammer 3. Uh, have I gotten the chance to play Warhammer 3? I have not. not. Um, it's not even installed raiders. on my system right now. Um, and an the thing is, I ha I've had early access for it, but uh, I have not had a chance to play it. Um, there's a couple. I want to uninstall Skyrim before... Um, confront your enemies without fear. Um, I want to uninstall... Um, Skyrim before I load it just to make a little bit more space on my uh, my my hard drive so I got to do that um, uh, comrade guy says yeah yeah I liked it sure the minor settlements are harder but also more fun than just field battles yeah I'm interested to check it out but honestly I don't really want to play the version of the game that's out right now I just I want to play the big um, sandbox sandbox map uh, Matt. Uh, yeah, boy, Blue says bad name with the epic deal. Yeah, you know what? That that really tarnished the game. They really shouldn't have done that. It, it was obviously a cash grab. But in a way, it, um, that cash grab allowed them to... Because the difference between the game, the epic game release, and what came a year later, night and day. Like, I feel like... If CA had released it on Steam instead of on Epic and everybody's like, oh man, this game is terrible, CA might have given up on it. 
but because of the epic deal they got that money and then um and then used a year of development and the game what came after is is, is you know like mythos troy like the mythos version of the game is awesome i i love it it's like a little bit of fantasy features but not too much uh, yeah, boy blue says uh, CA abandoned the game uh, abandoned the game at launch. Yeah, that's the thing they they abandoned it at launch But I think that money that got from epic um, Was invested into the mythos and the historical mode though. I haven't played the historical mode. I'd be interested to check it out, but um, uh, Boy blue says uh, the skybox killed this game for me everything uh, be orange all the time is pretty naff uh yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> orange is my favorite color, so I don't mind the orange. But I like, I like that uh, sort of little bit of stuff in there. But I can see, I can see what you mean. How it'd be a little bit, a uh, little bit unsettling. Like if you're playing it for long hours at a time and stuff. Uh, Boy Blue says Epic bought the mod support infrastructure. Oh, I didn't know that. That's too bad, because this is a game that would uh, really flourish with some great mods, and I, I don't think. I don't think the Epic, like Epic, has a big modding community, right, for it. Uh, Comrade Guy says, "Yeah, Immortal Empires is what most people wait for, but it's still pretty good." Yeah, yeah. Like the thing is, the other thing is with Warhammer Three, it does look good. Um, I've heard like a little bit of. I just watched Angry Angry Joe's review on it, which was pretty good. He gave, I think, he gave it an eight out of ten. But uh, performance issues are a big thing, but that'll get cleared up in time, I'm sure. I, I, I have no doubt about that. But uh, the thing is, for me, I am only interested in two of the factions in Warhammer 3. The other factions, I'm just like, bleh. <laughs> um, I, you know, I'm mildly into, like, kind of like on the fence with a third faction, but anyway. Uh, Boy Blue says, "Pretty sure Troy was Epic's first modded game at launch. Uh, it's a beautiful game. It just and gets really hard on the eyes after a while for me." Yeah, no, fair enough. Fair enough. I can I can see that. I can I can uh, I can understand that. Oh, sorry guys. I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what was wrong with me when I was recording this half retarded. But uh, this is good because I. You know what? Watching this today for me is gonna be a, a good refresher. Well, I'm watching this for the next couple days before we get into the live gameplay because I loaded up the save file and I was looking at the interface it's been so long since I played this like this was all recorded pre-release uh, Troy Mythos I was recording this before uh, before Mythos came out and then I did like a continuous stream like a 30 hour stream with all the content that I pre-recorded um, so this is, and, and this that was the last time I've played this game because um, yeah, but I, I really want to continue this campaign and so we're going to be continuing the campaign live gameplay on Wednesday, but um, I, I'm going to need a little bit of a refresher as to how the game works, Knowledge the mechanics the and stuff, the campaign mechanics and all that stuff. So this will be good. Mm -hmm. Comrade guy says, I wake up orange, I go to shower orange, I eat breakfast orange, I leave work orange, all I see is orange. <laughs> I um, I don't want to get into the details, but I've been seeing too much orange lately, even though it is my favorite color. Uh, in recent events have made me sort of uh, question that a little, a little bit. Uh, Warhammer 3 just feels underbaked. Dawi Zar is all I want. Let me pledge to Total War says, welcome back, Rag. Thank you uh, very much, Lemon Pledge Total War. I've got some really interesting ideas for some projects coming up, and I would love to uh, get some collaborations in with you and Wyvern and uh, a whole slew of other folk. But uh, I'll, uh, I'll I'll be giving some details for that. Uh, I'll, I'll get in touch with you for that sort of stuff. But um, yeah, I've got some some interesting stuff that I want to want to give a try try for and I'm super excited for the 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 hot seat component of, of Warhammer 3 like um, I don't know much about it like I, I I honestly like everyone knows more about Warhammer 3 than I do right now so um, I don't know um, 
got a lot of Warhammer 3 catching up to do, but I'll, I'll slowly get there. Uh, Boy Blue says, I fully accept the Horde Max uh, mechanics from this game will come into play more in Warhammer 3. The Horde changes on here were huge. Oh, shit. Um, really? Because I remember when they first released the Horde and I, like, the... Uh, and I played one of the factions just briefly, and I was like, oh, I hate playing as a horde. But uh, I'll have to revisit that. Uh, Boy Blue says, yeah, also this game looks so much better at night. Yeah, true. Very true. But uh, what you were saying, uh, yeah, Boy Blue, about uh, Warhammer 3 feeling underbaked, I think that there's a couple of things to consider. Like, number one is that the last two years we've been in a sort of twilight zone where everyone's <laughs> everyone's been working at home right so the game was uh, very likely developed you know with a skeleton crew at the office at the studio and majority of the developers were working from home so that's gonna affect some of the polish on the game and number two is uh, you know it just came out and I mean when Warhammer 1, Warhammer 2 first came out, there were there were issues and problems and things like that. But, like, you know, the games are continually developing. Give it, like, the same amount of development time as Warhammer 2 has received. And, my goodness, when, when you know, the final product, the final, final product, when they finally say, okay, that's enough. And who knows? That could be, like, five years from now. Um, because there's so much stuff they could continually add to the game, um, it's gonna be it's gonna be a masterpiece. Um, but I mean, right now, you know, one of the reasons why I haven't played it yet is because I'm waiting for them to release the rest of the game. Um, right now, it's just like a a fraction of the game, right? Lemon says. Uh, I think the mortal, uh, the, or sorry, the multiplayer campaign in theory sounds super fun and exciting, but more than two to three people, and it becomes utter chaos in my opinion. So many moving parts. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I, I definitely want to try it out, but I feel like it would, you know, total chaos is, you know, one thing, but maybe do kind of like a, uh, some create something where it's like, uh, for example, like crack at eight peaks, right? Um, all pick factions that are in a race to crack eight peaks and have you know see who can get there first you know something like that I, I feel like would be kind of fun to do I, I don't know but again I don't know much about it um, yeah boy blue says big facts I'm not upset about Warhammer 3 I just report the bugs I find and keep playing yeah you know it's um yeah and I mean that's kind of been you know, remember Rome 2 when it first came out. I, I I wasn't a Total War player back then. I luckily discovered Rome 2 before, uh, long after the initial the initial problems with the game. Um, but once I had discovered it, um, most of those bugs were gone. But I I heard and I've seen clips of how, how incredibly atrocious the uh, the AI functioning was um, on release. So I, it's, you know, and these games, I mean, Total War, the games are so complex and intricate that, I mean, there's bound to be a couple of bugs here and there. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. Comrade Guy says, yeah, Hordes in Warhammer 2 sucked. One of my favorite legendary lords, Nakai, sucked to play as even uh, Doe. I love that guy. And yeah, Boy Blue says, that's what I've said as well. When Warhammer 3 ends, people will have moved on past the rough launch stage. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Uh, Comrade Guy says, yeah, they probably have two to five years worth of DLCs planned already. So we only have like 25% of the full game at launch. The foe has shite. Yeah, like, I, I mean. If you consider the size of the Immortal Empires map to the current map that's out, it's less than 25%. I'd say it's probably 10%, maybe even less than 10% of, uh, of full game. Yeah, Boy Blue says there are far more obstructions or range shooting and magic in Warhammer 3 than anywhere else. Interesting. Interesting. I'm going to have to evaluate that stuff once I've 
had a chance to play it, play it and stuff. Lemon Play says, yeah, I understand why people are pissed, but at the same time, the game just came out. No DLCs, no ROR, no FLCs. Like, people hated Skaven until it could cause DLC drops, so people just need time. Yeah, Skaven has gotten, like, a ton of love. It almost seems like it's uh, CA's favorite faction, but I don't think... Um, I don't think you're ever gonna see me play Skaven. I unless 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 my good friend from Russia, Alexander, can convince me, and he almost convinced me with a little bit of artwork that he did. But I, you know, my thing is, you know, there are no rats in Valhalla. You know, there are no rats in Valhalla. So as Ragnarok Total War, uh, as the Ragnarok Total War channel, how can I ever play as Skaven? Unless I decide to play as the villain, you know what I mean? Uh, Lemon Pledge says, the only thing I have a real issue with is CA's responses. We're taking a lot of time to make it perfect and fix everything the right thing. The game drops and it's no bueno. Just would uh, rather have... Yeah, I, you know, I'm, my impression is that... Uh, CA is Victory under a lot of pressure from Sega, probably, as they're sort of like overlords. And, you know, they announced the release date and they stuck to it when probably the game should have should have taken a little bit more time before it was released. Maybe, maybe, I don't know. I don't, like, I, like I said, I haven't played myself. Like, I don't know how big the issues are and stuff. But, I mean, s someone obviously felt that the game was ready at launch One of your but units has I, gone I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing that people are still playing Warhammer 2 or that Warhammer 2 is you know in theory maybe a better game at, at, as of right now than Warhammer 3 even though Warhammer 3 has made a lot of really big advancements but um, yeah I, I don't know I haven't played it so I don't know guys how is the sound? Are you guys able to hear me over the gameplay, or should I bump the? Uh, should I adjust the? the um, are losing heart. Should I adjust the the gameplay sound? Should I bump it down a little bit? Um, yeah, boy, Blue says I only have 130 hours on Warhammer 3 and over 2K on Warhammer 2. There's plenty of time. Yeah, that's that's exactly it. You hit it right. Uh, yeah. Uh, Lemon Flesh says, uh, them to be honest and be like, yeah, we effed up and it's bad. Honesty is always the right way to go about things, I think. And yeah, Boy Blue says, agreed, Lemon, I didn't play Skaven until Icket. And Comrade Gus says, I hate Skaven, they are such a pain in the bo booty and cheeks, uh, booty cheeks to fight, but I also love to be Skaven. Uh, so please, nerf, just kidding. Yeah, I I've heard that Skaven is super, super fun to play, and they they've got really cool ca campaign mechanics. Um, I can kind of get a little bit of a, a <laughs> cover guy says Total War Sonic when um, I can kind of get a little bit of a Skaven fix with um, Altharion. No, not Altharion. Who? What's the guy? The Negra Negarite guy. What's his name? The guy with the bow. The the high elf with the bow. What's his name? I can't remember his name. Oh uh, yeah, Total War, Total War Sonic would be interesting. What I want, I've been thinking about this a lot lately, and I'm probably going to make a video on no it. But I want to see Total War Mech Warrior. Oh my god! Oh my god! That would be amazing. Uh, yeah, Boy Blue says there seems to be a lack of play testing, which is interesting because you know they give the big YouTubers like a lot of early access. I'm surprised they don't try and get more feedback. From them though I do know they have like a lot of round tables and stuff I've never attended one but um, they do do like round tables and stuff so there is opportunity for the community to give feedback I don't know how much um, uh, symphony says a lithonar nice okay yes uh, yeah it's kind of a little bit skaven like not quite but I can kind of get my skaven fixed that way but uh, yeah, Boy Blue says, like, there are bugs that would be easily found if it had been played more pre-launch. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Uh, the trouble is, uh, like, from what I've seen of their streams, the, there's not a lot of people at CA who, who, like, know how to play the games, sadly. Um, or, or at least know how to play the games well. Um, at an elite level. Um, just, you know... <laughs> 
just outsource it to Legend, you know? <laughs> He'll get the games fixed. Um, you know? Uh, Lemon Pledge Soul War says that sad thing in February 17th was already a release date later than they were going to go with. So they already had extra time and yet it wasn't more polished. Like, come on. Yeah, it's true. But again, you got to give them a little bit of leeway because, you know, the last two years everyone was probably working from home. But with the resources of a company like uh, CA and how much money they've made from Warhammer 2, they should really be able to, like, you know... Yeah, I, I mean, it's hard to, to excuse it, but remember what happened with a CD Projekt Red uh, with Cyberpunk. Like, they kept pushing the game back and back and back and back, and then finally they put a release date and they stuck to it, and the game was not even cl Like, the game was atrociously uh, bad on release. Um, like, that game should have been a 10... Like, that game should have been, like possibly greatest game of all time kind of thing and um yeah unfortunately on release got released sooner than it was ready uh yeah boy boy says uh game is a little loud uh close but that's it okay i'll, I'll I'm, I'm gonna bump it down here in a second once i get caught up in the chat actually let me do it right now i'll catch up in the chat in a second a welcome boost. Uh, let me see here i'm gonna Bump the desktop audio Shining down Odysseus. four decibels, I think. Ever faithful. Uh, no, nope, that's not how I do it. Oh. With sword and with wit. And that is if I can remember how to do this. Okay, there it is. All right, bump it down four decibels. Two decibels, I don't think is going to do too much. We'll bump it down three decibels. That should be good. Four seems a little extreme. But it's already bumped down a little bit. But, uh, yeah, you know, I, I haven't been paying attention to my, um, to my audio as much as I should be lately. And um, I, I want to get refocused on that. Uh, comrade guy says, yeah, I can hear you. It's a little loud when you zoom in, but overall it's good. Yeah, boy blue says, just when you zoom in, its units gets gets loud. Yeah, that's true. Three decibels should be fine. Like it shouldn't, yeah, yeah th this should be a little bit better. Like it should still be loud enough when we're on the campaign map and it should help a little bit um, when we're uh, when we're in the z in those zoom ins. Lemon Pled says Alithanar, and yes, and Symphony also said Alithanar. Yeah, Alithanar. Um, I did a Alithanar campaign when they. I don't know if you guys remember, but a CA like a like two and a half years ago, like around this time of the some about two years ago, they at the beginning of the pandemic they released a beta called Proving Grounds. I think it was called the Proving Grounds and it had no supply lines but like it was totally like they they totally changed like uh, the the price structure of most of the buildings and stuff like that the proving grounds beta i played through on my own time in alitha and our campaign i can't remember if i recorded that stuff i don't think i recorded any of that sometimes when i play on my own i'll record it with without any commentary for example like this uh, Comrade Guy says Total War Warhammer 40k. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I'm ready for 40k. Um, I'll, I'll, I don't know. I don't know. Especially seeing how silly some of the Warhammer 3 factions are. I, I'm like, that's just my humble opinion. Uh, but I, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's lore, lore accurate. Um, but. I don't know if I'm ready for 40k. What I would love to see before 40k is a Forgotten Realms or Lord of the Rings uh, Total War. Those are those are kind of on the top of my list for, for the next sort of fantasy foray. And before 40k, I would kind of like to see a historical world war, whether it's World War One, World War Two, or World War Three. Um, and a historical, you know, before we see 40k, I would kind of see, like to see something like that, but 
Yeah, I, I know that there's a, you know, and 40k is probably is very likely. Um, though probably wouldn't be for some time. But especially the Most relationship, sense. how, like, the care that Sihei has given to the Warhammer... The, um... The Warhammer brand? Is that the right word? Property? Um, and the community would love to see it. Lemon Pledge says he used to be my favorite high elf until they moved his ancient cunning trait to the second part of the blue skill tree line and gave him a wrathy extra dose of roids. <laughs> Marathi. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm gonna have to give him a give him a try when we uh, when we get the uh, the big old map for Warhammer Three. Comrade guy says they could have uh, could make like 40k games with lore they have. And he What's says, uh, Marathi be tweaking. Um, yeah, Boy Blue says, I'd kill for a Total War Warcraft. Yeah, that would be something. That would be something. Um, I'd be into that. Uh, Warcraft 2 was my favorite of the war from, from the Warcraft genres. I was huge into Warcraft 2 when it came out. Yeah, Boy Blue says, just give a legend an extra month before the rest of the world. Let him break it fully, then give it to the content creators. Yeah, uh, exactly. Legend had 800 hours before lunch, laughing my ass off. Holy shit. Holy shit, that's nuts. Comrade Guy says, I know, right? He sure is dedicated. Yeah, uh, but I, you know what? I... I'll tell you something. Uh, uh, what I was th I was just musing about it earlier today. I miss Legend of Total War's historical Total War campaigns, and I know like he, you know, he's moved past it, and I don't, I don't know that he'll ever come back to historical Total War. But I kind of like musing about a way to convince him to do it. I'll make him an offer he can't refuse. Uh, Le Legend Pledge Total War. Uh, Lemon Pledge Total War says, "I wonder what things we'll look at in terms of sales for them once Legend partially retires and doesn't stream five six days a week." Yeah, you know what? That um, yeah, that that'll be a sad day, but I don't think it's any any time for sure, anytime soon. Um, yeah, Boy Blue says uh, Cyberpunk seventy seven should have been the GTA five of the future. Yeah, exactly, one hundred percent. But who knows? Maybe, maybe Rockstar will make a futuristic GTA game at some point, and uh, you know, because they've gone they've gone back in time with like uh, Dead Red, and done like a Western GTA. So who knows? Who knows? Maybe we'll get your, get a futuristic one. Do it right. Uh, Lemon says, uh, I still haven't hit 100 hours, lol. I still haven't even installed it. <laughs> yeah, Boy Blue says, Vampire Coast Marketing sold me on the franchise. Wasn't a creator. I have 131 hours as of right now. Still not won a campaign. <laughs> I, I've heard the campaign is tough. I heard it's it's really tough. Uh, Comrade Guy says, same. I only have 86 hours so far, but I haven't really had that much free time to play lately. Damn, you guys are you guys are racking up some crazy hours too, man. That's the you know that's nothing to uh, shrug at. Lemon uh, Pledge Total War says, yeah, work and life keep me busy, but try and squeeze in time when I can. Listen to the Lord of Ithaca. Yeah, Boy Blue says, wow, You've Patch plus Elden words. Ring have a lot of my time at the moment too. I was watching a little bit of. Um, a little bit of uh, Dr. Disrespect and and um, DM Wyvern playing Elden Ring the other day. But I I don't know. I just wasn't into it too much. I, you know, I don't know. Uh, Lemon says, uh, I don't even pay attention to marketing by CA. I just want to know something is fun and content creators provide that. CA's limited cheese slash exploit plan for Warhammer 3 so far seems fairly personal. LOL. I look forward and Karma Guy up. says, "Oh yeah, right. Can you explain the different resource mecha mechanics?" Oh yeah, the resource mechanics are, are super cool in this. Um, basically, there's four resources. You've got um, God. I can't scroll. This is all pre-recorded. So you've got bronze, marble, uh, wood, and and food. So you oh and gold. So so gold is a unique resource. Is it, in there's only a certain amount of it in the campaign like it's a, it's a limited whereas the other resources are unlimited but you use the there's a lot of cool aspects of this game and once i once i have 
once I'm playing the game, uh, uh, tune in on Wednesday and I'll, I'll go through all this stuff in more detail. But this is all pre-recorded right now. This was pre-recorded like six months ago uh, during during early access for the game. So I'm I'm going through it kind of slow, and um, you know I, you can kind of see that I'm kind of learning the the interface and all all that stuff. So kind of going through it a little bit slow here but the resources essentially food is to feed your armies okay so your armies will have an upkeep cost of food and sometimes and like your more elite units will have an upkeep cost of bronze as well um yeah I, and and then Victory certain buildings will require only wood but some buildings will require wood and marble or only marble and i think some buildings require wood marble and and bronze different buildings have require different things and some some units require gold i think to recruit and some buildings require gold but you can barter with other in the diplomacy it's super cool and you can really get lost in it you can trade those resources you can offer you can offer like a straight up deal or you can offer um, a deal over a certain amount of time. So if you're short on food or something, if you're on good relations with someone who has a lot of food and they need, say, bronze, for example, then there's a good chance you can use that bronze to, um, to get food. So super cool system. Um, Yun Soggy one is here. She says, hello, Ragnarok, my only female subscriber. How are you? It is great to see you. She says, life is good, but I have a lot of problems with aliens invading West Virginia. Those things are tough. <laughs> you know, it's funny because I was play I've been playing a lot of Rome 2, and there was like some weird lighting in Rome 2 that made it look like they were UFOs. And um, I, I clipped it, so I'm going to make a video on it at some point. But it happened three different That's times. Um, but yeah, I'll get into that at some point. Uh, yeah, Boy Blue says, Having to play around with the supply line bug in Warhammer 3 has added difficulty in higher campaign settings. Yeah, you know, I'm surprised that the supply line cam campaign mechanic made it into Warhammer 3. Because if you look in the top corner, if you look in the, uh, like at the top of the screen... To the right, the, the bar there, that's your administration cost. Like, the system in this is way better than Warhammer 3. Like, everything has... There's no supply lines. Everything has an administration cost. So, buildings that you build have an administration cost. Um, generals that you recruit and stuff. But the way that it's balanced is so much better. And I thought that Warhammer 3 was going to get rid of the supply lines and put something 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 uh, something like that in it because there's a lot of aspects in there's a lot of things in in this that ended up in Warhammer 3 like for example the flying units being being able to la land that was that that was in this before um, before Warhammer 3 Oh, da, da, da. Yeah, Boy Blue says CA covets the hell out of the 40k franchise. Really, eh? I don't like the sound of that. I don't know if I'll play 40k. I don't know. I probably will if they make a 40k Total War, but I don't know. Lemon Pledge says, I don't even pay attention to marketing by CA. I just want to know if something is fun and content creators provide that. CA's limited cheese slash exploit plan for Warhammer 3 so far seems fairly personal. LOL. He posted a book today on YouTube exclaiming Warhammer 3 and CA, etc. LOL. Uh, who did? I think I missed something. Interesting. Uh, yeah, Boy Blue says, Rag Legend, how's your family? I have an offer you cannot refuse. <laughs> yeah, so what I what I was thinking, so back in the day, Legend used you used to be able to bribe him, right, to do something like you, yeah, chuck him fifty bucks, five hundred bucks, what whatever I don't know, whatever the going rate was, and he would do a campaign or do it do a dare or, or or something like that, right? Um, but now because he's you know. I, I don't even want to speculate as to how much money that he's made over the last couple of years, but it's 
100% it's in the six figures but uh, yearly but it's probably in seven figures uh, territory uh, now I, I would guess I don't know I guess we could go on social blade and get an idea but I don't think social blade accounts for donations and stuff and like when you factor that in it's like um, but anyway so bribing him wouldn't work now it's like you know I could <laughs> I could offer him all the money I make in a year and he'd be like no, I'm not doing a historical total war. But what I was thinking was, what if we started a GoFundMe for, I don't know how much interested there would be in everyone wanting Legend to do a historical total war, but a GoFundMe for Legend to do a historical total war campaign and Legend would get to pick the, what what historical total war it was or maybe get him to do like a, a vote on his channel for it. And all of the money raised from the GoFundMe would be donated to a charity of Legend's choice. I think that would have the possibility of getting him to do a uh, historical total war. So, I don't know. I don't know. What do you guys think? Yunsagi says, hello, Ragnarok Comic Guy. Yeah, boy, Blue Lemon Pledge. Nice to see you all, Yunsagi. My goodness. I, oh my gosh. We had some intense moments there with the uh, trucker campaign. And um, my goodness, it was, um, I, I was so happy to experience all that stuff with you. And uh, my goodness, I've had a rough month. Like I don't even want to tell you how I spent the last month. It was I. I went through one of the darkest times. In, well, I've gone through some pretty dark times in my life, but it was um, it was one hell of an experience the last month. But I. Oh my God, I'm so so happy to be back. Yeah, boy, Blue says howdy to Yunsagi. Comrade guy says how. Hey there, Yunsagi. How's life been treating you? And Comrade Guy says, cool, cool. Um, ah, oh, shit. Yunsagi says, life is good, but I have lots of problems with... Okay, I read that already. Uh, Comrade Guy says, and what? You can't remember every detail of a game you played six months ago. <laughs> SMH rag, I'm disappointed. Don't worry, uh, on Wednesday, if you want, you know, when you tune in on Wednesday, it'll be live gameplay. And um, I'll be able to go into more detail of this. It will go more slowly into this stuff. Um, and uh, get into the details of the game and everything. Because this is a good refresher for me. Uh, Yunsagi says, the only one out of 1.32 subscribers. I can show you my analytics. <laughs> Oh, pardon me. I can show you my analytics and, you know, the viewers, the viewership is like 100% male. That's what it says. <laughs> so, yeah, when I say you're my only female subscriber, it may be. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, Boy Blue says the system in, in this game is a lot better for economy. Yeah, you know, and I was I was surprised, um, surprised not to see... Or I would be surprised not to see some of the some of the stuff in this, but it makes me really hopeful for the next full-fledged um, historical total war, because there's a lot of aspects of Three Kingdoms that I like, and a lot of aspects of this that I like, and I think um, in the right setting, the next historical total war is going to be off the hook. It's going to be so good. Yeah, boy, Blue says I put in 200 hours or so on the Troy at lunch. It's it's a fun game. It's not bad at all. And Comrade Guy says I'll throw money at that GoFundMe. Yeah, man. I you know I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna look into. I've never done a GoFundMe, so I'm gonna look into organizing it. I'm gonna look into organizing it and getting ready because you know something like that you gotta absolutely make sure that there's no shenanigans going on with the money and everything that the money will get to um, you know the charity that that it's supposed to get to right and we'll let legend choose the charity and um, I'll make a video on it and try and try and share well, it with some other youtubers um, maybe and, and just see if we can get a little bit of uh, you know a little momentum behind it and see what kind of money we raise. Um, yeah, but Blue says 100% he'd play Shogun 2. I don't know. He, I, I, maybe. 
I, I feel like maybe he might play three kingdoms. I don't know which one he would, because he's he's pretty done. 100% uh, it wouldn't be Rome 2. <laughs> maybe we could, ah, um, uh, no, I don't know. I don't think, it's still Attila. I was going to say, maybe we could get him to play uh, Medieval Kingdoms 1212, because that's not bad, but it's, at the end of the day, it's still Attila. Um, that's the problem. But I feel like Three Kingdoms has an outside chance. But he's uh, the thing. Is, like the thing is, with all the historicals, uh, the problem is, with all the historical total wars, like his criticism of Shogun Two has been that it doesn't have enough depth. That all of the factions kind of play. But I think you're right. Maybe Shogun Two would probably be the the, the closest, the, the the best chance. Like he said some. You know some good things about about Three Kingdoms. Like he he said, it's a good game, but he's just not interested in. Uh, he's he's not in. He, he he basically said he was done with it. I think, and that he he's not interested in China, like Chinese history and stuff, right? So yeah, I I, I don't know. Um, but I mean, here, here in here lies the problem. Like he, he doesn't like the historical total wars anymore. Like he, he's played Medieval Two to death. He played Rome Two to death to the point where, like, when Rome Two first came out, he loved it, and by the end, of, like, he hates it now. Like hates it. But um, yeah, I don't know. He's definitely not going to play Thrones of Britannia. I don't know. <laughs> That's the problem. I don't know which one he would play. Comrade Guy says, well, I'm a lurk. I'm going to play some uh, DL2. Have a great stream and see you all later from much, much love from your generous, kind, handsome overlord. All right, Comrade Guy, enjoy your gaming. DL2, what's uh, Dark Lords 2? Is that what, it's, uh, what it is? And, and thank you for the lurking. I appreciate it. Yunsagi says, have fun at Comrade Guy. Shogun should be Japan. Yeah, so Shogun is Japan. Um, Three Kingdoms is in China. Um, so two different games. Uh, but Sh Shogun 2 is is a great Total War game, actually. Um, I think that would probably be the one that l would have the highest probability that Legend would play. Because um, he hasn't played it a lot, and it has similar mechanics to Medieval 2. And it's, it's aged well as well. So I don't know. Oh, Dying Light 2. Never heard of it. Interesting. But we're going to be playing some Shogun 2 at some point. Guys, I have so much, so much content planned. Like right now, <laughs> I don't know if I should mention this or not, but right now, um, I'm technically under house arrest. Um, I, and I'm staying at my brother's. So... I'm I, I can't leave uh, so the the premises without my without my brother's um, my brother or his wife accompanying me it's a long story long long tragic tragic story I won't give you guys the sordid details but um, I've got nothing to do but play Total War and stream it um, so I've actually, last week, I didn't have my wireless adapter for my system. Um, like, I've been moving, slowly moving all of my all of my equipment from my apartment over to my brother's place. So my brother's place, there's, um, there's a really sweet uh, basement apartment here. So I'm super, super lucky to have such amazing family. But anyway, I've been slowly uh, moving all of my equipment over here. And every time I think I have everything, I forget something else. Like... I would have the camera on today, but I forgot it. So uh, no, no webcam until until I find it. I'm not sure where it is, but track it down at some point. Um, but yeah, last week uh, because I didn't have the wireless internet adapter, I was pre I've been pre-recording some content and uh, top secret challenge campaign and. Uh, Oh, goodness gracious, I am so excited to get that up, but I don't want to say it's a triple threat challenge. And I am so excited to finish it, but at the same time, knock on wood, I don't want to 
I don't want to give any details away for it because I don't want to jinx it because I'm about 30 plus hours in of the campaign right now and everything is going according to plan but I don't want to lose the, the campaign like I don't want to lose the challenge so um, it's one of those things it's a, a reputation builder I guess um, so I'm hoping for it Comrade Guy says, Dying Light 2 zombie game. Very cool. Very spooky. Interesting. Yeah, Boy Blue says, I still upload Shogun 2 from time to time. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, Shogun 2, it's a great game, man. Yeah, Boy Blue, I didn't realize... Uh, I didn't realize you were in the business of uh, uploading uh, uploading some stuff. I'm gonna... I'm gonna scout you out. ba da da um, but speaking of zombie games, I was at a card shop the other day, and, uh, oh shit, look at this, 404k subscribers, guys, if you want to go support, yeah boy blue, haha, <laughs> DM Wyvern says, Ragnarok, <laughs> what's up Wyvern, <laughs> yeah boy blue, is right there wyvern my man you know what wyvern showing up i'm gonna get on the drums <laughs> wyvern what's cracking buddy i've been i now that i've got my internet connection i'm super excited to have uh, a little chat with you on discord but uh, unfortunately i can't do it while i'm streaming um i mean we could we could pop on the discord you know what? Uh, yeah, if you want, um, I could pop into Discord if I can figure out how to use it. You still there, Wyvern? Yeah, Boy Blue says, nah, not really. Mostly just stuff to prove a point. Still, uh, you got a pretty big following. And uh, Yun Soggy says, hi to DM Wyvern. Shining Odysseus. <laughs> Wyvern says, yow at Ragnarok Total War. Um, yeah, Wyvern, if you're up for it, if you're available right now, I, I'd. I'd be willing to pop into uh, Discord and have a little chat with you if you uh, you're available. Looking forward to connecting. Well, we could connect right now. Up to you. Just beat me. Um. Uh, yeah, give me a second. Let me let me see if it, it's gonna. So it's gonna pop up in the window here when I open Discord. I'll try and take it out quick, but um, as per our gameplay, I don't wanna. Oh, oh. God dang it. God dang it. I'll just give it a second to open. Yeah, sorry guys. Yeah, again, pre recorded, pre recorded stuff. It's. Uh, they all left, so now all I'm housing is a rest. Mmm. <laughs> sounds good sounds good I you know speaking of musical notes um, I've been thinking about uh, trying to learn uh, the old guitar yeah boy blue says chow time lunch just got a uh, just got here gonna fill the belly y'all be good all right yeah boy blue I'm gonna be here all day um, I, I'm gonna go cook up some lunch at some point as well but uh, yeah we're gonna be streaming this till probably about 10 p.m. Eastern time. Maybe a little bit earlier than that. I'll finish up. Yunsagi says, enjoy your lunch. Indeed, enjoy it. All right. All right, there's the Discord. Let me just... Uh, oh, fuck off, Discord. Let me just pull it into the other window. Sorry, guys. You're missing the game. There we go. Uh, DM Wyvern, incoming call. Gonna join the call. Wyvern? Let me just pull it into the other window. Sorry guys, you're missing the game. There we go. DM Wyvern, incoming call. Gonna join the call. Uh, Wyvern, pull it into the other window. I don't know what's happening here. Why is there? I had to. I had to mute you. Oh, okay, okay. You're listening. I'm like, <laughs> that's what I thought was happening. I didn't know if it was happening on my end or your end. What's cracking, Wyvern? It's, it's good to hear your voice. Oh it's good to my gosh, I was gonna say the exact same thing. My God, man. Dude, I have had one hell of a uh, uh, of two months, man. My life has been pure chaos. I don't even. I don't even. I don't know if I'm ready. Morn knows where I've been. 
<laughs> more knows where I've been, but I don't know if I'm ready to uh, disclose to my channel where I've been. Um, I'm a friend during good times. I'm a friend during bad times. Yeah, that's the kind of friend that I am, and I'll always be. Yeah, I haven't you know, told you the full also, details of my. Yeah, we, we haven't had a chance to connect, so you, I haven't haven't told you the full. I probably it'll come out eventually for the channel because I I if anything I. You know, I'd like to call myself a man of integrity, but I have, uh, I don't have a lot of integrity, but at least honesty. I'd like to, you know, keep an honest, um, but I mean, how much of my personal life and uh, YouTube persona, you know, don't want to mix too much of them and things like that. But anyway, yeah, um, well, when, when we're having a private conversation, I'll uh, fill you in the details and I'm sure it'll come out. But as far as, you know, as far as the channel's concerned, I've been in Helsinki for the last two months chasing chasing, uh, chasing snow princesses. Snow princesses <laughs> as far as the eye can see. <laughs> yeah, and so is any red-blooded Viking spends most of their time doing well, Ragnarok? Well, exactly, exactly. You know, my in, my, in my boat is sitting in the in the harbor. My boat mm -hmm. is uh, here's uh, sitting in the harbor. I'll just pull it up on uh, on on the screen here for you guys i've got a live feed of oh it's kind of blurry son of a bitch <laughs> see i've got too many tabs open uh running internet connections and my my wireless adapter is not quite as good as my, my there's, previous there's adapter. A harbor. <laughs> but uh helsinki harbor uh, there's a boat sitting there that's got my well it's got my name on it and there's there's my uh my longhouse is right there as well, but oh my gosh, Helsinki, man, we gotta go, Wyvern. We gotta go. <laughs> we we gotta do it. Plan it out. <laughs> well, I'll think about that. I'm more of a, a warm, warm weather. Come uh, on, come. buddy. Well, you know what? You know we're reptilian, right? We seek heat. We, oh, we good God! Heat. Don't tell me that. Yeah. Don't tell me that. I've been listening to a lot of David Icke's uh, videos, and he, he's he's been oh, talking right. about the reptilians. Hey, so, <laughs> that's my that's my people. That's my kid. Oh, don't knock. God, don't me. tell me that, Wyvern. <laughs> don't tell me that. Oh, man. But yeah, I'll... pardon the paint, huh? You're going to be streaming for uh, several hours today. Yeah, well, this remember I I don't know if you recall, but um, many moons ago, um, when the um, when this game was in pre-release, I, I had early access, and I pre-recorded about twenty some odd hours. You were you were missing you were missing when I did this stream, but so I pre-recorded twenty hours of gameplay without any commentary, right? And then I did a continuous 30 hour stream. So the first 20 hours or so was all that pre-recorded pre -recorded gameplay. And then I did 10 hours of live streaming at the end. And it was a 30 hour stream. And as you know, a 30 hour continuous stream, as you know, um, YouTube, you can't, um, like 12 hours is the limit, right? Uh, and, and you can't replay anything beyond 12 hours. I learned that from our Meth Warrior gameplay. <laughs> uh, yes, exactly, exactly. But Where we went on a twelve-hour, you know, event horizon. Such um, to, my, to my to my everlasting shame. <laughs> such a great game. Such a great game. Um, so so this is that this is that this is from from that this is uh, this is all that pre-recorded um, um, campaign footage so I figured it would be a good thing to do now so that I could get caught up with all of my subscribers anybody who wants to stop by because I can you know I'm just playing the videos in the background here and I can catch up on the chat right and I can chat with you mm -hmm. um, don't mm -hmm. have to worry and and the gameplay is still going right with so mm. on Wednesday we will be all caught up and I'm gonna continue this campaign because this is a campaign that I've been dying to continue but no one's, you know, seen most of it, and it's not, you know, I, I'd like the footage to be available on YouTube as well for replay value. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, yeah, this is all pre-recorded stuff, so I've got about 30 hours worth of pre-recorded stuff that I'm going to get through um, I really today, that. tomorrow. You're heading back into, you know, once you come back from my hi your hiatus, 
the first thing that you do at your channel is go back to a game that you authentically like playing. Yeah, which is absolutely. Cool. You know, uh, obviously, if you're a content creator, you know, it just seems to me that the smart thing to do is to, you know, be on that next big title, whether it's, yeah. let's say, Elf String for role players yeah. uh, or Warhammer 3 for Total War content creators. So, you know, I like the fact that you, you kind of, you know, go to the beat of your own drum. Exactly. And, and um, you know, this is, this, is, this is what you enjoy. Yeah. Being of what you want to offer, you know, your, your audience here. So, so you know, hat, my hat tip to you to that, yeah. you know. You Plus Warhammer 3. Warhammer 3, I'm waiting for the rest of the game. Like, <laughs> what? I said you could have come back and, you know, done a Warhammer 3 thing, but you didn't. So I, 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 I still haven't. It's not even installed on my system yet. I've had early access for it, <laughs> and it's not even installed on my system. Um, that's how behind I am. But, um, yeah, I'm waiting for the rest of the game. Like, uh, I don't want to play the campaign that's out now, and there's only, like, two and a half factions that I'm really interested in to play as. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm just like... And I, I'm hearing there's a lot of... Maybe not a lot, but a certain, certain Some nitpicky, yeah, nitpicky issues and stuff with the game. Which is mm -hmm. understandable. It just got released. Uh, Yoon Soggy says, David Ike, he's the best for explaining things. He is awesome. He um, He's thoroughly researched. Um, he's got some wild theories, but um, when you look at how on point he's predicted everything that's happened in the last couple of years, like 20 years ago, he predicted this stuff happening. Um, it makes you kind of wonder what the he stuff also he's has saying. He about me, so if you oh. read closely, you can oh really? The really? rival, Devlin. really, really interesting. Yeah. So Wyvern, I this was weekend, prophesied. this weekend we're playing some Mech Warrior. Are we? Well, I mean, we're doing whatever you want to do, man. Like um... we're we're gonna play some Mech Warrior. I'm not gonna stream it on on Ragnarok Total War. What I'm gonna do is um, so. I, I'm I'm late. I'm always late to the party. I've I've had the ability to ha put memberships on the channel for like so long, right? Like it's over a year that it's been enabled <laughs> for my channel, and I still haven't gotten it together. But it's no. almost ready. It's almost ready, and it's gonna be ready this weekend. So, um, what I want to do, what I'm hoping to do is like every once in a while we'll play Mech Warrior, but some of the things that, um, some of the bonuses that I want to offer aside from like the emojis and the badges that are standard, one of the things I want to offer is campaign requests for members. Members can request a campaign. And one of the other thing is, so the name of the membership is, is, um, Club Valhalla. So that's oh, the I name like of the membership, Club Valhalla. And if you remember, our Let's Play for Mech Warrior was called Club Valhalla. So oh, I'd, really? I'd like to offer my members of Club Valhalla to come and join us in the mechs. So what I'll do is every time we will, every time we play Mech Warrior, you can stream it on your channel. And that'll that'll avoid like the clusterfuck with the chats, so you uh -huh. can stream it on your channel, and I'll release a video earlier in the day saying the mechs are on the move or something like that. Come join us. Any Club Valhalla man uh, can come join us, and they'll have links to to the Discord or whatever or your video, so that they can they can join us in the mechs. That's a great idea. I'm, I'm absolutely uh, open for that. And, awesome. And, and, awesome. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Thank you, Wyvern. Awesome. <laughs> of course. Awesome. Um, yeah, so we don't have to do it like every week kind of thing. Like I was thinking like a once a month or once every two months kind of thing. Whenever whenever the, the mech warrior bug strikes, you know? <laughs> yes, of course. Uh, because, let me, sorry. Let me just say uh, that uh, I'm I'm very happy that you're back. You know, oh, awesome. you know, awesome. And uh, wishing you health and happiness for the rest of this year. There's a good year in front of you, Ragnarok. I hope uh, so. I think so. Um, I'm honestly like my current situation is. Um, I, I was saying earlier, I'm I'm basically on uh, on house arrest. Um, like I I'm not allowed to leave my brother's place. Um, so. I've got nothing but time and my workstation. So I've got so much content planned 
pretty excited. I've um, been to it. I've been to it. You know, the, my channel has been a source of strength for myself. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and just, you know, ha take value in that. Take value in the fact that you have a sizable community that cares about you and that enjoys your, your stuff. And just take the next couple of weeks to sort of catch your breath. You know? Yeah, 100%. I would, I would also urge you not to overdo it. You know, like, yeah, come in, come I agree. In. I agree. You're you're Don't absolutely right. Balance is the most important, important thing like, in life. Today, Fallout 76, and I'm only in stream for two hours. I know I could stream longer than that, but, you know, there's life out there that I need to be taken care of. Um, and, and, like, my, my suggestion to you is you have this open canvas that's your channel. And you can really plot out some fun things for yourself. So don't spend all your time streaming. Like, just Yeah, no, absolutely. I got... Wyvern, don't worry. I got a... Like, this, you know, the this sort of like long stream i just want to get this pre-recorded stuff out of the way as quickly as possible and mm -hmm. um it's going to be a really light stream for me like if i want to go take a nap i can because it's going <laughs> to run itself you know what i mean i love streaming this way and one of the things as well um that you'll know with streaming in this way is it should be a much smoother stream like it's it's so less taxing on the system like if you're playing a game and exactly. streaming it it runs like depending on your system anywhere between 50 and like 90 percent of your your system resources whereas streaming like this uses less than 10 percent of your resources right and also just mentally it's it's much yeah. easier to also yeah. not spending time devoted to like playing the game you're actually just sort of sitting around and yeah hanging out with them. and so the, it, the thing is to, yeah <laughs> yeah i and the thing like i want to do this kind of thing a lot more often where i'm doing like an automated stream so that anytime i want to take a break from the channel i just you know i've got i don't know like 40 terabytes of um a pre of, of like old let's plays like i could throw on an old let's play and let it run and um and and go take two days off or something right so mm. um yeah this is something i'm going to be doing on the channel a little bit more often um i think but i'm when i want to take breaks from the channel and in that way the channel is still going uh yun soggy says uh they're working according to a plan and it will be an exciting year it will be an exciting year i'm super excited um so here's what i can share with you i don't feel the pressure to keep my channel going and i don't think you should either because look at this you took what a one month break or maybe longer you came back and everyone's still here yeah so just just remember like i don't feel the pressure to stream or provide content on a daily basis that's just me yeah just so happens that like i enjoy playing these games that's why i pop up for a few yeah. hours every day but uh i uh I I completely why? agree with you. I completely understand. However, here's here's the thing. Here's the reason why I want to keep it going as much as possible. Number one, uh, presently, this is. I mean, I've got like a couple of other potential sources of income, but this is, at the moment, this is my only source of income. This is me. <laughs> this is my only source of income, and uh, not that I make very much money on here, um, but any, you know, when you're not making any money, even like a little bit of money is, is, is helpful, right? But one of the things that I've noticed with YouTube and their algorithms is that when I've taken um time off and i've done this i've taken you know i'm pretty experienced this with this the the longer the amount of time off that you take or at least with my channel the less my other videos my older videos are recommended and um the less they pop up in in searches and stuff like that like you know when i'm when i'm active my older videos get more views than they know I mean it's not a big difference but essentially what I'm saying is like when I'm not active my channel in terms of views like new views basically dies uh, I goes it basically flat lines and so um, I think in terms of like keeping the channel the wheels moving even if it's a steady flow of views I think is important because YouTube is like, um, I guess anything in life, um, or it, it's a lot to do with momentum, right? right? And you know, if you stop moving altogether, 
you lose all that momentum whereas at least even if you're just even if it's just a trickle you can you can build momentum from a trickle where it's a lot harder to build momentum from you know a complete stop um, that's that's the only reason why I would say I'd like to keep it like the channel continuing but Mm. Right now, I've got nothing but time, and um, I've got things Word. set up in a way that um, I should be able to put continual con content me. out fairly effortly, uh, effortlessly. Yes. Like I, I adhere to the, uh, or I'd like to try and adhere to the Even principles the of Wu Wei, where it's the yes. the Japanese Zen sort of effortless no, action. Like there's no really good translation in English, but effortless action kind of thing is um, is what I'd like to try and aspire to for the channel but, I hear uh, you I gotta get going back oh, here with my day so I'm gonna I'm gonna, no. I'm gonna let you I you, will say okay. I will say I have to uh, support you monetizing awesome. your channel oh, I'll be one of your first paying members oh you're 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 such a great so, guy bud um, I, I was can... just gonna say um, I haven't even let you know about my big uh I've got a top secret, uh, potentially really big. Um, well, we'll talk about it in person. But for Warhammer Three, for Warhammer Three, um, a collaboration. It won't be just a collaboration with uh, the two. It'll be like a multi YouTuber collaboration that should be pretty, fairly easy to organize, um, I'm, I'm and not too it. time consuming. But I'm I down. will, I will, um, I will fill you in on the details. You're uh, you're my right hand man in this, uh, quite literally. So um, anyway, are we still gonna do the preview game you're talking about? Um, yeah, we're still or, gonna do the we'll double dragon. We're still gonna do yeah. the double dragon, but I want to wait for the the proper map to come out. Like I don't want to play the map that's out right now for Warhammer Three, but okay. we'll we'll look into double dragon. But like I was saying in our in our text conversation, it's not not a big. We'll put that on the back burner. But this weekend, Friday, Mech Warrior. We'll talk more during Mech Warrior. I'll tell you Sounds all about my plans in Mech Warrior. Awesome Sounds talking to you, bud. Sorry Take to keep care, you Rick. so long. Welcome back. Welcome back. <laughs> okay, have a good one. Bye. Okay, bye. Guys, that was DM a Wyvern. And let me put a put a link to the old sports channel in here awesome dude uh he's been a, a close friend of the channel um and uh yeah just a, a super supporter personally um been a great friend and uh he does his own content marches to his own drum got a great little channel going um all sorts of different games on there so the link is right here Yunsagi says bye. A DM Wyvern says it's fun to listen to you guys. Um, yeah, I don't know. We're gonna be mixing things up, uh, we're taking calls and stuff like that. Uh, we're taking a totally, totally uh, um, new approach to the channel. Like, um, but it should be good times. That's what it's all about. All right. Well, it looks like the chat has quieted down a little bit, and Wyvern's gone, so I can kind of calm down a bit, and we can we can talk a little bit about what's happening in the game, which we haven't done for the first uh, couple hours. Um. Yeah. So I get off to a bit of a slow start in this, in terms of uh, even I was looking at the save file. Um, I was looking at the save file. Uh, I just briefly opened it up, and I was, and, and the amount of territory that I've conquered at that at, at the point I'm in, you know, 30 hours in, basically, um, it is pretty minuscule in 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 relation to the full map. So we've got lots more game to play. Um, if you guys are more interested in in seeing live live footage. Wednesday is the day that this will be going live. Um, today and tomorrow will be the same format, pre-recorded and live commentary. And then on Tuesday will be 
um, a pre-recorded, like, uh, it, it's a previous stream. It was, it was live gameplay at the time, and a live stream. Yuntagi says, I go full screen to see it better. All right, nice, nice. Yeah, Total War is the type of game that it really, um, you really need the full screen to, to really appreciate it. And I, uh, oh my gosh, it's nothing, I, I don't play it anymore on my, I've got a, it's not a huge TV, but it's still a big TV, 55 inch. I used to play on the 55 inch TV, but now I play on a, on, on my main monitor, and my goodness, there's nothing funner than playing Total War on a big screen TV. One of these days, um, I hope to get like a really massive TV, like one of the really massive ones that they make right now and play it on there. But yeah, pretty, um, pretty standard, um, tactics here. The, uh, Ithaca has really great, um, early, early infantry. These, um, sword skirmishers have javelins and shields. So they've got a missile weapon, the and they've got protection from any missile weapon, enemy missile weapons, and they're they're competent in um, in combat. So excellent early game unit. They're they're skirmishers. These guys are good too, but as you can see, my micro is not so good. Uh, Yunsaki says full screen and new eyes would be good. Well, oh my gosh, there is a book. I'm gonna. I, I don't know. I've heard, um... I've heard that carrots is good for, for eyesight, but there's a guy, a neuroplastician, or, or neuroscientist, named Norman Doidge, and he's written a book called The Brain's Way of Healing. And I'm going to put the link in... The description for you Soggy, and there's a chapter in that with um, an ancient Buddhist I, I think it's an ancient Buddhist technique for restoring vision and it's worked for people uh, like a, a, it's claimed in the book that someone who was legally blind maybe not completely blind but I think legally blind who is able to restore a large part of their vision using this technique. Um, if I remember correctly, it, it involves... So what you want to do is you basically cover cover your eyes and, and in the deepest, you know, so that your, your eye sockets are covered in the deepest, darkest sort of... Um, close your eyes and then wrap them, I guess, I think. So that it's sort of the deepest darkness you can you can get over them, right? And you you leave it like that for a half hour or an hour or something like that, and then you go into the sunlight and keep your eyelid your eyes closed, but basically bathe the backs of your eyelids in sunlight for like five or ten minutes uh, at a time, and you do this continually over time and it apparently improves your eyesight i don't know but the the exact details are in the book um which is um link there i'm sure you can get it on amazon but uh the link in the chat there is the link to the book super interesting stuff i i've got a passing uh curiosity in um neuroplasticity i've read like a handful of books on it very fascinating stuff um But, um, yeah, if you're having no trouble, you know, if your eyes, you know, I, one of the things, you know, my eyesight, since I started doing YouTube, my eyesight is, uh, has deteriorated quite a bit. My eyesight is not quite what it used to be, but yeah, if you've got a little bit of time on your hands, I mean, it's, it's worth a try. Um, but I would definitely research it a little bit more and, and get the exact details of how it works. Don't just go by my word here is I wouldn't want you to do anything to you know that would potentially worsen your eyesight uh, Yosagi says there are a lot of interesting ways to sort out all sorts of problems yeah exactly that's very very true very true but yeah pretty standard battle here just hold the line and um, try and flank a little bit 
Don't falter for glory. Odysseus is uh, a little bit low on health there, but I think he's going to be okay. Thing is, uh, thing is, too, it's been so long since I played this, I don't really remember the battle, so I'm interested to watch some of these uh, some of these battles. Uh, Yasagi, you're welcome. You're very welcome. If, um, you know, there's something that I can provide you guys with, and I think about it, um, definitely do that. But he's got a couple of cool books. Um, I think the brain that heals itself is the most recent one. I would, uh, I would lend you the copy if I knew where my copy of it was. <laughs> um, the other trouble is I oftentimes I lend books out to folk and I forget uh, I forget who has them and stuff Pontifex says you mean you don't want to rage at Warhammer 3 we'll blow, we're, we're, we're definitely going to do some Warhammer 3 raging but not for a while I'm kind of I'm I've got some videos planned for Warhammer 3 but uh, some very light stuff like I think when when is that scheduled I think I've got my first criticism of Warhammer 3 coming out on... On Monday, tomorrow. So I'll, I'll have my first Warhammer 3 video tomorrow. Ah, <laughs> Lemon Pledge uh, says I'm back, boys. But yeah, I haven't even... Um, I guess I'll have to install the game for that. The game's not even installed on my system yet. Um... But I, I honestly don't really, I'm not really interested in, in it until the full map is released, until the sandbox map is released. I don't want to play a campaign that, you know, like, that is, um, you know, tunneled into, like, you have to play it a certain way, like, you've got very specific victory conditions and stuff. I don't want to play that shit. That's not why I play Total War. I'm not interested in the least in it. And I mean, I'd be kind of interested to check out the map, but I don't know. I and, and the other thing is the factions. I'm only interested in maybe two of the Warhammer 3 factions. Yotsagi says, hi, Lemon. Welcome back. Welcome back indeed. Getting some more victories. Took a lot of... Look at the losses we took there. Oh, you know what just happened there? This army just popped up out of nowhere. I thought it was one of the... Uh, yeah, so see those units? Those are all special units. Those are all more elite units. And the... If... If... A kilos. So I think that's a mythological faction or something. And they just popped up on this island. I thought that that army was part of the faction that we were fighting with here. And because we suffered so much damage there... Um, I'm gonna end up retreating here. I was I was planning on finishing this. Uh, this is why we get off to such a slow start. Like I came over to this island and that army just kind of Odysseus popped up out of Odysseus. nowhere. Uh, Pontifex says Kislev and Kithea are fun. Yeah, those are the <laughs> those are the two factions I'm interested in. Um, I, I I was interested in playing the ogres until like the first couple uh, until I saw like the big fat guy and then I'm like okay so we're gonna encamp and see if we can hold out um but yeah kiss and cafe I'm I, I'm gonna play a lot of those factions I think uh, Pontifex says Slanish is cool but plays like Treeman spam melee blob and use magic. That's all I've tried so far. Yeah, I, you know, I'm going to be honest. I don't think I'm going to be playing any of the I demonic fan factions. Maybe corn. Maybe corn. Just uh, flavor wise. But when I. When is that coming out? Mm, oh, not till next week. Yeah, next week I've got a video released. I'm going to rate the Chaos Factions uh, next week. Um, <laughs> um, but it, it, I, I don't know. The, it's only going to be a short video, and it's I, I'm essentially trolling trolling the game. But um, next week I'm going to release that. I don't want to go... I, I've got a lot of stuff planned, but I've got to pace myself. Um, like Wyvern was saying, just, you know, don't go too hard. 
Yeah, I, I, I might play corn. I might play corn. But I, I was watching Legends corn campaign and he had like like 30 of the um, the bonus army that corn gets. I forget what they're called. Like the bloodletting army or something. He had like 30 of them. It was like turn like it was like turn 17 and he had like 30 of those armies. Those and um, you know, dangerous. he's fighting every single battle. It's just battle after battle after battle after battle. And I was just watching it. I'm like this is so boring. Like, I don't know. Um, and, uh, that to me seems like it would be really grindy. I, I don't know. Um, but at, at the same time, you know, it's a pretty overpowered mechanic. So I, I'd kind of be interested to check it out. So I think Corn is maybe the only Chaos faction I'm going to play, but the other factions, it's Lanesh, the Turkey Bird, um, I forget what he's called. Um, For it's the other ones. I don't know. I, I'm not too interested. But Kislev and Cathay, I am you super pumped to play play those factions. I think they've got. I mean, Kislev is kind of and vanilla. The cunning. A bit of a vanilla faction. This is the one cool thing about Odysseus's um, mechanics. He can recruit units in other. Other factions, um, territory. Though usually you need a building, a specific building. That's weird. I don't, you, there's a building that, that you can build that allows you to recruit units in foreign, um, foreign territory, but I didn't see it there. I don't know. Interesting. Bonifix says I downloaded that mod after Rift turns. Uh, so let's see. First Rift spawned at turn 32, and I put it for 50 turns. So next ones should be 80. Yeah, I I just actually watched before I streamed uh, started this stream today. I just watched Angry Joe's Angry Joe's. Um, his uh, review of Warhammer 3 and he, he loved it but he did have a lot of criticisms and one of his cri criticisms was the rift spawns that it just it totally ruined the pacing and that he found it really really weird that all of the factions are able to traverse the chaos, ga chaos gates like it, he just he just he basically said it turns into a big clusterfuck and that lore wise that shouldn't be the case um but yeah, I, I don't know. I have, I haven't played the game. I haven't really watched much of it. I've watched a little bit of Legends, uh, Legends Kislev campaign, a little bit of his, a little bit of his Corn campaign, and just last night I watched a little bit while I was editing a video, a little bit of Turin's Kis Kislev campaign, and that's about it. Uh, but I'm installing the game tonight, so I'll tinker around a little bit of it. But I. I not going to be playing any campaigns until uh, until the proper map comes out. Pontifex says, "Yeah, no interest in corn, and definitely not Nurgle, not range. That's why I don't like corn or vampires, etc." Yeah, that's the thing about corn. There's no range units, and I'm a range guy. So, yeah, I don't know. I I might not. Uh, I might not play any of them. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. Um, but as of right now, I've, I've got no plans to play any of them. Maybe that might change, but I think, I think I would rather, I think I would have more fun with Warhammer, just specializing in certain factions, specializing in the factions that I really love. Um, Bretonia, High Elves, Empire, uh, and Greenskins, Kislev, Cathay, um... Dwarves. Dwarves are there too. But uh, yeah, specializing in the factions that I really enjoy playing. I gotta try Norska out at some point. Um, but maybe wait for them to get an update. And I do want to play the Warriors of Chaos when they get a little bit of love. But yeah, see, right now I'm, I'm just like... What the hell are we gonna do here? We just took we took a ton of damage in that battle. 
fighting against the factions that, that just popped out out of nowhere. I don't know if it was an event message, but what I think happened was it was a mythological army because those units weren't standard units. Those were some like weird mythical mythological units. Um, Divinely blessed. Ithaca's Lord. So I'm just kind of considering my options here because we're Great we're in a deeds. a tight situation. Actually, I'm thinking. I actually, yeah, I'm hungry. realizing now. Okay, like, yeah, I'm gonna have to have to retreat. We're gonna have to fall back and um, come back to this just island. Had we not fought that battle and attacked the settlement, we would have taken way. it no problem. But because I took like a thousand casualties in that fight. Um, so this is, this is the reason why I get off to a slow start. Things were going, things were going pretty smooth up until that point, but it's, in my opinion, it's better to, you know, if your army is at risk, it's a bigger setback than, um, than it is falling back. So, um, I've decided fall back, regroup, rebuild our forces, and then we'll, um, and this way we can recruit a general. So um, while while Odysseus makes his way back to the main islands here, we'll recruit another general, and we can start recruiting. Um, we can start recruiting troops right away. I'm just kind of trying to decide which one I want to um, I want to recruit here. I eventually the mentors actually they've got a trait or a skill that's really good. I can't remember what it is, but once once we we get into the live gameplay on Wednesday, I'll be able to explain a lot more of that stuff. But for now, this is all um this was all pre-recorded or all all recorded previously when I had early access to the game. We did a uh we did a 30 hour 30 hour continuous uh stream back like six months ago and um, I'm just re-uploading uh, re-uploading I, I just figured I've been gone away for a while streaming this way would be a little bit lighter just let me get back into the rhythm of things before I get into the gameplay plus I've been playing a ton of Rome 2 I've been I haven't had access to the internet over the last week so rather than sit idle I've been pre-recording a Rome 2 series so, um, I've got, I think I'm about 30 hours, 30 hours worth of footage, uh, recorded. Ooh. But yeah, I, I, the other reason why I wanted to post this is because I really want to continue this campaign and I didn't want to just continue it without any context. Um, so getting this, uh, this footage up. Gives you guys a little bit of context. Anyone who's interested to see the beginning part of the campaign. But I love the way the map is designed here. It's it's pretty cool the way that the With the knowledge. islands are connected. As you say. And I do I do really like those um those standard infantry for Ithaca. They're those sword skirmishers are a great early game early game unit. They're fast, they have a shield, they have a ranged weapon, and they're competent in melee. The uh, perfect early game uh, early game unit. Bonifex says, uh, put rifts open for one turn, was ready, went to Slenish, no one else went. Now I'm going to get some monies. Yeah, I don't know how all that stuff works. The rifts and all that stuff. So basically speak in French to me. Guys, I'm just going to run to the washroom here quick and maybe uh, put something in the oven for lunch. But I will be back in a moment. The game gameplay will continue. Just uh, give me five. Good, good time to get up and stretch a little bit. But I'll be uh, back shortly. I cannot oblige.
by my wits. I live for battle. I pledge my loyalty. King Odysseus. Coming ashore. Glory awaits us. I have a plan. Awaiting commands. With sword and with wit. Loyal service. For Ithaca. You ask too much. Yonzagi says, I enjoyed being here and it's good you're back. Got to go and feed the cats. Have fun. See you when I see you. Might have to do stuff. No worries, Yonzagi. Thank you so much for stopping by. It was a pleasure to see you. I'm glad to have you back visiting the channel again. G also says, not sure if I can return later. Fumble fingers, press the wrong button, and post it half the message. Have fun. Take it easy on your first day back. Thank you so much. Thank you for the well wishes, and you have a wonderful day, my dear. Yeah, it's it's gonna be a light day of streaming. Like it's it, it's gonna be a long stream today, but I mean because it's all pre-recorded content, it's a super breezy, super easy stream. <laughs> and I'm um, well supplied. The Cyclops Island. <laughs> All right, you and Soggy, take care. Yeah, I. I was very fascinated from the initial point. I was very fascinated with that island. And I was wondering if you could recruit the Cyclops there, but I don't think you actually recruit the Cyclops from the island. Like, he's part of the garrison there. Sorry to spoil it if you guys <laughs> wanted to wait. But he's actually part of the garrison there uh, once you get it to a certain level. And then the Cyclops, actually, if you want to recruit the Cyclops, you have to get Poseidon's favor up high enough. And, you like, there, there's a few... I, you might need a temple at a certain might level. But there, there are certain, thi certain things that you need to meet. But once you meet them, you can you can recruit the Cyclops, which I haven't done yet. I haven't seen the Cyclops in action. I've seen the Griffins in action. The Griffin is a super cool unit. But I have yet to see the Cyclops in action. I have yet to see... Enemies Cerberus in action, and I have yet Favorite to see the Hydra in action as well. So, but I believe the way that it works is that there's a there's a wild hunt. Um, at some point, we'll get a message for a wild hunt, and um, it, it's actually a really cool mechanic. But you have to choose one of the three mythological beasts to hunt, whether it's the Griffin, uh, Cerberus, or the hydra and the hunt um you choose a general and recruit units and you send them on this hunt 
and there's event messages that pop up and depending on the ch choices that you make when the event messages pop up um, it, it changes the dimension of the uh, the final battle where you take on whatever uh, whatever unit you're hunting uh, whether you're hunting the the griffin the hydra or the or cerberus it's uh, I, I the first I, I don't know it might get a little bit a little bit stale after playing like a handful of campaigns through but I thoroughly enjoyed it. I, I thought it was a really nice feature, and um, I, I I found that I couldn't wait for the next hunt update. Like it, it happens over the course of like a handful of handful of end turns, and the uh, the the final battle uh, was exciting as well. And not to mention the reward. The reward is like if you win, if you win the uh, the hunt, then you get. You get control, or you get to recruit that uh, mythological uh, creature. So, yeah, super cool mechanic. Um, and it's you know not as overpowered. Like the the great thing about this is that you've got the mythological elements, the fantasy elements, but it's not too overpowered. Like they're they're a lot more subtle than in Warhammer, so you don't get the um, necessarily the like you can still build a do doom sack in this, but it's more leaning Even towards your traditional units. But um, I haven't really, haven't really I gotten enjoy. like where where I left things Never off faltering. of the the pre-recorded stuff, um, where we're gonna pick up on Wednesday. I Odysseus has a pre doom stack army like it's a it's a solid army like it's almost a doom stack but his doom stack would be just that much better than the army but he's got a really solid army where uh, where I lead things off and I was disappointed to stop um, I've been anxious to continue this campaign but um, just haven't had the the opportunity because I I it's at the stage where I haven't really had that army in action very often. Um, so anytime, anytime you play through a campaign in a total war game, and you you know design a sp an army to the um, specifications that you like, you know you make the build that you like. You put a lot of effort into uh, you know a certain combination, a certain build. Uh, it's always exciting to get it out on the field and uh, and practice with it, right? So I'm looking forward to that Wednesday. Wednesday is when we'll be back to to live live gameplay. Yeah. So all of this was recorded um, before the game was released. Uh, this was um, I had access. Joshua from Creative Assembly gave me. Um, as one of the um, I'm in the program like I don't get access as early as the big youtubers but I get like you know like usually the games I get like a week early or whatever so um, I'm still learning the interface and learning the um, how the religious system and everything works so a lot of the mechanics and stuff I'm still learning here and when we pick up the live gameplay I'm gonna be relearning some of that stuff hopefully I'll you know catch on as we play through this as we watch through this but see how she goes but I do I'm gonna warn you guys I do it get into some uh, who does not act in haste. some pretty crazy um, diplomacy stuff like it's always better to be self-sufficient but these um the barter system is a really cool system and it gives you the ability to you know trade for the resources you need whether it's for building or for recruiting units or for maintaining upkeep of units um, you know if you have a, an abundance of one resource you can trade it for another resource that you that you might uh, not necessarily have as much for or you might have a, a much higher need for but, I mean it's definitely definitely better to be self-sufficient but you can get into all kinds of crazy, crazy barter deals, and and you can really get lost in the diplomacy if you want, if you enjoy that sort of stuff. And I do, I do at times um, get into quite a few, uh, quite a few trade agreements. 
in I'm this sure campaign. So I'll warn you guys about that. There will be plenty of action though too. Plenty of battles. Well, I'm super excited to get back. I've got a lot of stuff planned this week. We're going to be playing, so we're going to be playing these pre-recorded things up until Tuesday. And then we'll get to live coverage of this on Wednesday. But it'll just be a short stream. It'll be a four-hour stream rather than these long ten-hour streams. I just wanted to get through all of the, uh, the pre-recorded stuff as quickly as possible. So three days of pre-recorded stuff. And then we're on to live streams. And so we'll we'll live stream this and then uh, for for a few hours on uh, actually Tuesday Tuesday it'll be a long stream I think it'll probably be like eight hours long because uh, I have a video planned on Tuesday and then plan. Wednesday Wednesday we're gonna do a double stream we're gonna stream this for four hours in the morning and then in the evening we're gonna finish up we're gonna start working to toward finishing up the uh, the Napoleon sword, Total War series and then that'll be that'll be Wednesday Thursday and then Friday Friday um, we'll be announcing Club Valhalla take a break from this on Friday and play a little bit of Napoleon Total War at some point and then on Saturday, Saturday Warhammer 2, High Elves, World War Beard. It's basically, it's towards the end of the campaign. It was my first ever Warhammer 2 campaign. And we'll be playing, um, so it was when the game first came out and the dwarves were like crazy overpowered. And it's basically the High Elves, myself as Tyrion, uh, versus the dwarves like the world is basically split between our two powers um, it was requested that that campaign be finished and I'd like to finish it before I get into Warhammer 3 Bonifix says I'm going to check out someone playing Warhammer Peace may be back but felt bad leaving without notice. Ah, no worries Bonifix. Thanks, thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. Enjoy your Warhammer 3. I understand that's the uh, the hot game right now but I uh, I got some unfinished business here with uh, Total War Troy and I'll, I'll eventually get to some Warhammer 3 so get a little bit of that in Wisdom at some point. I'll have to refuse. That will never work. Those who oppose me meet Hades. A rioting populace is a perfect distraction. It's too bad. Some of the agents, some of the agents can actually uh, go in the armies, but other agents, like these spies, um, have no use in the armies. You know, we might read a little bit. If the chat is a little bit quiet here, maybe I might read a little bit of the Odyssey. I don't know. There are some objections. Those of you who are here right now. Oh, do you have any objections? I'm going to wait till I have a little bite to eat. I'm going to have a little bit of lunch here. Um, but anyone who's got uh, objections to the Odyssey. Battle. Yes. Not possible. Favored by Athena. Odysseus of Ithaca. 
I cannot oblige. You ask too much. Our new home for now. Victory awaits. Odysseus, noble son of Aleretes. So you would start home to your own land at once? Good luck go with you, but if you could only know how much suffering is in store for you before you get back to your own country, you would stay where you are. Keep man. house along with me and Marks let me make glory. you immortal, no matter how anxious you may be to see Come this in. life of yours. It's on the uh, back cover of the book here. I was... Odysseus the Cunning. I was reading through this uh, on the channel and I was um, like the way that I was going to put this footage on there and I put a couple of episodes up where um, it's literally just the gameplay and just reading through this was not uh, received super well uh, by the community. I don't know if that's just um, and so I stopped. I stopped doing it because I'm just like okay nobody wants to see this then uh, what's the point? what is the point but I don't know um, I don't know if it was the thumbnails my delivery of the the readings not sure but we'll read a little bit of the Odyssey here I think I'm probably I'm I might delete those videos and move on but after lunch we'll read a little bit of the Odyssey because it's an awesome story it is so good uh, my pronunciations are terrible, but but yeah, we're just fortifying our our home province here, just playing playing it safe and sound. Uh, we've got an invasion force coming over there, um, and just you know playing very uh... yeah. The nice thing about the diplomacy too is you have these um, you have the AI give you these options every once in a while they'll, they'll give you sometimes they'll give you something exactly what you need but yeah just letting them come to us and then when we destroy their armies then their their settlement will be defenseless and we'll be able to uh, retake it yeah we just had a bit of a minor setback with that unexpected army but unfortunately there, there's no um, yeah, unfortunately, there's no naval battles. Yeah, in in a in an era where I have a plan. I'm not sure if it's if the naval not battles are auto resolve. I can't remember. We will claim. Victory. Yeah, in an era where there was like the largest naval invasion. That's beyond me. In uh, you know, a, a massive naval invasion Fail in historical. You know, during a historical period, uh, the game reflecting that period doesn't have any naval combat. Sirens Cove. I don't find the sirens very good. Um, it's nice to have a flying unit because it, it gives you a little bit of flexibility. Um, building the bows. I cannot play Total War without bows. I'm a, I'm a bow guy myself. Actually. I'm planning to move within a year. I'm moving back to Nova Scotia, and I am super excited to um, do some archery there because it's a little bit like where I am now in living in in Toronto. Like you, you can't. You have to go out of town to like a place where they've got an archery range to even be able to practice your your uh, bowmanship. Whereas in Nova Scotia, it's a lot more rural. Um, you can set up your own targets and you don't have to worry about that. So I'm, I'm going to put together an archery range and I'm very excited uh, for that. Um, I grew up, my dad was um, part of the Bow Hunters Association for Nova Scotia. And uh, I remember we used to go to, uh, we used to go and watch him compete in tournaments. He, he, he used to do okay. He wasn't bad. wasn't a bad uh, bow hunter, bowman. But I'm looking forward to pick up that. But anyway, I digress. Uh, Total War, I, archers are probably my absolute favorite unit type. They're just, um, they're so good in every single Total War. 
very OP. Guys, I'm going to have a little bit of lunch here, so I'm going to turn my mic off for just a little bit while I um, have some food. The chat's kind of quieted down. So just, uh, oh, that was, uh, guys, that's my boat in Helsinki, and that's my longhouse right there. My goodness, Icing Death, that's the name of the boat. But uh, I'll be back in a moment. Glory awaits us. I'm in about ten moments, maybe. Set up, camp. For Ithaca. Hold nothing back. They will pay.
Your warriors have spotted hidden foes. The foe has sighted your hidden units. Victory is close enough to taste. Your warriors are losing heart. Let's see blood! Massacre that! Masters of war! Swords! To glory! At your command! No. Alright boys, I'm back. Sorry about that. Little lunch break. We crushed them here in this battle. Though, so, did we? This, that's one thing I really like. Look at that. You cannot see shit. Attack. Even when you zoom in. Yeah, like. I don't know. I have to check that if it, in the settings it allows for the, um, the same way that the, the foliage zooms out. But we, we demolished them in this battle. Um. But yeah, that's what I was saying. These sword skirmishers are excellent. That range, they've got decent range on their, um, their, um, their, their missile weapon. And they've got a decent amount of ammunition as well. And they're competent in, uh, in combat. 
solid early game unit. Very, very solid. But I'm definitely looking forward to getting uh, getting the archers. Like that's what I'm pushing for as quickly as possible. Is is getting the archers in this army to give it a little bit more flexibility. I've never been one to use just sort of like pure javelins. Like I know, like for Ithaca, the like those units, that unit type is one of the elite unit types for Ithaca. But I. I'm not really interested in them. I like their to see. their standard infantry that has uh, both the missile weapon, the shield, and are competent in, in combat. Problem with, um, yeah, it's like javelin throwers. Like I, I never understood why you would want to use them over archers. Like, yes, they'll do more damage than an archer unit like in like a javelin will do more damage but it's got less range and they typically have less ammunition and yeah they'll be a little bit better in melee than archers like a javelin unit should usually be able to take down an archer unit in melee but an archer unit will be able to take out a javelin unit from range easy so i don't know why you would ever like archers are just so much more better. They they offer so much more flexibility. Um, I have yeah, I only usually use javelin units in in unique uh, scenarios. Like we started with those two units, so that's why I've kept them. They haven't. <laughs> they look so similar. I haven't realized yet that the um, that the unit to the far left there is a. Um, a medium like it is the next upgrade of this unit type victory awaits all right yeah just tidying things up merge these units up a little bit get everybody all healed up glory beckons just ban that and then wisdom in war save a little bit of coin It'll just be quicker to re uh, to re yeah yeah just save a little bit of coin on the move not should be possible. able to handle that. The garrisons are pretty... Some of the garrisons can be pretty big in this. Hmm. Let me just bring up... Sorry, I forgot to bring up the chat on the Even side the here. Army has right, it looks like the chat has quieted down a that bit. I Yeah, probably quiet stream today. I mean, it's my first stream back, and it's you know pre-recorded stuff, so it's not the type of stuff that people necessarily will gravitate towards. And... Uh, Troy, Troy is not exactly the hot game right now for Total War, but maybe maybe in a couple hours we'll see a few more people, like three, four hours. We'll see, uh, hopefully see some regulars, see more, and maybe Pierce, Pierce Brosnan, hopefully see some of those uh, those cats. Maybe uh, maybe Sherm TV will stop by. We'll see, see how it goes. But yeah, this is I don't usually stream at this time of day, but just because of my current situation, I'll be streaming at this time of day a little bit more often. Tech tree's not bad. There's some good stuff in here. It's not like super complex or anything, but like very, you know, very simple in the way that it's laid out. But everything is pretty, pretty much intuitive. And there's definitely some good bonuses in there. There's some choices that, you know, you gotta really take your time to plan out and decide 
which direction you want to go at. So plan is just to consolidate this province, finish them off, try and try and finish them off before they have time to recruit too many units. Like that's the one thing. Like this is uh, this game is a lot uh, is, is similar to Warhammer, where enemies will uh, the AI will build up their uh, their armies quickly uh, if they're defeated. Uh, when you're playing on the higher difficulties. Yeah, and I'm planning planning to head down to the uh, the island in the corner there, which is the uh, the Cyclops Island. But I've not yet uh, shirt up this main province. Could upgrade that. It's not a huge priority. I I don't know the. I don't think I end up going going with the um, the medium tiered infantry. I just find that the um, the the first tier those of those sword skirmishers have been functioning perfectly well and they're a lot cheaper i think the medium tier require upkeep of bronze and initially like we are we're only making what is it 42 bronze a turn we've only got a stockpile of 155 so go through that pretty quick Yeah, see, there's a lot of single barters, and then they're offering um, 392 food per turn for 91 marble per turn. I rejected it um, because um, I think right now we're in a, a position like a, some of the building that we need to get done is is based on marble. So important important resource for doing some of your uh, some I'll of your buildings. Same thing with wood. For Ithaca. Should be a relatively big battle. In Athena's name. Yikes. <laughs> this is not very blood. good odds. Um Fighting for Ares. To battle. So oh, we've circled victory. the encampment. I'm gonna try and push the army off. Yeah, so at least they won't be reinforcing. That'll um, make this battle a little bit more manageable. But what is that? Uh, there we go. We've evened the odds at, at least. I, those, uh, the settlement garrison, those are some stout, those spears, those are some big shields they're carrying there. Those look like some stout, uh, stout fellas to get through early game. But the sword, we're going to see the value of the sword skirmishers here in this fight. Just any, like an early game infantry unit that's shielded with javelins, whatever total war game is, it, like in Rome 2, um, my Egyptian campaign, I used the, um, like the dirt cheap Egyptian infantry. Like they, they're, they're not, they're not very good in combat, but they're, you know, in volume, they will get thing like a little bit done in combat. But the thing is, what makes them effective is the fact that they have javelins and they have shields. So they will, when you use them in volume in high high quantities in high numbers, they will. You know, it takes elite units time to cut through them because you're using so many of them and they're so cheap that you can afford a lot of them but also because they have javelins i think they have like maybe an ammunition of like maybe four javelins the javelins are indiscriminate of the 
tier of unit. I mean, like, better armored units, okay, they'll do a little bit less damage. But those uh, early game dirt cheap Egyptian infantry will do uh, damage to um, to high tier units. And, um, yeah, it, that campaign, I used them till pretty late um, into the campaign. It was quite a while before I started making Doom Stacks because they, they were just effective. I mean, there were... There were times, there were a lot of times where I got myself in over my head and had some armies destroyed. But that's the other thing about using cheap uh, units is they're super easy to replace. And, and you can replace those units anywhere, anywhere on the map. But yeah, that's I, I can't say enough good thing, things about these sword skirmishers. We'll have to see the value of them here in this minor settlement battle. So it looks like we're just going to attack in the corner here. And maybe, um, maybe head for that choke corner. Maybe try and set up a little bit of a trap for the units there on that side. I think the main attack is going to come in this, uh, in this choke point in the corner here. But yeah, I would imagine, I, like I was saying earlier, I haven't played Warhammer 3 yet, but the minor settlement battles in Warhammer 3 were based a little bit off of the minor set. Like these, these kind of, these the minor settlement, the minor settlement battles in Troy were used as kind of a testing point for the minor settlement battles in uh, in Warhammer 3, like the, the design and stuff. Uh, I think they wanted to test a few things out here before they added them to Warhammer 3. has shited your hidden units. They're adjusting to our reinforcements showing up. I use the skirmishers here to thin them out a little bit. Oh yeah, we'll soon have access to archers. We'll make the, these armies a little bit more effective. A little bit more balanced. Splitting up their forces quite a bit. The issue that we're gonna have here a little bit is the slingers. We don't have the sl we don't have any um, for the same kind of range as their slingers have. So they want to sit back and just sit back and just uh, use their range to thin us out. They they totally could. But yeah, here we go. These sword skirmishers already getting some kills in. Throwing those deadly ass javelins. And this dude, this... That dude there is going to get cut to pieces. Over here on this side, we're going to be a little bit... A little bit stressed. We're a bit stressed thin. They kind of overloaded us on that side. And it looks like we're fighting against those, uh, those more elite garrison units. Pretty strong units for... Uh, an early, early garrison 
army. Okay, the settlement can't be any higher than level two at this point. Your warriors are losing heart. Generals are pretty strong. Yeah, over here we'll be okay. We've got we've got the numbers on this side, but uh, you know, the balance of power was even going into this. So there's no guarantee that we're gonna win. But yeah, the, the real issue is the fact that they're they've got all that range back there. If they had them coordinated a little bit better, we'd probably be in a bit of trouble. So long as these guys hold. Should be okay, but yeah, over here, that unit's thinning out pretty, pretty quick. See how well the general holds up there. By Ares, your warriors are rallying. Generals, especially the the combat-focused generals, will will hold up pretty pretty well against just a single unit. But when they start to get bogged down too much, like like most often in 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 Warhammer, once you once they're surrounded by by a couple of units they, they're, and, and they're getting attacked in the flank, that's when they really start to struggle. But this guy's doing pretty good because he's he's attacking those guys in the flank. That unit of sword skirmishes is holding for a little bit, but once, once that sword skirmisher unit breaks and those guys turn around, they'll be able to surround him and they'll start getting some hits at him in the back. Your warriors have been routed. Look at that, like, oh, okay. I was gonna say, like, what are they doing? Uh, it's because they're on skirmish mode, and those search skirmishers are uh, chasing them into our units there, which is good. Another thing that's good about the sword skirmishers is they're fast, so they can uh, they can potentially catch those um, those slingers. Victory is close enough to taste. I was just gonna say, man, it, they're still holding up pretty good there, but the flank is just about to be rolled up. Yeah, it's just this the right flank where we're really still, still struggling. But once the left hand flank is sure enough, uh, it shouldn't be an issue to take care of the rest of this. I'd say it's looking pretty good, boys. Yeah, the, the sirens I don't find very useful. They, they do have a ranged weapon, but they're, they're not in high numbers. Like, their unit model count is not super high, and they're not very effective in melee, like attacking those um, those slingers there. They're losing to the slingers. Like, I don't know, cycle charging? I just find them kind of squishy. They're, they're good at, it's, I, I would say it's a good scouting unit, because flying unit, you can keep eyes all over the battlefield. And there's not a lot, you know, so long as you, you don't wander into range of of range units, they're a perfect scouting unit. Close victory, take it. Yeah, September, what was that? September 21st when these were battles were first fought. So that's, what month are we in? We're in March. So February, January, December, October. I think I skipped November. Well, let me start again. I got confused there. <laughs> Sorry, counting the months backwards is hard. So February, 
January, December, November, October, September. So about about six months. Hard work wins renown. You may find my dubious skill. Poison the well. A subtle weapon. Failure. Come on, man. What the hell? Not a chance. But yeah, that army, even though we're we're beat up, we still we still have enough troops to deal with that. That battle would have been really tough if that army if we hadn't pushed that army away. So that worked out pretty good. Ever faithful. What day is it? Today's Sunday. I keep thinking today is Monday. King Odysseus. Ithaca's Lord. I did release a video earlier today. If you guys are interested, Total War Warhammer 3 giveaway. Um, our winner. Favored by Athena. Now, Odysseus of Ithaca. Now, Nyao <laughs> Wei. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it. Why? I spelled uh, Nyao N A O and Wei just W A Y. With Won my Warhammer 3 giveaway from like months ago, but I've just finally been able to get the his video uploaded. Odysseus the Cunning. For um, Ithaca. And then. Uh, what was I going to say? We're doing another... Oh, Royal Rumble Domination Tournament. The Royal Rumble Total War Warhammer 3 Turin. Set for 2.45 p.m. DM Wyvern is on at 3 p.m. Playing Never a little bit of Fallout 76. Shining episode 22. Odysseus. I don't know. It's a game. He Wyvern actually bought me a... Uh, gave me a gift. Uh, Fallout 76. But I just was not... Uh, I, it's just a game that I'm not interested in, um, and so I returned it for him. I, you know, but uh, he seems to really enjoy it. But oh man, Turin Royal Rumble, 25 people waiting already, and it's not on for another uh, hour and 15 minutes. I I do really enjoy watching a little bit of uh, a little bit of Turin. I find him very entertaining. Yeah, I'm surprised. Uh, Mercy the Matt's not streaming today. Usually, usually Mercy streams on Sundays. No, I kind of okay. Mercy's coming on in 26 minutes. Greasus Gold Tooth Episode Four Elimination. Yeah, another faction I'm not interested in. I don't know Warhammer Three. I you know I don't know. I don't know what. Where are we at here? We're on. This is the. The second, uh, second uh, pre-recorded episode. I'm looking. I can't, guys. I can't wait to get back into this campaign and start playing it live. But that will be on Wednesday. Anyone following along? But yeah, we'll just have a nice light return to the cha channel. But we, we, I've got good, good stuff. I've got so much content coming up for you guys. Got a top secret. Rome 2 campaign in the works. Rome 2 challenge campaign, though. I mean, it is Rome 2. What's, <laughs> what's the challenge? Um, anyway, it should be pretty interesting. I'm, I've got, I'm looking forward to that. Getting that ready for you guys. But we're going to be playing some Napoleon Total War next week. I've got some... Uh, some, some videos. Some uh, I'm going to be trolling... Warhammer 3 a little bit. I've got a couple of video videos planned for that and uh, Trolling the Warhammer 3 fanboys a little bit. I don't know, but yeah, that reminds me I gotta I've got a Got to upload I've got to install I've got to download and install Warhammer 3 my god I'll do that after the stream tonight So I'll get to that After the stream today Uh, yeah, just getting things uh, reorganized here. The province built up we a little bit. Claim victory. 
trying to decide what's best for the province and what we can invest in. But I, I do like the building system in this. It, it's a it's a really well, well put together game. It's and not super complex, but I can make your enemies disappear. Definitely well put together. I think I think the year of um, extra development that the that was given to the game after launch, I think, uh, did the game some good. Definitely did the game some good. So I'm gonna be playing this. Uh, over the next uh, couple weeks to full map completion, I think. I don't know, um, yeah. I, I'd really like to do full map completion. So I think uh, I'm gonna set out to do that. So give us lots of time. But just get you guys caught up on what's happened so far. Yeah, just scanning. Now that we've consolidated we can both our main province, we're not at war with anyone else. It's just a matter of mopping up that last army, and then uh, we've got to decide where where we're gonna head next. Yeah, I can't. We don't have much bronze, so we can't really afford to trade bronze for anything right now. We don't have anywhere where that's producing bronze. We've got a little bit of food, a little bit of marble. I think a little bit of wood. Is that the final, final settlement? Tempted to do that for the gold. Because gold, it's, um, it's the only limited resource. But gold is something that we don't need just yet. This early in the campaign. The gold will come into, uh, come into play a little bit later, later on. Yeah, at least when they have their final army, they um, they make a final valiant attack rather than some total wars like Attila, for example, where you know the final army will run away to the corner of the map and it'll take forever to um, you know, like oftentimes there'll be like a rogue fleet or something and it'll run away to the corner of the map and it'll take you forever to get rid of them. Yeah, we're in great shape to take these guys on. Had we had th that army been reinforcing in the settlement battle, I think um, I think we probably would have lost. But that's such a huge advantage to have two armies, even if the second army is only one one unit, if it's only the general's bodyguard, because you're able to surround the settlement and then potentially either isolate the army that's standing outside it or push it out of the way so that you don't have to deal with it. Set up some uh, some kill zones. Let them come in that way and that we can get some crossfire in between our skirmishers maybe. They have reinforcements, or we have reinforcements. Yeah, we have reinforcements. That's our other general. I was gonna say, I like looking at that. I'm like, I'm pretty sure they only had one army, but yeah, that's that's our reinforcements coming on there. Yeah, this is a nice little spot, though. Their troops should funnel in there, and we should be able to uh, set up a little murder murder spot there for them.
that area is going to be a, this this area is going to be a little bit more difficult to defend. Should really well, I don't know. We'll see what they do. What the AI does. It, I doubt they're gonna split up their forces, but just in case they do, I think what I'm hoping they do is that they funnel into the main area there. Our javelins will just shred them. But you never know. The AI does some uh, wild and crazy stuff sometimes. It's hard to predict them exactly what they're gonna do. Yeah, just leave Odysseus out there as bait. This guy's a little bit damaged, so he probably... Okay, yeah, leave him out there too. <laughs> <It's a> little... <laughs> um, though... I'm just wondering. I think he's actually part of the garrison. I can't remember. I'm pretty sure he's part of the garrison. And these guys are all garrison troops, so just leave them there. They're expendable and they're not going to be much use anyway. But keep them together. Together they're at least a little bit of use. Yeah, the sirens. I'm not a big fan of the sirens. I don't find them terribly useful. I don't know. It'd be interested to see how they are in volume, but I just... I. I think there are a lot more practical units, like the sword skirmishers, I'd rather have the sword, a unit of sword skirmishers than the unit of sirens. Um, yeah, sure, they provide like a tiny bit of flexibility, but I just, they're, they're like a wet noodle, the they, don't, they don't deal out any damage, the only thing they're really good for is scouting. Looks like they are funneling in. They're headed in the direction that I want them to head. So I think we're gonna, I'm gonna let them move in there, and then we're just gonna circle in behind them, trap them, trap them inside. Yeah, even though there's not a lot of cavalry in this like with the different unit classifications light medium and heavy and the way that the game is built there's actually quite a bit of mobility with the units that these light infantry units can move pretty quickly I was hoping they would all head into the one area there but it looks like they're splitting up a bit. Ah, uh, they only the one they uh, only the one dude is heading into the trap. That's too bad. Though we probably could have set up a, a kill zone in the same a little bit the same way in the opposite spot. Yeah. Definitely would could have worked first kill zone over there. But they're trapped now and we've got these guys coming in behind get rid of their general first and then we'll make our way in behind their units yeah, only the one unit fell into the trap it's too bad one of your units has no more but at least the rest of them have blobbed up and once once their general is dealt with then we can we get right in behind there and should cause a mouse mass route. has claimed the enemy hero. Enemy hero's down and 
those dudes are finished. Yeah, the the AI is not. And I mean, this was only a small force. We had them outnumbered pretty heavily. But the AI is not particularly good at taking minor settlements, and at least in my experience of Total War games. Um, yeah, September 21st is when this was recorded. God, it feels like half a lifetime ago. Twenty-three losses, four hundred fifteen losses. Ooh, out! Ooh, <laughs> oh, that looked painful. My goodness, my goodness, the violence. Yeah, so kind of a little bit of um, gonna be a little bit of a lull here because oh, we still have to mop that guy up. And where the fuck That's did these guys option. come from? What the shit? That is not possible. The mother's dispossessed. Yeah, I think that's another one of these mythological factions that just pop up randomly. I don't know why they cuz I don't uh I pledge my loyalty. Yeah, if you look at the War emblem, it's the, the emblem of the Hydra uh, on that army. So we got to bring somebody back to deal with them. I don't know where they came from. But uh I sent Odysseus back to uh to mop them up. That's not possible. Odysseus of Ithaca. They'll Wait. fall to us. Wasn't Odysseus. That was, sorry, that was our agent that we sent back. Yeah, I don't know where those guys uh, showed up from because they weren't there. I don't know. Yeah, fighter champion. Eventually, I switch over. I can't Fighting remember what the trade end. is, but the mentors have glory. really good trade. I think it's something that cuts Not possible. Uh, cuts down I on. Uh, For Ithaca. I want to say um, cost of Show units. No fear. Oh my God! The decapitations. Oh my goodness! The violence. Release the captives. We are triumphant. Is so it lucky we start with um one of one of each it's a good province because there's there's bronze, marble, and food here. Um, definitely a good province to start with. And it's a four settlement province. Um, and isolated as well. The fact that it's uh, island territory makes it isolated. I'm trying to remember how the naval battles work in this. I think it's the same as Warhammer where it's like... I want to say it's the same as Warhammer where you fight like... Fight on a like they they fight on like a little island. Fight a land battle at sea, but I'm not sure. I can't remember. Yeah, 
Yeah, rather than bring an army back, it might be easier just to recruit another Odysseus general over there. Odysseus of Ithaca. So, Prepare to march. it's only going to take Odysseus a couple turns to get over there. Skim the waves. And we're not at war with anyone else, so I mean, it doesn't... Check their defenses. Loyal service. Yeah, they they require 25, 25 upkeep of, of bronze. We're only making 100 bronze per turn, and we're going to need the bronze for other stuff as well. They're just not cost-effective. I feel like early game, the way that you want to build your armies is just go go heavy on, on your best early game unit that requires food as an upkeep cost and, and just try and get your food income as high as possible and just spam your your best uh, your best type of uh, early game unit whatever faction you're using and then um, late game or well or mid to late game you can start building some some better equipped armies uh, we should soon have access to archers Which I can't, you know, I can't, I can't function in a total, total war game without. Any, like Vampire Counts, for example, Warhammer, Warhammer 2, Vampire Counts, very powerful faction if you know what you're doing. But I, uh, I can't, I, I struggle with the Vampire Counts because, uh, no range. <laughs> Huh? I mean, in a certain way, the magic gives you a type of range, but no archers. Um, my God, could you imagine vampire counts with archers? How powerful they would be if you had uh, archer uh, skeleton archers. Though I guess tomb kings kind of have that for their early game ar armies, and they're still tomb king early game armies can still struggle against uh, certain factions, even even with the range. Is their um, their early like Tomb King's early game units are so trash like the skeleton spears though I guess um, well vampire counts felt skeleton spears are trash too but just you're able to get so many more of them once you research the proper technologies and reduce their upkeep costs. So pretty cool. Um, Pretty cool commandments. Inspired seafaring plus 12 movement range for armies leaving the province. A little bit of growth, a little bit of happiness. I mean, I. it's a very, you know, it's an easy thing to put into the game, in the game, but having different options for, for commandments and stuff definitely adds a different dimension. You know, and especially when they mix it up for different factions, different factions have different commandments. It's one of the great things about Warhammer is just the the diversity in faction types and, and play styles. I'm not sure what I'm looking for here. I think I might be looking for I think I'm looking for someone with um specific amount of re a specific resource. I'll listen to the Lord of Ithaca. Alright guys, I'm gonna go refill words. my coffee. I'll be back with more commentary, but the gameplay will go on.
This works. I know that wars can also be won off the battlefield. All right, boys. If you have questions about what's happening in the campaign, my decision-making process and things like that, like I recorded this six months ago, so I am struggling to figure out what my thought process is myself. Um, I'm gonna introduce a little segment I like to call story time. We're gonna read Odysseus and uh, or the Odyssey by Homer. We're going to read through a little bit of this, see if we can get through a couple of chapters of this while uh, the chat's quiet. But if you have questions about the campaign, let me know and I'll put the book down for a bit. But since the chat's pretty quiet right now, I wouldn't mind reading through this. I've never read it in its entirety. We'll start from the very beginning and uh, yeah, we'll go through it. It is good to talk with one who does not act in haste. So I just wanted to write that in the chat so anyone uh, popping in, if anybody new pops in, they'll have it there. I'm just going to enjoy my coffee and read a little bit of the Odyssey. Where the fuck are my glasses? Part of me. <laughs> Part of my French. Every Odyssey by Homer. All right, preface. Do we need to read the preface? That's the question. We'll read it. Provide. I, I, I like reading the preface of books. It provides some context, especially in terms of translation and stuff like that. Like oftentimes, you know, like a text like this is from a tradition that was an oral tradition. Like this, like Homer didn't write the Odyssey. It, he was a poet that probably performed it and um, the story may or may have not have come from a person named uh, Homer but during that time it you know the Odyssey Odysseus was is um, and deserves to be heard. was passed down uh, through an oral tradition that the entire thing was memorized and there's certain um, memetic that the right word uh, certain certain devices uh, that are used to trigger the memory but um, you know, just on, on a, another aside, uh, Socrates, who, you know, um, very critical of the poets in, in Plato's dialogues, but Socrates, uh, when he's talking about writing, um, and writing was kind of the new technology at the time for the Greeks when Socrates was around, which is, I think is around, I want to say like 200 BC, but I, I'm not precise on that but anyway Socrates is saying that and, and then Homer uh, much earlier than that like a few hundred years earlier than that I believe and then the story that Homer's telling in the Odyssey is is much earlier still um, like the time period for that uh, just to give you know, like a rough very I rough estimate of, of timelines but what Socrates was saying was that writing 
was a crutch to memory that people writing things down that they're no longer that people at the time were losing their ability to recount these stories and stuff and, and you know interesting that in a way that perhaps their memory was more uh, more robust in ancient times very very interesting thing to think about but anyway the preface will provide us with a little bit of context for this particular translation and this particular work that we're going to dig into i don't think we'll get to finish it but at the very least we'll get a little bit uh, of the story and i'll maybe try and uh try and finish it at some point this translation is intended to supplement a work entitled The Authoress of the Odyssey, which I published in 1897. I could not give the whole Odyssey in that book without making I it unwieldy. I therefore epitomized my translation, which was already completed and which, was, which I now publish in full. 1897, you say. So this, uh, this preface... Translated by Samuel Butler. First published. So this is copyright Canterbury Classics 2015. But when was it first published? Does it say here? I don't see. But anyway, 1897. Yikes. That was all a while ago. Crazy. Um, Alright, I could not give... Okay, sorry. I shall not here argue the two main points dealt with in the work just mentioned. I have nothing either to add to or to withdraw from what I have there written. The points in question are, one, that the Odyssey was written entirely at and drawn entirely from the place now called Trapini on the west coast of Sicily, alike as regards the Phaeacian and Ithaca scenes, while the voyages of Ulysses when once he was, is within easy reach of Sicily, solve themselves into a periplus of the island, practically from Trapini back to Trapini, via the Lepari Islands, Straits of Messini, and the island of Pentaleri. Two, that the poem was entirely written by a very young woman who lived at the place now called Trapini and introduced herself into the, her work under the name of Nasia. Interesting, interesting, interesting that he's uh, researched and, and come to the conclusion based on evidence that it's possible that this was not written by Homer. The main arguments on which I, ha I base the first of these somewhat startling contentions have been prominently and repeatedly before the English and Italian public ever since they appeared without rejoinder in the Athenaeum for January 30th and February 20th, 1892. Hey, George, Both contentions were urged, with also with re without rejoinder, in the Johannian Eagle for the Lent and October terms of the same, terms of the same year. Nothing to which I should reply has reached me from any quarter. And knowing how anxiously I have endeavored to learn the existence of any flaws in my argument, I begin to feel some confidence I that, did such flaws exist, I should have heard at any rate about some of them before now. Uh, that's a pretty big assumption. Um, but anyway, uh, without therefore for a moment pretending to think that scholars generally acquiesce in my conclusions, I shall act as thinking them little likely so to gainsay me as that it will be incumbent upon me to reply, and, I sh and shall confine myself to translating the Odyssey for English readers with such notes as I think will be found useful. Interesting stuff. Um, I'm just kind of thinking, like, do I... I I'm, I'm sure we can sort this out. In the preface to my translation of the Iliad, I have given my views as the main principles by which the translator should be guided and need to repeat them here, beyond pointing out that the initial liberty of translating poetry into prose, so poetry into prose, that's, um, prose is, that reads a little bit better, involves the continual taking of more or less liberty throughout the translation. 
where much that is right in poetry is wrong in prose, and the exigencies of readable prose are the first things to be considered in a prose translation. That the reader, however, may see how far I have departed from strict construe, I will print here Murs, Butcher, and Lang's translation hey, George, of the 60 lines or so of the Odyssey. Their translation runs. Okay, so I am... I'm going to call it quits on reading the preface here. Um, just a little bit of context there. Um, but we'll get into book one. The gods in Cal council, Athene's visit to Ithaca, the challenge from Telemachus's to the suitors. All right, we'll get into a little bit of this. Yeah, we're doing a lot of, I think this stage of the campaign is uh, gonna be a fair bit of, um, of diplomacy and just uh, building up some infrastructure and just um, getting our armies equipped. I'm not sure where we're gonna head for our next invasion. That army that's parked by our our settlement there, just just kind of parked there. I'm not sure why, but we will claim victory. With sword and with wit. Tell me, O oh muse, of that ingenious hero who traveled far and Shut wide after he had dips. sacked the famous town of Troy. Many cities did he visit, and many were the nations with whose manners and customs he was acquainted. Moreover, he suffered much by sea while try, tra, trying to save his own life and bring his men safely home. But do what he might, he could not save his men, for they perished through their own sheer folly in eating the cattle of the sun god Hyperion. So the god prevented them from ever reaching home. Tell me, too, about all these things, O oh daughter of Zeus, from whatsoever source you may know them. Prepare the victory feast. Let me just turn the light on here so I can, I can see what I'm reading. <laughs> yeah, the warriors of Ithaca, I have not yet unlocked them as far as I've played through yet. But I've unlocked those heavy shield uh, shield men. So that's why I say it's uh, where I am in the campaign right now where uh, the save point is. It's a pre-doom stack. That uh, it's an elite army but not quite as elite as it could be. Uh, the Warriors of Ithaca will be a little bit better than those uh, those spare units. But the spare units will be better in certain situations. They'll be better at holding the line I would think. Spears typically are. So now all who escaped death in battle or by shipwreck had got safely home except Odysseus, and he, though he was longing to return to his wife and country, was detained by the goddess Calypso, who had got him into a large cave and wanted to marry him. But as years went by, there came a time when the gods settled that he should go back to Ithaca. Even then, However, when he was among his own peoples, his troubles were not yet over. Nevertheless, all the gods had now begun to pity him except Poseidon, who still persecuted him without ceasing and would not let him get home. Now Poseidon had gone off to the Ethiopians, who were at the world's end and lie in two halves, the one looking west and the other east. He had gone there to accept a hecatomb of sheep and oxen and was enjoying himself at his festival. But the gods met in the house of Olympian Zeus, and the sire of gods and men spoke first. At that moment he was thinking of Aegisthus, who had been killed by Agamemnon's son Orestes. So he said we will go down to the other gods, See how men lay blame upon us gods for what is after all nothing but their own folly. Look at Aegisthus. He must needs make love to Agamemnon's wife unrighteously and then kill Agamemnon, though he knew it would be the death of him. For I sent Hermes to warn him not to do either of these things, inasmuch as Orestes would be sure to take his revenge when he grew up and wanted to return home. Hermes told him, off, this and all good will but 
he would not listen. And now he has paid for everything in full. I know their weaknesses. Finally get rid of this army. See, yeah, these factions. Drinkers of Venom, Hydra. These are the Hydra worshippers. But they just... I don't know why early game they just pop up. The Mother's Dispossessed. But another one of them had factioned up earlier. I think they were those were the um, the Griffin worshippers. And I don't know why they just popped up. But it was super obnoxious early on. Because it almost... Almost created a bit of a catastrophe for me because I, I stepped into a, end up fighting an army that was much stronger than I had anticipated but um, should make for an interesting fight all right I'll, we'll, we'll continue reading the Odyssey here in a second but I, I do actually want to watch this battle See what we got. I like the terrain and the and the maps in general in this game, but I my main criticism is that the maps are too damn small. But the maps are nice looking, and I like the um, the added cinematic touches, like for. Um, for the maps um, like they they've got some some mythological mythological features to the backgrounds of the maps and stuff in this way there's not nothing really here but there's some uh, some huge statues and things like that in the background and some uh, some of them and sometimes you can see uh, the gods in the sky and the clouds in the sky the gods it's a nice smile. touch for ambiance Oh, see, that's what I mean. Like, whatever that. What is that? Like, somebody's armor. Yeah. These sirens are good to scout. With garrison reinforcements, get those guys over here. It's just a small force, but they're much. They're they're way more elite units than what we've got. And the last time we fought one of these factions, we um, we took a ton of damage. It's too many groups. I don't. I typically like my optimum for for grouping units is I, I would say four four groups. But gotta do what you gotta do. That's why I typically like to keep the armies like pretty basic in, in terms of um, their composition. The AI is just running around, they just which is um, you often find what they do when they're just kind of responding to our movements and because we have so many moving parts at the moment, they're just running around too. See look at these guys. What are they? What is that paint? Is that their skin color? They are hydra, hydra worshippers, so I don't know. They, I think we're gonna get rid of the harpies at some point. I just find the particular, but sorry, sirens. They look like harpies. Um, I find them pretty much useless. Cause I mean, like, even as a scout, like, you don't really need them because vision-wise in this game, like, it's what your units, the line of sight. For whatever reason you seem to have like really see most of everything that's on the field unless it's hidden in um, specific type of terrain like even on siege battles I think there's there's not a lot of fog of war the foe has shited your hidden units Ah, 
Alexander says Odin has come back. Yes, indeed, my friend. This is an old campaign. We're just starting slow, but I've I've got heaps of content uh, planned for you, my friend. We'll we'll get to some live footage um, later in the week. Like what? I, reason why I've come come back to this campaign? If you remember, this what? Do you remember when I did that marathon stream? This is from the marathon stream, so I, I just wanted to get this content on the channel um, because anytime you do a stream over 12 hours, One of your units um, has no more YouTube, you can you can't play it back. So I just wanted to get this content up on the channel. It just seemed like a waste, and also I want to continue this plan, <laughs> this campaign. Ah, <laughs> clueless says, "Well, well, well, look who we got here, Rags. Yes, yes." gonna see you're gonna be seeing a lot of me Victory boys in the uh, in taste. the days and weeks to come I'm uh, I'm technically under house arrest right now so um, I got nowhere to go and I got an internet connection and I got my system all set up here at my brother's place I'm gonna be staying at my brother's place for the next uh, number of months I think um, but I'm uh, I'm ready to rock and roll how are you guys doing good to see you how has life been treating you Play a little bit of Troy today. Yeah, we we'll just uh, start start slow. Dip dip my feet in the water a little bit with an old old campaign that I want to continue. So pre-recorded. This is all pre-recorded from when we did the marathon heart. stream six months ago. And then we'll continue this campaign live on Wednesday is uh, when it's scheduled. But I got lots and lots of content for ready for you guys I've got uh, I've got my first analysis of Warhammer 3 coming tomorrow your hero is under attack Clueless says oh say hey to bro rags I will I will it's my older brother he's always uh, sort of taking care of me um, so uh, I will say oh I think he he had to work last night. Like we went on a crazy hike yesterday. It was awesome, actually, in uh, this place here in Toronto called Rouge Valley. And it was um, my goodness. It was a beautiful hike, but it was treacherous. It was so icy. I I wiped out once and nearly nearly killed myself a number of times. Alexander says, "Still waiting for your first Total War Hammer, uh, Total War Warhammer Three campaign." It's, uh, the wait will be a little, we'll get some Warhammer 3 videos coming up, um, just short videos, but the first campaign I'm waiting for the, uh, for the map. Um, I, I just, I don't have any interest in playing the campaign map that's out right now, and I'm only really interested in playing two factions. So, it'll be a little while before Warhammer 3. Ah, <laughs> Clue says brother reveal question mark. Well, I I tried he um he's not into Total War. I'm trying to convince him to play a little bit of Total War because he's got a he's got a gaming uh laptop. So he could we could uh nice. we could definitely maybe play some Total War together. Um wow. so I'm trying to convince him, but he's big. We used to play Madden franchises, um the NFL football game. So um he's um He's been asking me about playing a Madden franchise, but um, I I don't know. I, I said, well maybe we'll maybe we'll stream it and have it on the channel. And he said, oh I don't know. <laughs> so he's a pretty um, reclusive guy. Like he's uh, not super outgoing. Like, uh, but uh, I I don't know. Who knows? Maybe maybe we'll get him on here. And I apologize. I would have the camera on. I set up. Like, oh my goodness. I set up the green screen perfect. I've got it set up really nice here and I went to do something last night and I'm like oh my god I my my webcam is not here I have no idea where my webcam is so I gotta track that down um, but sooner or later we'll get it clue that says Warhammer 3 still got loads of issues anyway yeah that's what I'm hearing uh, which is probably I, I would say it's to be expected but I love the uh, the Gorger Doomstack. Which uh, which faction is that? I don't know. I honestly, I I think <laughs> I think everyone knows more about Total War, uh, uh, Warhammer Three than uh, myself. 
Alexander says, anyway, I know there's a multiplayer campaigning on eight players and it sounds good for the motherland. Yeah, you know what? I heard. I, I've heard about this thing. I, I'm, I'm excited to check it out. Um, I think I think that'll be really cool. I think that's definitely um, because the you know it's it's weird because that's a feature that's returning to Total War. That it used to be you used to be able to do that in Medieval Two. Um, in Medieval Two Total War, um, though I think it's a little bit more advanced the way that it's it's been implemented in Warhammer Three. But I I would love to see that continue in future total wars uh clue says the ogre kingdoms the ma lads oh okay 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 i was interested i like when when the first trailers of the ogre kingdoms came out i was like you know what i can kind of dig these guys i want to i kind of want to play them but then when favored by a thief. like the the fat guy is is he the ma i was just like Oh man, this looks like a cartoon to me. Clue says uh, the problem with eight players is that it was already really slow with three. Ah, uh, makes sense. I mean, you know that sort of thing, infrastructure-wise, and you know, the, it'll take them a little while to work out the kinks, and hopefully they can optimize it. But uh, we'll have to wait and see. I'll have to wait and see. But it, it's definitely a good thing to have, I think. Um, but maybe, you know, we'll be better with, um, like, uh, you know, a dedicated, um, dedicated server or something like that. If you, if, if eight people, you could well set talk. up your own server and then that way it could maybe optimize it a little bit better. I, I don't know. I don't really know enough about that sort of stuff. Alexander says, I read the big message from Legend about Total War, uh, about Warhammer 3 and agreed with him. I hope creators fix bad optimization. I heard the optimization is pretty bad. But usually that stuff, and price exactly. Yeah, I, I feel like optimization is the, uh, the type of thing that gets ironed out over time. How is the chunky cat? Oh, goodness, uh, Clueless Bijou. So I'm staying at my brother's right now. I've had like the last two months have been chaos, pure chaos in my life. That's why I've been missing. And uh, my goodness, if I told you, <laughs> if I told you what I, where I've we spent the last the three weeks, you wouldn't believe me. But anyway, so I've been away from the cats and I was actually over there yesterday visiting them and, and Bijou, I don't know if it was because my brother was there with me, but she was uh, she was sleeping on uh, one of my trunks, one of my treasure trunks. We lose nothing. So like I, I had laid out a blanket on top, a nice uh, fluffy blanket on top of the treasure trunk. Like they like to sleep on flat surfaces. Laid out a nice blanket on top. She was sleeping on that when we arrived, and then as soon as we got there, she ran and hid under the bed, and we were there for about two hours. And she hid under the bed for the entire two hours. Uh, Bruce was um, Bruce was a little bit um, he, like Bruce likes to hiss. I I don't know when I he. I think he started doing that after the uh, <laughs> shortly after the operation, because I, I don't remember him doing that when he was when he was younger. Um, but I think it was after the operation that he started the hissing. But Bruce was very hissy, but he was very affectionate. Like he and I, um, yeah, you could tell that he he missed me. I have a plan. <laughs> Clue says we're the last few weeks. I don't know if I should say you, you're gonna <laughs> you're gonna look at me different. But it's a it's a long story. But I was um, yeah, I I was um. I was held up in jail for the last three weeks, if you can believe that. Mm. Um, anyway, I don't want to get into the sort of details of that. Actually, I probably can't, like, it pro because uh, my lawyer has to sort all that out for me. So I absolutely shouldn't be talking about it on, on here. But yeah, I uh, I got myself into a little bit of trouble, Clueless. Um, I mean, I, I feel 100% positive that I will be vindicated in the end. But uh, the charges against me right now are um, are, are pretty are pretty serious. I, I've got some pretty serious charges against me right now. Um, but um, like I said, I feel that I'll be 
vindicated and my my innocence in this uh, in this particular matter will be um, will be cleared but it's just it's gonna take it's gonna take like eight months uh, eight months to a year to go through the courts because the courts are so so slow but anyway you're the first one this is the first time I've mentioned it on the channel I mean I've just come back on the channel but uh, I was telling uh, telling Morn about it but uh, anyway I hope you guys don't think less of me because of that but uh, uh, it's a long story, and um, I I am completely innocent. I didn't do anything wrong. I didn't break any laws, but I I have some. Mm. Uh, Clue says I hope we can get out of this trash. Yeah, me too. Me too. I you know, the way the way that things are framed against me are very disconcerting. But at the same time, like I know in my heart I haven't done anything wrong. So I, I feel that I will be vindicated in the end. It's just going to take a little bit of time. But at the moment, it's it's kind of been a blessing because now that I'm on host arrest, I've got nothing to do but play Total War. Um, so you're going to be seeing a ton of me. Uh, Clue says, God, I hope you're okay, Regs. I miss you a lot. Uh, I'm good, man. I'm great. Um, yeah, aside from the, uh, the financial turbulence I'm going to go through because of this thing, uh, because I can't work right now, right? Because I'm under host less. I guess I could get like an online job, which I'll, I'll probably start looking around a little bit for an online job, see if I can get an online gig. But for now, I just want to like get the channel up and running and do some of the projects that I've been wanting to do on the channel for a really long time, but just haven't had the time to do it. So I'm super excited about that. But yeah, how how is uh, how is school going, Clue? You enjoying your uh, you'll be close to uh, close to summer break I would imagine just a couple more months and you'll be out for the summer <laughs> war declare who are we fighting ah uh, Ellis war with Ellis our neighbor All right, yeah, I said we we're going to get back into a little bit of the uh, the Odyssey. We'll read bits and pieces here and there. But Alexander, if you're still hanging out, want to let you know. I mean, it's it's it'll be a little bit in the works, but I am uh, I'm planning a uh, Napoleon Total War Russia campaign at some point. So within I would say within a month, we'll be playing a little bit of uh, for the motherland. And yeah, I'm super excited to play Kislev in Warhammer 3. Cool, it says school is meh. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. I don't know. I, you know, if I had kids, if I had kids right now and, and they were just going into the school system, I would give some serious thought of alternative um, means of, of schooling them than the public school system. I would either either homeschool them or uh, or something else. Uh, Alexander says, cool with the sunglasses. Yeah, man, I, I really, uh, we're gonna be, we're gonna be playing some, uh, some more Napoleon Total War. I wanna finish my Napoleon campaigns first, which will be, we'll be starting the, that on Thursday. We'll be playing a little bit of that on Thursday, but I wanna finish those campaigns first and then uh, we'll get to some some Russia campaign. I want to find, I want to find my copy of uh, War and Peace first because I want to read one or two of the chapters from it. Uh, Clue says, "How is Izzy? Who's Izzy?" Alexander says, "I play the Kislev campaign, and this faction reminds me of something." Nice, 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 nice. Um, yeah, Kislev and. And Cathay are the two factions I'm really looking forward to playing. And I'm, I'm kind of on the fence whether or not I'm going to play Corn, But as of right now, I don't think I'm going to play any of the other Warhammer 3 factions. I just don't like the factions. They all seem kind of grimy to me. I mean, they are demonic factions. So that's, you know. But yeah. All right, let's, let's read a little bit more of Homer. A couple so paragraphs here. A little bit more story time. Then Athene said, Father, 
Son of Kronos, King of Kings, it served Agith, Agith, Agithus right, and so it would anyone else who does as he did. But Agathus is neither here nor there. It is for Odysseus that my heart bleeds. When I think of his suffering in that lonely sea girt island, far away, poor man from all his friends, it is an island covered with forest in the very middle of the sea and a god goddess Odysseus lives there come. daughter of the magician atlas who looks after the bottom of the ocean and carries the great columns that keep heaven and earth asunder this daughter of atlas has got hold of poor unhappy odysseus and keeps trying by every kind of blandishment to make him forget his home so that he is tired of life and thinks of nothing but how he may once more see the smoke of his own chimneys. You, sir, take no heed of this. And yet when Odysseus was before Troy, did he not propitiate you with many a burnt sacrifice? Why then should you keep on being so angry with him? Alexander says, I played Kiss for the campaign. It reminds me of something. Oh, personal trainer Izzy. My God. My God. I forgot about Izzy, Clue. I forgot about Izzy. That, uh, let me just write that down because, uh, we got to get Izzy on the channel. My God. My God. I may maybe, maybe if you show up tomorrow, I'll have Izzy, Izzy here and I'll, uh, have Izzy make a personal appearance for you clue if you if you stop by the stream tomorrow get Izzy <laughs> oh Izzy Izzy's good man Izzy's uh man that guy that guy is um you know let me just get a little bit more comfortable just want to stretch out a bit here that guy's a scary dude you don't that's that's the type of guy you don't want to get angry man Izzy will fuck you up it's go time. Oh my goodness. The thing is, I, you know, I'm super comfortable at my brother's place, but there's just, you know, with my setup on my rolly chair here, there's just one small problem. And that is, I'm on carpet and it's kind of, it's new carpet and it's fairly deep carpet and the, the wheels on my chair just do not roll. <laughs> so anytime I try to push my chair, it's just stuck. It's just so hard to move my chair around. That's the only, my only complaint. So, um, but yeah, I, I, I love the setup I have here. All right, a little bit more Homer. And Zeus said, my child, both behave like reasonable people. what are you talking about? How can I forget Odysseus than whom there is no more capable man on earth? No more liberal in his offerings to the immortal gods that live in heaven. Bear in mind, however, that Poseidon is still fur furious with Odysseus for having blinded an eye of Polyphemus, king of the Cyclops. So, okay, um, just pause for a second. So, Odysseus blinded an eye of Polyphemus, king of the Cyclopses. Was he king of the Cyclopses we lose before or after us. Odysseus blinded an eye? Because if Odysseus blinded an eye, like if he was if he was already a Cyclops and Odysseus blinded an eye, that means you know he would be completely blind. Whereas, did he become king of the Cyclopses because Odysseus? Blinded the eye? I don't know. Anyway, sorry. I digress. Polyphemus is son of Poseidon by the nymph Thusa, daughter to the sea king Orses. Therefore, though he will not kill Odysseus outright, he torments him by preventing him from getting home. Still, let us lay our heads together and see how we can help him to return. Poseidon yeah. will then be pacified, for if we are all of a mind... He can hardly stand out against us. Uh, Clue says, depends when the stream is. I am back in school. Got uh, I got time after five time and in between as well. But I got to go for today. Love you, Rags. Been great seeing you again. Well, um, have a great day, Clue. 
I will get Izzy ready to go. I'll have him prepared for the next time you pop in. So whether it's today, tomorrow, or another day, Izzy, uh, Izzy will be here waiting for you. Just try and, uh, yeah. <laughs> Should be good stuff. Um, you know what? I just want to get some fresh air inside here. It's getting a little bit stuffy. I think the weather outside is really nice today. I just want to open up the door outside. Let's so get repositioned here. We'll read some more of the book. Uh, give me one second, guys. I'll be right back. I have a plan. I'll hear what you have to say. Sharp of mind. Ithaca's Lord. All right, I'm back, boys. Sorry about that. I just want to get a little bit more comfortable. It's gonna be a long stream today. We're only, we're only, not even four hours in. So, just wanted to get a little bit more comfortable. Get a little bit more air circulating in here. Just open the door. It's a beautiful day here. Beautiful. Feels like spring. Spring is in the air. Um, would have been today. Actually, would have been the better day for us to go for a hike. Because uh, it's a lot milder today, and uh, but the thing is, the forecast, the forecast was rain. But uh, yeah, it looks uh, spring is in the air. It's not gonna be, not gonna be long before the birds and the bees are gonna be. Uh... Glory beckons. Out and about. Of course. Trees are going to be budding. All that sort of stuff. Get this ship underway. Get this ship underway. Odysseus of Ithaca. Not an option. 
And Athene said, Father, son of Kronos, king of kings, if then the gods now mean that Odysseus should get home, we should first send Hermes to the o o o G G N island to tell Calypso that we have made up our minds and that he is to return. In the meantime, I will go to Ithaca to put heart into Odysseus's son Telemachus. I will embolden him to call the Achaeans in assembly and speak out to the suitors of his mother Penelope, who persist in eating up any number of his sheep and oxen. I will also conduct him to Sparta and to Pylos to see if he can hear anything about the return of his dear father, for this will make the people speak of him well. So saying the bound on her glittering golden sandals, imperishable with which she can fly like the wind over land or sea, she grasped the redoubtable bronze shod spear to stout and sturdy and strong, wherewith to quells the ranks of heroes who have displeased her, and down she darted from the topmost summits of Olympus, whereon forthwith she was in Ithaca, at the gateway of Odysseus's house disguised as a visitor, Mentes, chief of the Typhanes, and she held a bronze spear in her hand. There she found the lordly suitors seated on hides of, an, of the oxen which they had killed and eaten, and playing draughts in front of the house. Man servants and pages were bustling about to wait upon them, some mixing wine with water in the mixing bowls, some cleaning down the tables with wet sponges and laying them out again, and some cutting up great quantities of meat. Yeah, a lot of diplomacy early on. Once we get back to um, playing this live, I, I'll, I'll be moving away from the diplomacy type stuff and just getting into the nitty gritty of uh, of, uh, of fighting it, fi fighting the battles and, and conquest and things, things of that nature. What total war, what the fun parts of total war. I mean, the diplomacy, it, it's cool that the diplomacy in this has um, a new dimension with the barter system and the, uh, the four different resources. That, that is a pretty scary army. To be perfectly honest, it's got a couple of giants in it, and the giants—they uh, don't mess around. Even, even the low tier, low tier giants can can cause a lot of problems, especially for these early tier armies. If you're not prepared for them, Telemachus saw her long before anyone else did. He was sitting moodily among the suitors, thinking about his brave father and how he would send them flying out of the house if he were to come to his own again and be honored as in days gone by. Thus brooding as he sat among them, he caught sight of Athene and went straight to the gate, for he was vexed that a stranger should be kept waiting for admittance. He took her right hand in his own Odysseus. and bade her give him the, her spear. Welcome, he said, to our house, and when you have partaken of food, you shall tell us what you have come for. Create an encampment. He led the way as he spoke, and Athene followed him. When they were within, he took her spear and set it on the spear stand against a strong bearing post along with the many other spears of his unhappy father. And he conducted her to a richly decorated seat under which he threw a cloth of damask. There was a footstool also for her, and he set another seat near her for himself, away from the suitors, that she might not be annoyed while eating by their noise and insolence, and that he might ask her more now freely about work. his father. A maid servant then brought them water in a beautiful golden ewer and poured it into a silver basin for them to wash their hands, and she drew a clean table beside them. An upper servant brought them bread and offered them many good things of what there was in the house. The carver fetched them plates of all manner of meats and set up cups of gold by their side, 
and a manservant brought them wine and poured it out for them. Then the suitors came in and took their places on the benches and seats. Forthwith men servants poured water over their hands, maids went around with the bread baskets, pages filled the mixing bowls with wine and water, and they laid their hands upon the good things that were before them. As soon as they had had enough to eat and drink, they wanted music and dancing, which are the crowning embellishments of a banquet. So a servant brought a lyre to Phemius, whom they compelled her force to sing to them. As soon as he touched his lair and began to sing, Telemachus spoke low to Athene, with his head close to hers, that no man might hear. I hope, sir, said he, that you will not be offended with what I'm going to say. Oh, monster selection, here it is, the hunt. Sorry, we'll get back to Homer in a second. The griffin patriarch, Cerberus, the Lur Lurinian Hydra. I wonder it would be cool if they added more more of this stuff to the game, but I don't think um I don't think we're gonna get any more. I think what we've got for Troy is pretty much what we've got. I don't think um I don't think there's much else coming down the pipe. But this is definitely a cool um cool system. Griffin Patriarch can use an agent action to search gold settlements in for hidden nests of griffin eggs while accompanying an army the griffin patriarch can uh, take the skies um, yeah super powerful unit in in um, in battles very powerful unit in battles and she gives a, like a special army stance there's like special army stance that you can use the griffin, um, which is really useful. And then the the griffin, all like all of these units, all of these um, these creatures can gain experience. So they own settlement points, and then they've got also agent abilities as well. But yeah, I decided to do the hunt for the griffin in the in this campaign because. Um, I felt like the griffin would complement Odysseus the best. Yeah, and those are the, the types of units. A little bit of cavalry. But the, the Cyclops are basically the people who defend the griffins. The, or the, or the, Yeah, so here's the hunting party. I don't know if I'm quite ready to do it yet. As you want to, um, you want to send a solid army because it's not an easy battle. So you want to be able to afford to fill this, uh, fill this up. I'm not sure if I'm going to do it here yet. This is, I've, I've just, Mythic Expedition. Yeah, prepare a hunting party to venture out into the wilds on the trail of a great mythical beast. Choose a leader, hire units, and outfit them with supplies in order to reach the creature's lair. Be careful, for the path will be perilous, and your war warriors will need to be ready for an epic battle. Yeah, see right now we, we don't have enough um, we don't have enough food to be able to do this right now. But um, super cool mechanic. Uh, we'll be doing that a little bit later. Once we've got a little bit of cash and we're we're a little bit see we've got an, an invasion force here. We're gonna lose We're gonna lose Hyrie. There's nothing nothing I can do about that. We're not gonna get there in time. And the the garrison is not going to be able to I'll hold to up refuse. against that. All right, Te Telemachus spoke low to Athene, not a with his head close to hers, that no man might hear. I hope, sir, that he said he, that you will not be offended with what I am going to say. That will Singing never work. comes cheap to those who do not pay for it. 
and all this is done at the cost of one whose bones lie rotting in some wilderness or grinding to powder in the surf. If these men were to see my father come back to Ithaca, they would pray for longer legs rather than a longer purse, for money would not serve them, but he, alas, has fallen on an ill fate. And even when people do sometimes say that he is coming, we no longer heed them. We shall never see him again. And now, sir, tell me and tell me true, who you are and where you come from. Tell me of your own, uh, tell me of your town and parents. What manner of ship you came in, how your crew brought you to Ithaca, and of what nation they declared themselves to be. For you cannot have come by land. Tell me also truly, for I want to know, are you a stranger to this house, or have you been here in my father's time? In the old days we had many visitors, for my father went about much himself. And Athene answered, I will tell you truly and particularly all about it. I am Mentis, son of Anachilius, and I am king of the Typhians. I have come here with my ship and crew on a voyage to men of a foreign tongue, being bound for Temisa with a cargo That's of iron, me. and I shall bring back copper. As for my ship, it lies over yonder, off the open country, away from the town, in the harbor Rethron, under the wooded mountain Neridum. Our fathers were friends before us, as old Laretes will tell you, if you will go and ask him. They say, however, that he never comes to town now, and he lives by himself in the country, faring hardly with an old woman to look after him and get his dinner for him. When he comes in tired from pottering about his vineyard, they told me your father was at home again, and that was why I came. But it seems the gods are still keeping him back, for he is not yet dead, not on the mainland. It is more likely he is on some sea-girt island in mid-ocean, where a prisoner among savages who are detaining him against his will. I am no prophet and know very little about omens, but I speak as it is borne in upon me from heaven, and assure you that he will not be away much longer, for he is a man of such resource that even though he were in chains of iron he would find some means of getting home again. But tell me, I'll listen to the and Lord tell me Ithaca. true, can Odysseus be really have such a fine-looking fellow for a son? You are indeed wonderfully like him about the head and eyes, for we were close friends before he set sail to Troy, where the flower of all the Argives went also. Since that time we have never, never either of us seen the other. My mother answered Telemachus, tells me I am a son to Odysseus, but it is a wise child that knows his own father. Would that I were son to one who had grown old upon his estates. For, since you asked me, there is no more ill-starred man under heaven than he who they tell me is my father. And Athene said, There is no fear of your race dying out yet. While Penelope has such a fine son as you, but tell me, and tell me true, what is the meaning of all this feasting, and who are these people? What is it all about? Have you some banquet, or is there a wedding in the family? For no one seems to be bringing any provisions of his own. And the guests, how atrociously they are behaving. What riot make over the whole host? It is enough to discuss any respectable person who comes near them. Sir, said Telemachus, I as regards your question, as long as my father was here, it was well with us and with the house. But the gods in their displeasure have willed it otherwise and have hidden him away more closely than mortal men was ever yet hidden. I could have borne it better even though he were dead if he had fallen with his men before Troy or had died with friends around him when the days of his fighting were done. For then the Achaeans would have built a mound over his ashes, and I should myself have been heir to his renown. But now the storm winds 
have spirited him away we know not whither. He has gone without leaving so much as a trace behind him, and I inherit nothing but dismay. Nor does the matter end simply with grief for the loss of my father. Heaven has laid sorrows upon me of yet another kind. For the chiefs from all our islands, Dilichium, Zame, and the woodland island of Zaecynthius, as also all the principal men of Ithaca itself, are eating up my house under the pretext of paying their court to my mother, who will neither point blank say that she will not marry nor yet bring matters to an end. So they are making havoc of my estate, and before long will do so with myself. Is that so? Ex exclaimed Athene. Then you do indeed want Odysseus home again. Give him his helmet, shield, and a couple of lances, and if he is the man he was when I first met him in our house, drinking and making merry, he would soon lay his hands about these rascally suitors were he to stand once more upon his own threshold. He was then coming from Epheria, where he had been to beg poison for his arrows from Ilus, son of Murmurs. Ilus fared to ever-living gods and would not give him any, but my father let him have some, for he was very fond of him. If Odysseus is the man he was, these suitors will have a, a short thrift and a sorry wedding. But there it rests with heaven to determine whether he is to return and take his revenge in his own house or no. I would, however, urge you to set about trying to get rid of these suitors at once. Take my advice. Call the Achaean heroes in assembly tomorrow morning, lay your case before them, and call heaven to bear your witness. Bid the suitors take themselves off, each to his own place, and if your mother's mind is set on marrying again, let her go back to her father, who will find her a husband and provide her with all the marriage gifts that so dear a daughter may expect. As for yourself, let me prevail upon you to take the best ship you can get with a crew of twenty men and go in quest of your father who has so long been missing. Someone may tell you something. Or, and people often hear things in this way, some heaven-sent message may direct you. First, go to Pelos and ask Nestor. Thence, go on to Sparta and visit Menelaus, for he got home last of all the Achaeans. If you hear that your father is alive and on his way home, you can put up with the waste these suitors will make for yet another 12 months. If, on the other hand... Yeah, I don't know if we're going to be able to win this. Those giants are going to be trouble, and we are we are outnumbered as well. So this is... this. Uh, I mean, we've got the defensive position, but uh, I don't have high hopes for the garrison here. If, on the other hand, you hear of his death, come home at once, celebrate his funeral rites with all due pomp, <coughs> excuse me, build a burrow to his memory, and make your mother marry again. Then, having done all this, think it well over in your mind how, by fair means or foul, you may kill these suitors in your own house. You are too old to plead infancy any longer. Have you not heard how people are singing? Aristus praises for having killed his father's murderer, Aegisthus. You are a fine, smart-looking fellow. Show your mettle, then, and make yourself a name and story. Now, however, I must go back to my ship and to my crew, who will be impatient if I keep them waiting longer. Think the matter over for yourself and remember what I have said to you. Sir, answered Telemachus, it has been very kind of you to talk to me in this way as though I were your own son, and I will do all you tell me. I know you want to be getting on with your voyage, but stay a little longer till you have taken a bath and refreshed yourself. I will then give you a present, and you shall go on your way rejoicing. I will give you one of a great beauty and value, a keepsake such as only dear friends give to one another. Athene answered, Do not try to keep me, for I would be on my way at once. As for any present, present 
you may be disposed to make me keep it till I come again, and I will take it home with me. You shall give me a very good one, and I will give you one of no less value in return. With these words she flew away like a bird into the air, but she had given Telemachus courage, and he had made him think more than ever about his father. He felt the change, wondered at it, and knew that the stranger had been a god. So he went straight to where the suitors were sitting. All right, I'm going to stop the reading there for a bit. We'll pause the uh, story time for a little while. I need a little break from it. Um, it's not quite finished the chapter. I'm not going to read a chapter at a time. I'm just going to read a little bit here and there when the mood strikes me. I don't want to watch this battle. I'm kind of getting a little bit hungry too. I want to have a little snack. A little snack. Plus two, I've been drinking. I've been drinking too, too much coffee this morning. And I, I got up earlier than I should have. I should have slept in a little bit longer. But um, anyway, I was so excited to get back on streaming today, and I'm excited to continue the live, live gameplay of this campaign. But I, I just want to—it's going to be a long stream today, so I just want to get through all of this, uh, all of this pre-recorded stuff as quickly as possible. So three, like ten, eleven hour. Uh, sessions basically and then um, and then we play some live gameplay on Wednesday but um, yeah I was just so excited I got up early and really should have slept in because yesterday was kind of an exhausting day for me and uh, should have slept in but I didn't because uh, I've been away from YouTube for so long it's been what basically two months since I've been any any real Total War content. I mean, I was do, doing a little bit of um, politically motivated stuff just because of uh, the political climate here in Canada about a month or so ago was, well, about two months ago, was, was electric. Uh, for the first time in a long time, I had felt really proud to be Canadian again. But anyway, I'm not going to get into too much of that. We are in trouble here. We're way outnumbered. I'm not sure what my strategy... It looks like... Okay. Okay. I see what I'm doing here. So, the reason why I've got the spears stretched out in those lines, I'm hoping to pin the units that attack us with the spears. And I want them in the thin lines so that only a few of them at a time are involved in the combat. Um, but yeah, look at the range on those slingers. The slingers are uh, thin in the mode a little bit. And uh, the left flank there, I don't know that those clubs are going to hold long. But they do have the they do have the general's bodyguard to help out. But that's going to be a little bit too much, I think, on that side. They're going to need support. It looks like they're sending everybody over there. The foe has shited your hidden units. Really should send those sword skirmishers over to reinforce because they're sending everything in this direction. I mean, not everything, but like that. The troops coming in on that flank. Yeah, it should, should have sent those sword skirmishers over to help out. But those giants are gonna. Your hero is under attack. Gonna go through those clubs like butter. It's just too many units. And, and they've actually got quite a bit of range. Which is going to be a problem for us here. Weapons oil. Sacred strike. Yeah, see, the clubs are gone. They're done. Which means Your that hero is going to go heart. down fast now. Yeah, that, that scored skirmisher unit, now I'm moving them over. Too late. Should have moved them over way earlier. And those giant, oh my gosh, those giants are going to crush that dude. Giants don't mess around, even those, um, even those low tier ones. Take care. You are losing ground. I love how, um, the combat is, the, um, in this, where they, um, at least the, uh, the, the combat for the individual units, the units all circle around and leave space for them to fight it out. And it's actually very well um, choreographed, which is pretty cool. 
Because like the animations for for Warhammer are awesome. Some of them are really awesome, but because it, they're they're so diverse and so complex that uh, some of them just don't fit together, right? Sometimes it looks a little bit janky. But yeah, we're gonna lose this battle. This is done. I'm gonna go see if I can uh, track down a little bit of a snack to eat, guys. I'll be back with some more commentary in a bit. My skills. Shining Odysseus. I have a plan. That works. I'm afraid I can't. I'll have to refuse. That's not possible. Great deeds. Bring chaos! Let them go. On the way. We are triumphant. Shining Odysseus. With sword and with wit.
I look forward to hearing what you have to say. Not. I'll hear what you have to say. I cannot do that. Never falter it. Don't try any wordplay and we'll come out of this fine. A 
questionable, but effective. <laughs> Boys, I'm back with more commentary. Sorry for the delay. I needed a bit of a break there. We've been going for a few hours, so I just figured time to brew a tea, have a little snack, stretch out a bit, get some fresh air, and uh, yeah, just get a little bit refreshed. We were, we're not quite halfway through the stream, but we're getting close. Oh, yeah. oh, son of a bitch. Good God. But yeah, getting close to the halfway point of the stream. Hope everyone's enjoying the campaign so far. We'll read a little bit more of Homer's Odyssey, but I'm going to take a little bit of a break from it. I'm just going to kick back and, and watch... Uh, it's weird. It's weird watching my own gameplay, and I just like in watching it. I'm just like thinking, like, my goodness, so many mistakes. Morn, morn, what's up, brother? <laughs> Good to see you, my man. I hope you're still there. I hope I didn't miss you in the chat. Um, I was taking a little bit of a break. I apologize. But I am uh, I'm back now. Just let me double check. I turned the microphone on. Sometimes forget. Yeah, we should be good. Microphone wise. Mourn the legend. I figured we'd see him sooner or later. Royal decrees issued. 280 food per turn faction wide. Haha, <laughs> Morn says I'm still here, sir. What's up, brother? Great to see you, man. The the chat's been a little bit quiet, so I was reading through a little bit of uh, the Odyssey there for a bit. Um, and then I just got up and took a little bit of a break. I kind of at uh, four four hours is usually you, you know usually my my comfortable uh, streaming stream time. That's beyond me. Um, so. Uh, Odysseus of I needed a little bit of a, a refreshment. I, I've been drinking a ton of coffee today, and I, I don't know. I, they put too much cream in these coffees, and it, you know, getting that kind of like I have a uh, nauseous kind of feeling. So I just had a plum and a little bit of a uh, little bit of high performance cereal, and I'm feeling heaps better than I was. I've got my yogurt here and my green tea, my honey lemon ginger green tea. So switching over from the coffee. Yeah, I, since since quitting, uh, staying away from Mary Jane, I'm sworn off of it now. No more, no more sweet marijuana for me. I've uh, I've been drinking heaps more coffee, off the green and on the bean. Sadly, <laughs> I don't know which one is worse for you. I don't know coffee. I guess I got. I don't know coffee's highly addictive. But I mean, so is uh, so so are most drugs and so are most things in general, uh, just because of the way our brains operate. Not a but coffee, so long as you're not putting the sugar and the cream in it, it's actually not I'll have to not refuse. that bad for you, or at least my understanding is it's not that bad for you. But yeah, welcome to an old campaign brought new. This was recorded last September. If you recall, this was our 30-hour uh, continuous stream. We're going to do um, the first three parts. Morn says, I hate coffee. Really? Really? Yeah, the, I, I don't know. I've I've come to love it over the years, but I, I have a sweet tooth, so I can't drink like black coffee. So my favorite is to get um, the, the brewed coffee or the instant Starbucks coffee and to put um, flavored creams in it like hazelnut and French vanilla. Uh, caramel toffee oh my gosh so good so good but I don't know when I'm you know I go through phases I've quit drinking coffee before but 
like before I started working at the breakfast place back I guess I started there back two years ago I had quit drinking coffee completely cold turkey had been I had stopped drinking coffee for like two three years and uh, started working at the breakfast place and you know they've got pretty good coffee there and you know constantly brewing it having the smell but what got me was that like a lot of times you know you would get a, a late customer come in or something you'd brew a pot of coffee they'd have one coffee and then the pot would just sit there and you would end up throwing it out so I'm like well I don't want to waste all that coffee so the words that's when of the Lord uh, of Ithaca are always that's when welcome. I started uh, started drinking it again work in the old breakfast joint but I feel like there's um we should do some experimentation with the uh, with the barter system because there's probably a way that you can really cheese it uh, when we get back to some live gameplay we might explore that a little bit but I, I don't know at the same time I don't know I don't want to. I don't want to overuse this uh, this system. Like it's great that it's there, but I don't typically play the Total War games for for in depth diplomacy. I play it for conquest, right? And I mean, it's important to have a diplomacy aspect in the game. And most often, if you want to have a smooth campaign, you've got to have a good diplomacy game. Because if you if you screw up the diplomacy, you can put your set yourself up for a real rough ride in a in a total war campaign but most of my smoothest campaigns in total war have always been where the diplomacy has been has worked out in my favor I've gotten lucky with the diplomacy and had a had a good diplomacy game but here I'm just trying to I'm just playing around with it here see it's weird like we put 10 and it puts it up uh, plus four, 25. See here, I'm experimenting a little bit. See, it, but it doesn't seem to be working the way that I was hoping it would. <laughs> but yeah, 500, 400, 400, 350, zero. Okay, there we go. There we go. But it's definitely nice that this stuff is uh, is in the game, this barter system. It adds a whole different dimension. And I'm, I'm hoping to see resources that like this, different types of resources in a future Total War game. And, and what I'm really hoping for the next historical Total Wars is... I'm really hoping to see like a, a, a living breathing map and what I mean by that is you know areas where you're mining Glory awaits us. marble like it should physically change the map and like the resource should dwindle over time places where you're harvesting lumber should diminish the forest over time but at the same time depending on on how much how quickly time goes of by in the campaign it if you stop harvesting the lumber the forest should regenerate should uh, like make a, an actual a robust living uh, living map I think that would be uh, I think that would be super cool if, uh, if they were able to pull it off because that, that's one of the one of the understated but victory. very big advancements for the Warhammer 2 map is the climate number one the climate they nailed it uh, climate is great I would just like to see it be a little bit more impactful in the battles climate wise maybe for historical total war maybe they should but uh, climate with the different races they they nailed it um, you know when you're in the jungle you real really feel like you're in the jungle when you're in Norska you really feel the punishing nature of the land and so that's one thing another thing that they really nailed is the winds of magic the way that the winds of magic changes in different areas it can be strong or low and, and things like that 
it um, gives a living impression to the map that is constantly Don't changed. You know, you play. have storms we'll of magic. And the, uh, the third aspect is uh, the corruption, the different types of corruption and how it changes the actual visuals of the map and also changes how the different factions interact with the map. All three of those things, climate, winds of magic, and corruption, the different forms of corruption make the Warhammer map in a sense alive. And in the historical war, Total Wars, is, I'm trying to think, but it, the maps are more static. They don't have that aspect of them. And I would love to see, and there's no reason why, why they couldn't. See, I was planning to come down here and settle down here because this settlement, it's like tucked away. It's sort of a, it's a secret island, basically. Like you don't know that it's there when you start the campaign. But I, I think I noticed something and I sent somebody exploring down there. I think I sent an agent exploring down there. But um, I was planning to, to go down there and, and populate it myself. But I think one of those guys are going to do it. But I mean, like visually, this is a a really beautiful map. I mean, the, I mean, all the, you know, I can't think of a Total War campaign map that's visually, you know, not stunning. And even going back to the older ones, I mean, Odysseus we've been playing a little bit of Napoleon Total War recently. We'll be playing some more next week. But even that map, it, even it being dated, it's still got its I charm. Still got its charm. And uh, an old game like Total War Shogun 2, I mean, it's a little bit That's younger than me. Napoleon Total War. I think it came out just after, I think it was the release just after Napoleon Total War. That campaign map, I think it's one of the, I think it, 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 it's very beautiful and it's aged, aged really well. Rome 2, ah, uh, love. Love the visuals of Rome 2's campaign map. I would say though Attila, that will never work. Attila, there's something about like the uh, the Attila. Everything is kind Great of um, like it still it Odysseus still looks good. Still has the details and stuff, but it's, it's something about the color color scheme with Attila. Attila, both with the battle maps and the campaign map, it just feels a bit dreary to a certain respect uh to a certain degree um but i mean it's still it's still beautiful in its own own way but i mean the warhammer maps are kind of next level um i guess you could argue that the three kingdoms map there's something a little bit off with the color like it i think they tried to go with sort of like a watercolor type type thing and it just I don't know, it's something with the graphics, it just, you know, it see, it feels a little bit off. Um, but I've been noticing the same thing now with uh, Warhammer 3, that there's something about the graphics that seem oh, off to me. Job. But I think it's more like the highlighted stuff, like when you highlight units Not and stuff, chance. it's like they're glowing, it's like they're highlighted with a highlighter or something, which in in contrast to how beautiful the the artwork and stuff like that is for like some of the unit models and the maps and stuff like that it just seems like a really really bad contrast to me you know like the highlight for the units and stuff should be really subtle like it shouldn't be shouldn't be overpowered i wonder if there's something in the settings that you can change that i've got to mourn remind me to um install <laughs> Remind me to install Warhammer 3 tonight. I don't want to forget. Um, I, I don't know. I won't forget. I've got some stuff to do, some work to do for Warhammer 3. I've got a lot of catching up to do. <laughs> a little bit of catching up to do for Warhammer 3. Odysseus has some really cool campaign mechanics. You can build... Um, so you can use your agent to establish like a, um, I forget what it's called, but you can establish a building um, in hostile territory. And then when you land on that hostile territory, 
you can use that building to recruit units. Now it's like fairly basic units uh, that you can recruit, but still having that ability, you know, it, it's incredibly powerful, especially when you're, if you want to take your time to plan out, um, plan out invasions and stuff. Super powerful um, ability. Really cool mechanic. Um, however, um, one of the weaknesses with Odysseus is that any of the landlocked settlements don't have the full tier of um, of building slots available. I think you only get like one or two building slots, like even the major settlements. You're a little bit hamstrung in that way. So a little, little give and take there, but pretty cool faction regardless yeah we're, we're gonna be playing this campaign to full map completion and I think we're gonna be playing it Sunday Sunday to Thursday in the mornings it'll normally like once we get into a settled routine like today for the next three days we're gonna be doing 10 to 11 hours and but just mainly because I just want to get through all the pre-recorded stuff as quickly as possible when we settle into a routine it'll be uh, it'll be just around four hours like 11 a.m. Eastern time to 3 p.m. Uh, Eastern time and then and then I'll do a stream a, another four hour stream between 5 p.m. and 9 p.m. of uh, a different Total War title is what I'm planning but we'll settle into a bit of a routine here in the coming days and weeks uh, some days we'll be just releasing some short videos but I got I find I I finally have a little bit of free time to actually work on the channel and I'm really happy about that I don't know how long that's gonna last but for as long as it does I wanna I wanna make the most of it and try and do the most I can for the channel and just have some fun I've been I've been pre-recording because I haven't had internet. I've been pre-recording a challenge campaign, which is um, in the works. I've got about 30 hours. So we're at part four. There's seven parts altogether for today's stream. And then tomorrow, um, tomorrow will be around the same length. And then on Tuesday, it will actually be it's going to be kind of weird on Tuesday because all of the uh, content that was recorded on Tuesday was uh, recorded live at the time. Uh, it was streamed live at the time. So it'll be kind of weird. I'll be communicating with a chat that's in the past. <laughs> but I'll be in the chat myself to clarify that. Um, but anyway, might be a little bit. Ah, oh, God damn it. I brought my yogurt over here, but I've got no spoon. Dios mio. I'll be right back. I live for battle. Ship moving. Fighting for Ares. Anchors away! It won't work. Ship docked. I have a plan. Make way! The army's looking a little bit better now. I've kept the, uh, the initial javelins. Sharp that we started with, but I'll probably phase them out at some point. But um, Ever oh, this is an army there. Even though it's all low tier stuff, should perform Shine really well. Fear. Kept the um, the sirens for now as well, but I'm not. Um, I'm really not a big fan of the sirens. I don't find them terribly useful. So they'll be phased out at some point. The giants are always a little bit, uh, a little bit scary, but those are the the lowest tier of the giants. The 
they've got some, the giants have some cool abilities like they i don't know if they all have it or if it's just maybe the when you get a little bit of a higher tier of the giants they have this ability where they kneel down and pray and then it heals them a little bit which is kind of cool Look at that, that's cool. <laughs> I like it, and it's a nice touch. Definitely a nice touch. Adds the uh, having the, I guess that's Zeus, is it Zeus? Yeah, Zeus, uh, I always get the, the Roman gods and the Greek gods mixed up a little bit. taking some take my tourist camera out taking some screenshots here when I was playing this I was because I was recording this um, pre-recording this during early access I was taking lots of screenshots as I was going through it I apologize for the uh, camera work But yeah, these the skirmisher swords with their javelins in combination with the the archers gives us a lot of range firepower. And um, decent melee combat as well. You know what game I'm looking forward to playing too? I've got a Thrones of Britannia campaign playing coming, com planned coming up uh, soon soonish and looking forward to giving it a second chance I've heard that there's a good mod for it as well so I might play a campaign in it and then we might do the modded campaign but the battles in Thrones of Britannia are actually one of the best battles for uh, in terms of like historical total wars like the it's like it's like Attila battles but much smoother but yeah, I want to do uh, an actually uh, a Viking themed campaign, so we'll use Thrones of Britannia for that. But that all depends on when we start. That depends on when we finish this, when we finish the Napoleon campaigns. But we'll be we'll be mixing things up. We'll be playing different things on the weekends. Lots and lots of content planned for planned for you guys. Really looking forward to it. And of course, membership club coming soon. Club Valhalla with uh, some cool perks, or at least I think they're cool perks. We're gonna be doing uh, campaign requests as one of the perks, and then you can also we're gonna be doing. Um, I'm going to be running some Mech Warrior with uh, Wyvern. I won't be streaming it anymore. I won't be streaming it on this channel anymore. But uh, anyone who's interested, um, if you're a member, you can come join Wyvern and I in the mechs. Get in the mechs and uh, have some good old fashioned fun in Mech Warrior. That game is so much fun too. But yeah, there'll be more details on that coming up. In uh, on Friday, I think on Friday I'll get that all set up for you guys. And I've got some cool emojis. I think so. finally, finally, finally have the some proper emojis. It's only taken here. me a year and a half, but I finally got them ready. Should be a pretty easy battle. We we'll want to take most of the damage on the on the garrison. We we'll want the garrison to bear the brunt of this. 
but we've got the numbers even though they have those uh, couple of units of giants our numbers and our range should uh, should make this relatively easy unless I, unless I do something stupid And yeah, we're, we're going to get some Warhammer 3 on the channel soon too, but freaking, I, I'm not really all that interested in Warhammer 3 until they put the proper map in it and the rest of the factions. Uh, I'm not really interested in the uh, the campaign that they have uh, released the game. But I've heard too that uh, everybody's been saying how the there's a lot of optimization problems. So hopefully by the by the time I'm playing that that will be uh, the game will be in a little bit better shape than it is right now. It's hard to say. Just have to be patient. The foe has sighted your hidden units. I love the music for this game too. Solid music. The only thing is it's not um there's not enough of it, right? Like, it's after you play it for a while, you're hearing the same stuff over and over again. But I think they hit the mood of the the era, the, the time period. I think they hit the mood perfectly. Yeah, I mean, look at how much punishment we're dealing out with all that range. Here come those giants. Did they just treat? Yeah. <laughs> Your hero is under attack. That's not the time you want to use that ability. Um, they just triggered that ability on the giants where they can heal. So essentially, they kneel down, they stop moving, and they and they all recover some of their hit points. You don't want to do it in the middle of charging the enemy. You want to do it when you're, Victory you know, is close enough to taste. There they did it again, and they're not even that low in health. My goodness, that's stupid. The AI, I, I didn't notice that before when I was playing this before, but my goodness, the AI is stupid. But yeah, if you if you know how to use it, um, you'll want to get, get your giants in, get some damage in, and then maybe pull them out and pull them where they're not in range, within range of the enemy's missiles, and then and then get a little bit of healing in. Feel the power. One of the complaints I have with this game is the one of your units has no more ammunition. The icons, the generic icons. I wish, I wish the icons had the pro like individual banners for each faction. I think that would have um, added a different dimension to the game. It just, I, I know it's only an aesthetic thing, but it, you know, aesthetics change how the game feels. Like, I think it's um, I think it's important. Like, if you if you play the game without, um, without any sound, for example, it's like a totally different experience. Or if you turn off the um, the sound that it makes when you when you issue commands it makes a totally different experience and gives it, it gives the game a different feel in a certain respect we're having trouble there's a few straggler units and one of the things i find with this get game is often units will break and rally which is always obnoxious there's one of the things that's like fighting against skaven that the skaven will you know, you break them and then all of a sudden, you know, you, it feels like you're winning the battle and all of a sudden they regroup and come at you again. Well, we're, we definitely got this thing over, under control. I think it would have been a little bit smoother if we had our com forces a little bit closer together, deployed a little bit closer together. Well, I think it went 
really well. Easy, easy peasy. Still, 500, 600 losses. So quite a bit. But I mean, the replenishment is pretty good in this. So it's not really, not really a big deal. Love the cutscenes. The post-battle uh, animations. Not bad Hard at all. Wins Odysseus of Ithaca. Great deeds. Ithaca's lord. That works. I pledge my loyalty. Yeah, the archers are nice. Those are the standard archers for for Ithaca. Are the the only ones that really they have available? You can also recruit a certain amount. Like there's a cap for it, but the uh, the archers of Artemis. But you've got to um, you have a, have to have a specific settlement or a specific settlement type, and then you have to have the favor of Artemis, the god Artemis, and you also have to perform a particular rite for Artemis. So you have to have everything everything set up properly and I think when I was playing this through it took me a while to figure out uh, to realize what you got to do to be able to recruit them but there's a cap for them but they are really good they're 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 better than these standard archers but the standard archers perform really well as well patience Victory beckons. I will do so. Yeah. Feel like I played way too defensively in this campaign. Like we I mean it's worked, like, to a certain extent. Beyond my skills. Too much turtling. Um, because I mean, if you get too passive in a total war campaign on legendary difficulty. The AI just is continually sending wave after wave after wave, and you're not, you know, you're kind of stuck in the mud if you don't get on the move. But it's, total war, it's all about momentum. You want to set up your foundation, get, you know. Strong infrastructure, strong armies, and then get the momentum rolling in your favor, and you know eventually you get to the point where you're unstoppable. But we're very early on here, and we've had like a very, um, very rocky start to the campaign. There's a ton of factions in this too. You got to remember too, guys. I'm, I'm when I played this, I was very much learning, learning the campaign mechanics. The was the, like I played it a little bit on launch when it was launched um, on the um, I forget what the what the hell it's called on the in the Epic Game Store. So I played it a little bit when it was launched in the Epic Game Store and it I was just like really mad. I did not like the whole myth behind the legend or legend be I don't know, I forget what well, myth behind the history or, or whatever whatever their stupid marketing campaign and the sort of in between way that they developed the game initially didn't jive well with me and I just it just we didn't really appeal to like me. Reasonable people. But Troy Mythos, I, I really enjoyed Troy Mythos uh, when it came out. And had it been received a little bit better on the channel, I probably would have um, 
would have continued this campaign right away but because I I've been wanting to continue this campaign for a while that's what I wanted to start with this I will not I be make it my uh, persuaded. little come back here but yeah I've I spent a lot of time managing diplomacy and in the uh, just making barter agreements and stuff like that in this early stage and we got off to a rough rough start we've been on our back foot put on our back foot a couple of times it's hard to defend island you know like a, a string of islands especially in a game where like naval naval warfare is not really a focus And especially early on, the AI has has a little bit more resources to use than than you do, so it's hard to defend, you know, all your borders. Anyway, we would have likely done things quite a bit differently if I were to restart this campaign. I guess that's what I could have done. I could have restarted the campaign. Could have done that. Maybe I should have done that. I don't know. This will be fine. I hope you will make your argument plainly, Odysseus. We've got plenty of time for more live gameplay and I just wanted, wanted to start with something light as well. To get back into the rhythm of things. Yeah, see, I'm trying to figure out if the, if there's a way to cheese, cheese the system a little bit. But well, we need the wood for uh, for some building. We've got a little bit of excess food, so. I don't know why I'm in such a rush to get that built. Once it gets to level four, where's the main settlement? Yeah, no, the naval settlements. When you get to get it to level four, you get access to an elite infantry unit. Uh, turns got a little bit of uh, domination tournament the Royal Rumble Total War Warhammer 3 interesting stuff there uh, I'd be tuned into that if I wasn't uh, streaming here right now um, though I uh, look at I just looking at the, his numbers here I think his his age of That's Empire streams some of them have performed better than his his Warhammer stuff Glory some of them Maybe not all of them, but Age of Empires did really well for his channel, and I actually thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed watching his Age of Empires com content. I was thinking about picking up that game myself, but I just never got around to it. Games are, you know, you gotta pick and choose, pick and choose your games, they're expensive these days. Where did I put my book? I've lost the the Iliad or sorry the Odyssey. I don't know where I put it. Oh there it is. Exciting. I live for battle. 
Well, chat's a bit quiet. Glory beckons. So I might read. Let's see if we can get through this first chapter. Where was I? All right, yes. We finished up right there. So we we'll reread the last line that I'd read. With these words, she flew away like a bird into the air, but she had given Telemachus courage and had made him think more than ever about his father. So Athene had come to visit Telemachus, the son of Odysseus, and um, had given him some, some advice, but she visited him in disguise. She was disguised as um, a friend of Telemachus's father's. Lots of good stuff in the in the technology. It's just hard to decide what to, to take. So Athene had visited Telemachus, given him some great advice, had come in disguise, and uh, she was uh, I think she's a son of one of one of the main gods, maybe Zeus. I'm not sure. I think she's the son of or the daughter of Zeus, and she comes in the disguise of a uh, one of Odysseus's uh, male friends. Telemachus felt the change, wondered at it, and knew that the stranger had been a god. So he went straight to where the suitors were sitting. Phemius was still singing, and his hearers sat wrapped in silence as he told the sad tale of the return from Troy, and the ills of Athene had laid upon the Achaeans. Penelope, daughter of Icarus, heard his song from her room upstairs and came down by the great staircase, not alone, but attended by two of her handmaids. When she reached the suitors, she stood by one of the bearing posts that supported the roof of the cloisters with a staid maiden on either side of her. She held a veil, moreover, before her face and was weeping bitterly. Phemius, she cried, you know many another feat of gods and heroes such as poets love to celebrate. Sing the suitors some one of these and let them drink their wine in silence. But cease this sad tale for it breaks my sorrowful heart and reminds me of my lost husband whom I mourn every whom I mourn ever without ceasing and whose name was great over all Hellas and Middle Argos. Mother answered Telemachus. Let the bard sing what he has a mind to. Bards do not make the ills they sing of. It is Zeus, not they, who makes them, and who sends the weal or woe upon mankind according to his own good pleasure. This fellow means no harm by sing singing the ill-fated return of the Danans, for people always applaud the latest songs most warmly. Make up your mind to it and bear it. Odysseus is not the only man who never came back from Troy, but many another went down as well as he. Go then within the house and busy yourself with your daily duties, your loom, your distaff, and the ordering of your servants, for speech is man's matter, and mine above all orders, others, for it is I who am master here. Ooh. Telemachus laying down the rules to his poor mom. Though, I mean, in his defense, you know, things have become a bit of a mess in his house. Uh, she went wandering back into the house and laid her son staying in her heart. Then, going upstairs with her handmaids into her room, she mourned her dear husband, Telethini, shed a sweet sleep over her eyes. But the suitors were clamorous throughout the covered cloisters and prayed each one that he might be her bedfellow. Then Telemachus spoke, Shameless, he cried, and insolent suitors, let us feast at our pleasure now, and let be no let there be no brawling, for it is a rare thing to hear a man with such a divine voice as Phemius has. But in the morning meet me in full assembly that I may give your formal notice to depart. Okay, so the, yeah, the naval battles are the same as, I couldn't remember how the naval battles work in this, but they're the same as, uh, 
Same as Warhammer, where you fight like uh, a land battle at sea. <laughs> Which, it, I, I don't know. It's, I don't know. Anyway, I miss naval battles in Total War. I hope they come back one day. Uh, meet me in full assembly that I may give you formal notice to depart and feast at one another's houses. Turn and turn about at your own cost. If, on the other hand, you choose to persist in sponging upon one man, heaven help me, but Zeus shall reckon with you in full. And when you fall in my hot father's house, there shall be no man to avenge you. The suitors bit their lips as they heard him and marveled at the boldness of his speech. Then Antinous, son of Euphithes, said, The gods seem to have given you lessons in bluster and tall talking. May Zeus never grant you to the chief in Ithaca as your father was before you. Telemachus answered, Antinous, do not chide with me, but God willing, I will be chief too if I can. Is this the worst fate you can think of for me? It is no bad thing to be a chief, for it brings both riches and honor. Still, now that Odysseus is dead, there are many great men in Ithaca, both old and young, and some other may take the lead among them. Nevertheless, I will be chief in my own house, and will rule those whom Odysseus has won for me. Then Eurymachus, son of Polybius, answered, It rests with heaven to decide who shall be chief among us, but you shall be master in your own house and over your own possessions. While there is a man in Ithaca, no one shall do you violence nor rob you. And now, my good fellow, I want to know about this stranger. What country does he come from? Or what family is he? And where is his estate? Has he brought you news about the return of your father? Or was he on business of his own? He seemed a well-to-do man, but he hurried off so suddenly that he was gone in a moment before we could get to know him. Your warriors have spotted hidden foes. Yeah, I love I love how you can uh, position on the ridges in some points in the game. Though it doesn't seem to be, yeah, doesn't seem to be doing us a whole lot of good. My father is dead and gone, answered Telemachus. And even if some rumor reaches me, I put no more faith in it now. My mother does indeed sometimes need for a soothsayer and question him, but I give his prophecy no heed. As for the stranger, he was Mentes, son of Anachilius, chief of the Taphians, an old friend of my father's. But in his heart, he knew that it had, it had been the goddess. The suitors then returned to their singing and dancing until the evening. But when night fell upon their pleasuring, they went home to the bed, each in his own universe. abode. Telemachus' room was high up in a tower that looked on to the other court, the outer court, hither. Then he hide, brooding and full of thought. A good old woman, Euralia, daughter of Ops, the son of Pisnor, went before him with a couple of blazing torches. Leretis had bought her with his own money when she was quite young. He gave the worth of twenty oxen for her and showed as much respect to her in his household as he did to his own wedded wife. But he did not take her to his bed where he feared his wife's resentment. She, it was who now lighted Telemachus to his room and she loved him better than any of the other women in the house did. For she had nursed him when she was a ba when he was a baby. He opened the door of his bedroom and sat down upon the bed. As he took off his shirt, he gave it to the good old woman, who folded it tidily up and hung it for him over a peg. His bedside. After which she went out, pulled the door by a silver catch, and drew the bolt home by means of the strap. 
but Telemachus, as he lay covered with a woolen fleece, kept thinking all night through of his intended voyage and of the counsel that Athene had given him. Bum, 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 bum. That's the end of book one. I don't know that I'm going to read much more of this today because... I don't know. We'll see. Might dip into it a little bit more, but I want to just kind of sit back, relax, and watch, uh, watch the campaign. Hungry for glory, eh? Pretty easy battle, just a small battle. It's uh, hard to believe <laughs> that this is a naval battle. Um, yeah. Anyway, what can you do? Hero yeah, the attack. one thing the the in the trees and the grass and everything, it is really, really tough to see units. Like the forest battles in this are crazy tough to um, to see um, see what's going on sometimes. enough to taste. The combat is really well choreographed though. Like the animations work really well together. When the when these guys get into single hand combat. It's not bad at all. And it's really cool when they're in amongst other units and the units all circle around and give them room to fight. Definitely, definitely a cool touch. guy just will not go down and actually our general is running they're gonna come back good god if we lose this battle oh. trouble is the 
The single entity generals. I guess the this historical mode has like full bodyguards with the generals, which I'd be okay with checking out. I just really like I like the mythical aspect of the game. All right, he did come back, but it looks like I don't know. I just can't get the archer unit out of there. Seems like he's just as fast as the ar archer unit. Close fight. It's a close fight, but the hitting the general's ability there, I think, gave him the edge. Looks like we got him. There we go. And that was close. That could have um could have turned the other way. Ha <laughs> ha, kebab G. What's up, my man? How are you, brother? Good to see you. Go straight to Hades. Does I love coffee? Drinking some right now. Yeah, I, I myself am. Uh, I'm a big coffee fan. I've I've drank. I, w I was saying earlier that um, to mourn that I've drank too much coffee today, and the the coffees that I was drinking had too much cream in them. So I've got kind of that uh, that a uh, little bit of a. I don't know, that kind of upset stomach after drinking too much coffee with too much cream and sugar more more cream than sugar but but yeah good to see you my man what have you been up to just getting caught up on this campaign this is an, this is old footage but we're going to be continuing this campaign live on Wednesday. But we we got to get through the old footage first. Because um, it was... Um, it's not posted on YouTube. And I just... I wanted to get this campaign posted for... I just figured, why waste the content? You know, it's already recorded. Let's get it on there. Ooh, Kebab says you should try out slow cooked coffee, good sort. It's really good. Yeah, you know what? I wouldn't mind giving it a go. There's, I, I want to try um, chocolate coffee. I've been watching uh, Bjorn Bull Anderson, or I can't remember his name exactly, but he's uh, out in Norway, Norwegian YouTuber, uh, big YouTuber, 500k. He just hit 500k subs, and he. Um, he always goes out into the woods, into his local woods, makes a little fire, and brews himself a bit of um, brews himself a bit of chocolate coffee. And I'm like, man, that sounds so good. Kebab says, "Survive COVID, about to be conscripted to fight Putin." Really? Eh? Is it that? I I've heard it's pretty bad, and I've been trying not to pay attention to it because it's just gonna. I I don't know. Like it's. It, it's uh, quite the situation but um yeah my goodness we 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 are on the edge of world war three which is terrifying um but yeah how how are things over um you're in the netherlands right uh oh what's going on with our audio okay right <laughs> I think there might have been a crash there when I was recording this. But anyway, we're getting ready to set up our, our mythic expedition here. Just uh, deciding what units we're going to recruit and set on this expedition here. This is definitely uh, this is one of my favorite uh, features of the game. Prepare a hunting party to venture out into the wilds on the trail of a great mythical be beast. Choose a leader. Sorry, I didn't quite get all that. I think... I'm just thinking, like... I don't have quite enough cash. If we can get, like... Or by cash, I mean food. Basically... The, uh... The food is your, um... Your... 
your cash for your soldiers. You, uh, most of the soldiers, the recruitment requires um, requires food. Uh, Kebab says, I'm overreacting, but it's a little spooky here on the continent. Definitely need Morn to cuddle me. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Morn maybe, uh, maybe dipped out for a bit or maybe fell asleep. I don't know. Um... I'm not sure if he's he's lurking. I suppose we may if he's as well still talk. around, but yeah, no, I, I I get you. It's spooky here too, man. Like there there were a couple weird things that happened here recently in Toronto. So one, the reserves were doing some kind of drill down in the subways here, uh, which was a little bit odd. And there was a train that went through sure. Toronto. I don't know which way it was heading. I don't know if it was heading east, west, north. But there, it was on, I saw the article. I didn't read the full article, but, um, and my friend had told me the same thing. He listens to a lot of these uh, podcasts like Timcast and stuff like that. But a train had gone through Toronto carrying like a, a shit ton of tanks, um, which is an an oddity because you know the Canadian military doesn't have or at least I didn't think the Canadian I don't think the Canadian military has like a lot of a lot of uh, vehicles and equipment and stuff but I guess I guess our, our country is slowly getting bigger so and slowly investing more in the military so I, I honestly don't really know how much but yeah there's been some spooky stuff happening here I heard that there was a weird incursion into Sweden um, like a reconnaissance plane, like a Russian reconnaissance plane went into Sweden, like, uh, it does sort of like the same kind of reconnaissance that a satellite would, would do, but it's the type of plane that does reconnaissance for, uh, prepar uh, preparing for nuclear strikes. So it's, it's, you know, it's a scary time and, and Putin is not fooling around, man. He means business. Uh, Kebab says uh, nothing special here in the Netherlands. Expect I live a few mi except I live a few miles from the in Internation Court of Justice, where Putin is getting judged for his war crimes. So my home is high on the list of getting nuked. Yeah, you know, like I don't know. If the nukes start flying, we're all fucked. I I think. Like especially anyone who lives in a city or near a city, because um. Something like that will escalate super fast. Mythic expedition underway. Your journey begins. Preparations have been made and the expedition is... Uh, I should have paused it there so we could read that. But yeah, we're on the hunt for a mythical creature. A griffin. Exciting stuff there. But I, you know, like... Show no fear war crimes like all you know in a lot of ways all war war is a crime but what you know it is a highly complex situation and like just painting it black and white putin's bad ukraine is good is absurd um you know totally absurd I, and i'm not gonna i'm not going to profess that i know or understand any any of the situation really the complexities of the situation but I um I would not trust anything that comes out of like mainstream politics or, or mainstream media and stuff <laughs> Bob says my favorite mythical creature is Edwin von Karstein <laughs> what's uh what's Edwin been up to these days I haven't seen Uh, I haven't seen Edwin. Neve says, uh, bum today. <laughs> What's up, Neve? Uh, Kebab says, but Putin is bad. Yeah, uh, Putin is bad, but so are, like, 90% of the, the people in politics and the leaders. Like, my God, Justin Trudeau here in Canada is... Man, that guy is despicable. And, uh... Goodness, I, I can't wait to get rid of him. I think he, he should be tried for treason, to be perfectly honest. But anyway, we won't get into this. Yeah, so here's the... that's So Atlas, we have the operation uh, option to build... Um, 
a camp even though we don't hold the settlement sort of like uh, I guess like the Skaven's underground cities but it allows us to recruit in uh, in that province if we if we build those buildings yeah so I was gonna send somebody out here to to establish a colony but these guys beat me to it but that's uh, secret island it's uh, the island of the the Cyclops Helos you got there before I did yeah I've been super slow to move in this campaign I've just been very um very defensive minded which is not always the best strategy in a Defeat in a total war campaign not well we should be we should be just about ready to expand over there I mean it's turn 22 <laughs> and I'm still in the first province so that's you know usually bad sign <laughs> bad sign the uh, sign that we're off to an incredibly slow start it was a rocky start to be honest we have had a couple of um, couple of setbacks and a, a number of uh, number of setbacks divinely blessed and I'm just uh, having trouble Let's getting off these of damn islands wisdom then a chilies. I always knew we'd win. Thing is, too, it, it's taken me a little while when I was playing this. I was confusing some of the faction symbols. Like, it's going to take a little bit of getting used to the different symbols and emblems for each of the factions. Because there, there is a shit ton of factions in this uh, in this campaign. But it does present an interesting political situation where you have the Greeks... Uh, you know, you have different, um, like the Greek states, we can, I'm pretty sure we have the op option to confederate with most of them. Then you've got the, um, the Trojan factions, and I think there's a couple of other races as well. But yeah, I can't wait to get back into this campaign. We'll be playing live again on... We'll be all caught up by Wednesday. Wednesday will be the first live uh, recording. And we'll settle into a nice schedule. Do, do a couple of hours of this every day, I think. And uh, I, I want to I go full map completion for this. So we've got a lot of, a lot of Troy content coming up. Got some other content coming too, but plenty of Total War content coming up in the uh, next couple of weeks. But yeah, Kababi, Kababji, I I don't envy you, man. I I wouldn't want to like. Europe seems like a hot zone right now, especially you know, it's. I'll win. You know, Ukraine is not, um, you know, it's a little bit too close to home. But uh, the one... Setting course. The, the one thing that has been been good is that the, the Russians have have avoided, Ever you know, as faithful. much as far as possible in a, in a modern a war, coming. a lot of the collateral damage that you can get. When you compare it to the, the Iraqi invasion that the Americans did... Um, like the Americans went in, demolished everything, like everything in their path. And then there were certain players involved 
that received like big contracts to I think Halliburton is the name of the country to go in and rebuild everything. They essentially like smashed everything or smashed big chunks of the cities and then went back in and um, and rebuilt it, gave out these. Uh, but yeah, that's the American war machine. And I, I think you would find that like the way that the American empire is structured is, is very different than like most, you know, um, the in, in philosophy that is uh, of most American citizens, like most, uh, you know, normal everyday citizens. I think the philosophy of, you know, I, I, I think most Americans don't wouldn't want to be in wars overseas, and, and that's one of the warnings that the founding fathers had said is not to get involved in in these foreign foreign wars and stuff. It uh, you get entangled in all of these weird treaties and stuff like that. But anyway. Just trying to figure out which um is the, he's got some really cool skills in his skill tree. I like I like the way the skill trees are, are structured in this. Making her move finally, finally expanding a little bit here. Those who oppose me meet Hades. People deserve the truth. Well, a truth. Odysseus of Ithaca. Companion of Ares.
Sorry guys, I just uh, got up to stretch there for a second. What a time to get up. Um, I wanted, I, I think we're going to rewind here a little bit. <laughs> I rewind, uh, dating myself a little bit here. All right. Uh, yeah, let me just uh, let me just pause this. Your expedition has made camp on the outskirts of the Illyrian lands, beyond the farthest northern reaches of Achaea. The world is already different from what you know. Full of light, rain, and deep green forests, the smell of rich loam. Yet, this is just the beginning. Your goal lies even farther away, near the outermost bounds of the world, as your people know it, where rivers flow with gold and gemstones, and the cliffs and caves reverberate with the cries of fantastical beasts. One of them is your quarry, the griffin. All right, so scout ahead. It will take a toll on the warriors, but battles... Okay, what... Uh, what am I going to choose here? Tactical training, the forest and mud. Accept a special gift from tribesmen. Taking provision from neighboring tribes. What are we going to go with? Special gift from tribesmen. The gift is a filthy blonde slave youth. Completely naked. A wooden leer strung with sheep guts dangling from his hand. The, sur the surly elders swear that he is a singing priest of Apollo and can make your journey through Illyrian lands much easier. After you agree to an exchange, the slave straightens up and looks at you with unusual lucidity. Thank you, General. You cannot imagine what it is like to impart the wisdom of civilized religion to these savages. Though their women were forthcoming enough, and I am no singing priest, my name is Sudius, and I am but the vessel of a great Apollo. He told me in a dream that you would come and you would lead me to the self-same griffin which pulls his chariot, so it may take me to him on Olympus. O oh, gods, are the only words that come to your mind. The expedition has gained Sudius the slave. O oh, gods, it's Sudius. Or Sudius. Interesting. Interesting turn of events. I have a plan. With sword and with wit. They will pay. Spill some blood. Alright, here we go. We're finally expanding a little bit. It's taking half an age. But we're on the move. I could do that. Bring chaos. Engage the foe. Head out. Justify the unseen threat is the hardest to combat. The helping hand of fate. Plus five percent success chance to all agent is uh, is nice. Incapacitating two percent from all poison casualty replenishment. Plus five percent to critical success chance is, is like is excellent um critical success is usually very fairly low so improving it by five percent is is pretty huge Hold nothing back. easy auto resolve oh my oh my gosh oh my gosh the guy was already dead man come on odysseus he's got a mean streak This city is ours now. Exceptional warriors found. Mirius Nos. And that's how it's done. Yeah, I think there's giants available here. 
and any any region where you can build um, favored by Athena uh, with the with the wood resource I think is where you can get those archers of Artemis warriors of Artemis I think if I'm not mistaken But yeah, we would definitely want to get that capital settlement at us. Potifix says, beep boop. What's up, Potifix? Welcome back. I'm back and I'm a raid this corner of your territory beyond vision. <laughs> oh man, I'm looking forward to getting some, uh, getting back into Warhammer. I'm playing, I'm going to be finishing up my, uh, my last Warhammer 2 campaign. It's my first Warhammer 2 campaign and my last Warhammer 2 campaign. Though we may, we may one day return to Warhammer 2. Uh, depends on how, how good the, uh, I, I feel like, I agree with Legend that once once the Immortal Empires map comes out, nobody's going to play Warhammer 2 anymore. That Warhammer 2 will kind of fade away, except for maybe like, you know, nostalgia with the Vortex, but uh, that's not going to be me. But uh, I will be... I, love a I will be uh, finishing up my Warhammer 2 campaign this weekend. I think... I think... I'm trying to... Got it. Double check my schedule, but my schedule my schedule's not set in stone. But I'm pretty sure Saturday we'll play a little bit next weekend. Keep thinking today is Monday, but today is Sunday. I don't know why I think it's uh I don't know why I keep thinking it's Ithaca's Lord. Ooh Yep. Yep, next weekend. Next Saturday. Yeah, it's gonna be Mythos all week long. Destroy Mythos, and then we're going to be playing a little bit of uh, Napoleon towards the end of the week, and then on Saturday, World War Beard, High Elves versus the Dwarves. End game. <laughs> Bonifix says, "Who has nostalgia for Vortex?" True enough. True enough. It's sad because the Vortex map itself is gorgeous. It's a beautiful map. I just hope that when the, with the uh, Immortal Empires map that we get the rest of the Vortex map that the Vortex is not cut off like it is in Mortal Empires that's my hope but uh, we'll have to wait and see I have to wait and see god I'm dying to get back into this campaign I can't wait till we get through this pre-recorded stuff I should have just restarted the campaign maybe maybe that would have been better off I don't know. I just felt like, you know, I have this content and, the, you know, you can't view the stream that we did previously, the 30-hour stream. So I just felt like it would be a waste of the content if I didn't republish it. So here we are. Pre-recorded stuff. <laughs> but I'm I'm pumped to play Warhammer 3. I just wish that um, they release the game complete with the with the uh, the full map. Though I guarantee you, <laughs> I guarantee you, had they released 
in with the full map and all the factions available, probably no one would have played the um, the map that's out right now. I mean, maybe some people would have, but I don't know. I have a funny feeling that that everyone would have kind of like been like, nah, I just want I just want the sandbox experience. I want to play the big map. Not that the big map necessarily means it's better, because uh, I, I really enjoy some of the mini campaigns that you have in Rome too. I think they're they're excellent, but it's just I don't know why uh, the vortex where you're streamlined into uh, you know one particular avenue for victory. I just I don't like that, and I, I think it's the same thing with Warhammer Three with the Warhammer Three map. Yeah, I'm just looking into these different altars. Altar of Ar Artemis. That's the one we want to unlock the archers. I think Artemis is like the, the goddess of the hunt. Another another cool thing that's in, in this is the, the religion system. The, the religion is, is um, definitely kind of a cool feature. Appease the gods or suffer. Words win through. Yeah, most some of the skill points, the way that the skill trees work, there there are some of the lower skill tiers. I I don't want to use the skill points necessarily. So um, yeah, warlord mentor. These mentors are good. I think I, I think I remember what it is. The mentors, some of their skills increase a uh, certain resource. Pontifex says Kislev has religion. Huh. Oh, interesting. I, I'm, I, I'm pumped to play as Kislev and I'm pumped to play as Grand Cathay. Uh, Cathay. Um, I'm pumped to play both those two factions. So um, really, really looking forward to that. Um, yeah, interesting. I, you know, Pontifex. I know next to nothing about Warhammer Three. Unfortunately, aside from the little bit of research I did when I did that preview video for uh, Grand Cathay, I, I I had intended to do a bunch of those preview videos, but the last two months of my personal life has been pure chaos, and um, I'm glad that the storm is over. But uh, I'm. Yeah, in, in huge catch-up mode for uh, for Warhammer Three. Single barter military. Why didn't I take that? Oh my god! Oh my god! Should have taken that with Sparta. Uh, that's gonna come back to bite me in the ass because uh, later on, Sparta and I have a bit of a disagreement. Not to spoil things for you guys, but. Uh, Things go sour with Sparta at some point. God, but I, you know, watching this, rewatching my gameplay here, I'm just like, fuck me. I am really dragging my heels here and just not expanding very fast at all. Who needs dealing with? Even the greatest army has weaknesses. I cannot do that. Yeah, I'm just Shock so constantly worried about, you know, losing a settlement. Keeping their our settlements defended, that kind of and strong moving tactics. really, really slowly. Move it. Uh, Pontifex says, "Yes, chaos realms are kind of dumb, and as legend said, offer no we'll reward here. for the penalties you suffer." Yeah, that's you know, legend has has pointed that out on numerous occasions with um, 
major design flaws in, in Total War campaigns at times. And it was the same thing with the Vortex campaign that, you know, the, the reward um, is not high enough for, for the risk. Like, uh, that oftentimes that, um, yeah, in, in terms of the mechanics that they make for the games, often the, the rewards are not worth it. Um, and that's kind of shit. Uh, Pontifex says this morning, I added the mod to change time between rifts. Yeah, you were saying earlier, I think, or, or maybe somebody else was saying earlier that they, they had done the same thing. And Angry Joe, Angry Joe had complained about that, that the rifts, the, the time on the rifts just totally ruined the uh, the pacing of the game and his enjoyment of the game. Like he said, he said the game should have been, should have been a 9 or maybe even a 10, but certain specific design flaws knocked it all the way down to an 8, I think. But, uh, you know, the game is very much in its infancy, and I'm of the mind, I just, I, I don't care about this campaign uh, that they've added. I, I don't care about the, the, the demon factions. I want to play, I want to play as, uh, I'm looking forward to um, when they update the Warriors of Chaos. I'll definitely do a Warriors of Chaos campaign. But as they are right now, they kind of kind of stink. I hope, hopefully, when they drop the Immortal Empires map, maybe maybe we'll get a little bit of an update for the Warriors of Chaos because that was the first, that was the bonus offer for Warhammer One, and they stink <laughs> like one of the most vanilla, you know, bare bones mechanic wise faction you know, one of the poorest unit variety roster. Just um, really sad state of affairs, the Warriors of Chaos, and they should be really one of the coolest faction in, factions in the game. And hopefully uh, Warhammer 3, when they release at the first um, either free LC or the first DLC, or even when they, they offer the... Um, the the uh, the grand campaign map that the <coughs> the warriors of chaos are well taken care of. Otherwise, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw a throw a little bit of fit. <laughs> a little bit of a fit. Ooh, Pontifex. Let me ask you this one question. But I I think I know the answer already. And I'm gonna kind of um. Yeah, I think I know the answer already. But. Oh, oh, we've got meet the Illyrians. We have we have started the arduous journey through Illyria. The weather is not on your side, and neither are the locals. Wild, godless tribes, death cults, and savages. And when they seem to know of the Olympian gods, they know of them in strange ways. And their stories of them are poor in wisdom and rich in bloody sacrifice. As you near the territory of a coalition of tribes known for their particularly bloodthirsty war chief, you awaken one morning to find the man himself and a full complement of well-armed warriors waiting outside the boundaries of your camp. Offer them a special gift, accede to their demands, or challenge them. What are we going to do here? Um, yeah, so Pontifex, what I wanted to ask you is, does Warhammer 3 have extreme unit scale? Poseidon's anger grows. Farmers of the Trode have become unsettled following a small quake that has struck the lands nearby Troy. Though this tremor did not inflict any significant damage, the priest warned... God dang it. Rewind. That rewinded too far. The savages expected you, on the other hand, you're not impressed by the teeth and bones and stones and pieces of supposedly human skin hanging from them, but you know the rustling in the woods around them means there are no doubt more of them lying in wait. The Illyrian smiles. You smile back, baring your teeth. The battle is ugly and protracted. Your men are badly bloodied. The Illyrian's men, however, are heaps of corpses, his own included. Throughout the rest of your trek, 
through his lands, your anger is still smoldering, and you pillage whatever villages stand in your way. So show of force, your units have lost some of their health, but our units have gained experience, and we've got plenty plus 20% morale for, for all units in our army, and plus 50% charge bonus. Uh, Pontifex says what? Um, extreme unit scale. So it's it's in Troy Mythos. Troy Mythos has extreme unit scale. So you normally you have ultra unit scale. Troy Mythos has extreme unit scale. Um, Three Kingdoms Total War has extreme unit scale, and it's a step up from from ultra. And uh, the remastered. Rome, Rome Remastered, has extreme unit scale as well. So, does Warhammer 3 have, go only up to Ultra, or does it go up to extreme? Is there an extreme unit scale for it? That's, uh, that's what I'm interested in. Because for me, it's a big deal. It's a big fucking deal. Even though my system won't be able to handle extreme unit scale. And probably my guess is uh, the um, what are the alleged uh, performance issues that I've heard for Warhammer 3. I feel like the answer is no. That there is no extreme unit scale. That's my guess. But... Uh, yeah, just curious. Small, medium, large, ultra. My, oh my, oh my. What a sad, sad state of affairs that is. Wow. They damn done fucked it up. I mean, they could always put it in later. But probably what they'll whine about is the balancing. Because because there's such a diverse there's such diverse class of units. Like it, it would be it would be a really monumental overhaul yes. for them to add extreme Why unit not? scale because like it would really there's so many different unit sizes and unit types, but at the same time I think they should be capable of doing it. But anyway, but yeah, Three Kingdoms, Three Kingdoms Total War is still the pinnacle of Total War because it has the largest battles. So it has the largest maps and it has the most units on a battle. You can have battles up to like 20,000 units. Talk? Yes. Why not? In a single, on a single battlefield, which is nuts. Nuts, I say. Uh, Pontifex says I even use large. Yeah, I think what large I think is the size is the standard for like multiplayer. I hate it. <laughs> I hate it. Um, but I mean, even playing on ultra on um, Warhammer, my system, you know, certain battles the system will chug. Like it's just there's so many animations, like the the Skelly Boy armies. You know, we get like a lot of Skaven on the field. The Ske Skaven army. You get some massive armies. In Warhammer game, in Warhammer battles, the uh, the Tomb Kings. I accept that words you get a lot of armies on the field at the war. same time. Some of the Greenskin armies get really big with those Wogs. Uh, Pontifex says it does have all the diplomacy like Troy and 3K. Yeah, I saw that, um, which is um, which is awesome, and, and even I think it's tweaked in a way that's uh, maybe better than Troy and 3K. But I just I, I love the large scale battles. Um, though the maps the maps look a lot bigger for Warhammer three, which I'm really happy about. How do you find? How are you liking the sieges in Warhammer three Pontifex? Yes. Because I'm I'm thinking of doing some siege spotlights, and what are the siege uh, siege battlefields like? With Athena's blessing, duty first. Because I've got some. Um, I've got a, a project in mind for some sieges. Only thing, unlike 3K, it doesn't have uh, the option to downgrade a building, which I kind of like. 
Uh, maps are much better. Good, good, good. Yeah, that that's one of my 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 big irks with Glory. with this game is the maps are really small. Though some of the siege maps are nice, but in general the maps are small. Pontifex says I hate sieges. I, I feel like the sieges enemies. versus the AI are Poison always gonna be kind of meh. Because the AI kind of struggles to have Beyond any kind skills. of complex strategy. Odysseus but, I mean, if you follow Pixelated Spill Apollo, Pixelated Apollo, his channel, which is they the biggest pay. Total War channel out there by far, you know, he dwarfs Hero legend. Material. He's like double legend. Though, if you do it in terms of, of views, views now, legend, legend dwarfs Pixelated. But in terms of Did subscribers... Um, pixelated Apollo his his entire channel his entire channel is built on sieges and um, I I think that siege battles in for Warhammer in the same way that pixelated Apollo presents them is something that is completely uh, completely uh under uh you know like nobody covers it nobody literally like pixelated apollo hates warhammer so he doesn't cover it and nobody else plays it i was talking to turn i was talking to uh to or i was asking turn the other night on his stream what he thinks of sieges and he's like i hate sieges <laughs> i don't like sieges he's like uh i like field battles he's like sieges are are, um, you know, it's just, you know, basically you're just cheesing the AI every time. It's like, I hate it. But at the same time, like, there's no competitive siege um, scene for Warhammer, which I think is an untapped uh, area. So it's something that I'm going to look into. Um, Pontifex says, I prefer to sally out uh, when on defense or hold out and wait for auto-resolve. Yeah, I, I, I wish... I, I wish there was more... Um, but yeah, look at this. This is a nice siege map. The sieges in this game are tough too because you don't have siege equipment in terms of like there's no artillery, anything like that. And um, I think I'm lining those up, those guys up backwards. I think I just lined those guys up backwards. Or are we, are we on the defense? We're not on the defense here. Why? Are those our reinforcements or their reinforcements? Oh, those must be their reinforcements. Sorry, guys. I'm not paying attention to what's happening in the campaign. Um, but, yeah, I wish there was a lot more options. I'll be covering siege stuff and, and what I hope will be a siege overhaul in, in future videos. I've, I've already got, like, tons of stuff pre-recorded. And, uh, yeah, the channel is going to look a lot, a lot different in the, um, in the days and weeks to come. A lot different. There's a lot more streams, a lot more content coming, but also a lot more um, specialized videos and stuff. Yeah, and the other thing that makes these these um, these sieges tough in this game is the towers. The towers are really deadly. But the, there's some nice maps in this. I think the best Total War for Siege maps, and, and I'm just talking Siege maps, is uh, Total War Three Kingdoms. Uh, sorry, not Total War Three. Sorry, I misspoke. I, I do like the Siege maps in in Three Kingdoms, but they're they're relatively generic. Like they're they're very they're all very similar. Um, you know the the actual physical terrain of the you know varies, but like most of those. And the map sizes are big, but they're, they're very generic. But what I meant to say was uh, the best Total War in terms of Siege maps, and I think it's, you know, by a mile, is uh, Thrones of Britannia. The Siege, the siege maps in, in Thrones of Britannia are awesome. Um, I'm going to have to cover it at some point. Um, but yeah, Thrones of Britannia came out, so sort of built on the, it, it was the built on the Attila engine, but built a lot in mind with like the optimization that came with uh, Warhammer 1, and it was also 
built in my, because Attila was horribly optimized, right? Yeah, th that's what we're doing. We're cutting off the. I thought I just positioned these guys in the wrong way, we're cutting off the reinforcements. Um, but yeah, it 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 was so Thrones of Britannia was essentially you know they took the engine from Attila and and really optimized it and probably used a lot of the things that they learned for from Warhammer One. Because Warhammer 1 in comparison to Attila is like light years beyond what uh, Attila was in terms of optimization and the way uh, the game played. Um, but the thing is like the big criticism for the big criticism for um, for Warhammer and it, I mean it's still even with Warhammer 2 and maybe even now with Warhammer 3 I don't know I haven't played it myself. So I don't, I can't really speak to it, but was the sieges and when they developed Thrones of Britannia, there was a heavy focus. I don't know who was in charge of the design for the sieges, but the sieges were awesome. The sieges, the siege maps were really awesome, really well put together. It's just unfortunate that the, uh, the guy, the lead designer for the, um, for the campaign and the campaign mechanics really missed the mark um that the campaign mechanics just um you know were not there and and, and thrones of britannia kind of um you know got forgotten about uh pontifex says never played that honestly last total work for uh i played was um, uh medieval 2. What? well you know what Med medieval 2 you could argue, you could make a strong argument that Medieval 2 has the best siege maps of any Total War. As sad as that is. Um, but you could make a strong argument for this. I love this, how they circle around, they let them room to fight. And the uh, the choreography, like the animations are very, are way, way smoother. Like, if you have two characters fighting uh, like this in, in Warhammer, they're like, you know, they'll score hits and it's a complete whiff and stuff. Um, but yeah, one of one of the nice things. But I mean, with Warhammer, you've got so many animations that it would be impossible to uh, to make all of them. I mean, wouldn't be impossible, but it would be a monumental task to make sure all of the animations are fluid and well choreographed. All right. Reinforcements are taken care of. Time to move in. And uh, how many units are in there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine units. Uh, it's not too bad. Uh, Pontifex says, "I agree. I actually didn't mind sieges in Medieval Two at all. Yeah, I never, I, I've never been able to get into Medieval Two. I've, Rome Two was my first ever Total War, and I've only got, been able to get into uh, as far back as Napoleon Total War. One day I'll check out Empire, but any time, I did actually the little bit I played of the Rome One remastered. I really, really enjoyed that. So I think we'll probably return to that at some point. But I." Every time I, I tried playing Medieval 2, I, it always felt really dated to me. And like just with the mechanics. Because there's been so many quality of life improvements for Total War over the years. That um, I, I just couldn't get into Medieval 2. But I've watched a lot of Pixelated Apollo's siege battles from Medieval 2. And it's um, it, there's some incredible siege maps. Uh, for Medieval 2 and I've I've heard legend uh, refer to the Medieval 2 siege maps you know the you know in a, in a very positive sense as well but it, it's it's unfortunate that um, in that respect the game has almost backpedaled and, and the excuse is always that the AI you know something about the AI not being able to handle the sieges but yeah thrones of britannia the siege maps are great uh when the game first came out it was really easy to cheese the ai and the sieges what i used to do i don't think it's the case anymore i think the ai has been updated 
but what I used to do in the siege battles is I would position I would position the bulk of my army on one side of the map, right? And then I would hide like I don't know, like three or four of my my more elite or quicker units in the woods somewhere close to one of the other gates and I, w I would sneak in. I would like either leave a ladder or something, find a way to sneak in the back door and there would only be like maybe one unit holding the victory point, right? You would be able to capture the victory point and then hold it long enough for the tower, for the timer to run down because the way that the AI used to perform is they wouldn't move. They would stay locked in position. If your army was, was if you positioned your army on one side of the settlement, the AI would um, would stay locked in position. If you you watch my Thrones of Britannia campaign, it's it's actually pretty hilarious. Like <laughs> able to like take like uh, one of your units well no garrisoned uh, fortresses without um, without killing any of the people inside of them. <laughs> kind of hilarious but yeah I, I'm planning to do um, a Thrones of Britannia Viking campaign in the next little while probably won't be super popular but it's a game I want to revisit because the battles are actually quite stunning it's got a really um, in terms of historical total wars it's one of the Your visually most um, the gates. most visually uh, impressive uh, historical total wars I think yeah, I think Three Kingdoms, that's kind of, um, I mean, Three Kingdoms has its own own charm, but it also has its own problems uh, visually with the graphics and stuff. Um, there's certain aspects that I love about the graphics for Three Kingdoms and certain aspects that I don't like. But, yeah, the, the battles in uh, Thrones of Britannia are actually heart. quite good. It's just the campaign, sti campaign stinks. I might have to, uh, well... I want to try out because I've heard I've heard that the game has been updated a fair bit since um, since it was released. So I, I want to I want to give it a fair shot before I make any kind of judgment. But I, I have heard there's a really great mod for three uh, for uh, Thrones of Britannia. So I'll have to uh, have to check that out. I forget the name of the mod, but there's a guy. I'll actually put it in the chat here for anyone who's interested. Who um, who covers mods quite a bit. Terminator, I think. I think, it, I think that's his name. Terminator, Total War. Let's check it out. Yeah, Terminator. Yeah, he, he specializes in, in mods, and he also, um, you know, I've installed some of the, um, he's got a, a guide for, like, your optimum graphics for Attila and optimization for Attila. So he, he finds mods for optimization. He's a mod specialist. And if you're interested in mods for any of the you historical to Total Wars, the gates. he's your guy. I don't think he covers Warhammer, though. I, it'd be kind of cool if he did, because Warhammer's got a, a, a wealth of mods as well. I'm kind of excited to see what we get from mods for Warhammer 3. But yeah, we we are taking heaps of damage on these trying to take these walls. It's those towers. Those towers are deadly. And even though that we've got even though we've got units on the walls, on the ramparts, those towers are still firing. Look at the shots. It's like Yeah, sieges are no joke in this. You gotta be well prepared. There, there were only nine units in here, and uh, I, this is a full stack that I've got positioned in the corner there, and there, we're struggling. Got some units running. They're thinning out quite a bit. Even our archers in the front lines are thinning out. But units running back. And I mean, your options, the problem is your options are, are pretty limited. Um, just because of the, the era, like you don't have the same type of um, siege equipment as you, as you would in like the, the Roman era. Yeah, I, I freaking, I, 
I stink at sieges without uh, without artillery. I need I I desperately need artillery to do sieges <laughs> in most uh, most cases, unless there's a way to cheese it um, without the artillery. Your but, ladders have a foothold on their walls. But yeah, we are taking heaps of damage. So yeah, trying to sneak in th through the back door here, but they they left one archer unit here in behind. The guard should have probably brought these guys up a little bit sooner. Probably should have brought the um, the general up sooner because they've committed everything to this fight in the corner. I mean, so have we. Those harpies are not doing any. Or, sorry, not the harpies. The, the sirens are not doing anything. They're kind of just sitting there in the corner. They could have been used to maybe, maybe at least shut down. There we go. Now we got them moving. Shut down those the archers. Thin out those spears, I guess. Look at the dead bodies in front of the walls there. Look at that mess of dead bodies. You can tell I'm getting a little bit frantic here. I'm like, fuck, are we gonna actually get in here? Those doors keep swinging open and closed. It would be kind of cool if when those doors swung open that they would knock their units over. But I think that's the, uh, a little bit of the glitch there. The, the same glitch that you have in pretty much every Total War. <laughs> There's some giants in there, a couple giants in there. That are slowing us down. Looks like uh, we're getting some friendly fire as well. But yeah, we're thinning out and we're gonna start. Uh, no, the, the archers still have half ammunition on some of them, but some of them are Odysseus in there. I mean, he's not a melee specialist, but he can hold his own in melee. Some of their units are. I don't know if they're withdrawing or if they're falling back. Your yeah, if we can get in the back door there and get to the town center, we can start the timer and, and potentially end this. But it looks like we've finally, yeah, we've finally broken them here at the walls. But I mean, at what cost? Look at the damage we took. Redonkulous. Yeah, the sieges get pretty intense in this. You gotta be well prepared and you, you gotta kinda plan it out and, and adapt quickly to what the AI is doing. And it looks like looks like actually some of their units are Are they rallying? Or are they still running? We've captured the gate. We've captured the gate at least. Yeah, no, their units have rallied and they're they're running back to the other side. This fight is not over. I thought it was over. I thought we were we had broken their units. But they're running to the opposite side by the looks of things. God, I can't wait to get back into this game. We got two after today we got two more days of pre recorded footage and then pick up the live campaign where I left off. Uh, super excited for that because the where yeah, it's it's a really interesting part where we uh, have restarted. We've got heaps of options. We've got a good solid uh, foundation. Not to, <laughs> um, not to spoil anything for you guys, but um, yeah, but this army is beat to hell. Is there any, like this is gonna be Pyrrhic victory if it's a victory at all. And yeah, they've rallied. See, I feel like I feel like the um, the units in this have, have respond really well in sieges. That they do things that are um, they respond uh, better than in most total wars to what the player is doing. Now, 
the situation because the units are a little bit more basic and because the sieges are are, are more simplified because of the era uh, that could be that could be the reason why like it maybe you know is in terms of programming the, the ai or the developers are able to get the ai to focus a little bit better because of those things i'm not sure but i've i i find the sieges in this tough really tough i don't know we'll have to try and figure out if there's some ways to cheese the uh the ai to make it a little bit uh, a little bit more sure thing but the towers the towers are deadly and it's tough to take the walls um i think the um using the ladders it's it's significant the the debuff that you get god damn our army is really thin and some of their there were only nine units in there. I only counted nine units in here. We had a full stack plus a handful of other units. And look at the shape of my army. I don't know if we're going to win this. That general is in good shape, though. That's a good sign. We've got those skirmishers. Those guys are not coming. Or those sword skirmishers. Those guys are not coming back. Yeah, the Odysseus is pretty beat to hell, too. I don't know, boys. I don't. I can't remember if I won this battle or not. But it's not looking super good. It's kind. Of, things are kind of hanging in the balance right now. The enemy is trying to capture the gates. A lot depends on and how much that um, that dude, that general's, that general uh, can can hold out. Line those guys right up so that they can get killed by those um, those clubs. Who's gonna get the army lost first? That's the question. I feel like I feel like Odysseus's army is is in more danger of getting the army lost because we've lost more than they have. God damn, I don't know. I don't. Man, it is not looking good. Are those giants? Giant spearmen. Yeah, they're regenerating right there. That ain't good. <laughs> I, I don't think we're gonna win this. The foe has wounded your hero. Yeah, Odysseus just went down. Man, I thought this battle was a lock. Valiant defeat. Motherfucker. Wow. Iliad 11. I'm gonna make a note of that. I, I might uh, I might continue my series uh, of unsolved battles. Iliad number eleven. This is definitely a winnable battle. But More damn, yeah, three. Th we had them out number two to one. Motherfucker. Wow, ouch. Let's learn from this. Yeah, I hope we learn from this. Master Archer. We can take them. What time did we start? We started at 11. What time is it now? Five. We're getting close to six hours. Uh, it's a little over five hours. Not really getting close to six hours. But I think I might um, 
put something in the uh, in the oven to have a little uh, little snack it here. I definitely want to get up and stretch a little bit. Hike. Wow, that was intense. Run away, run away. By the numbers. Oh, Pontifex, thanks to you. For uh, oh, keeping the chat the clean there with the uh, bots or whatever the whatever the heck that was. But yeah, I'm going to take a, a little uh, five minute break. Pontifex says 5.30 here, east coast. Yeah, it's 5.23 here. So I think, um, I think we're in the same time zone, roughly in the same time zone side of things but yeah I gotta take a little five minute break I'll be back with more commentary but the game will continue We will go down in history. I accept that words also have their place in war. of the Lord of Ithaca are always welcome. I'm looking forward to this. Not a chance.
We will go down in history. The best course is to talk matters through. Every... I love a challenge. weaknesses. To war! I cannot do that. That's beyond me. I'll have to refuse. I can't see how this will help. I'm sure we will reach agreement. Companion of Ares. All right, we back. We back. Um, yeah, so I'm starting to work towards, uh, getting those, those, uh, archers of Artemis. They're going to be, um, <laughs> critical in not being, uh, catastrophic, uh, 
the incompetent uh, sieging settlements. Look at the shape of this army, my goodness. Yeah, there they are. Cannot recruit. You have insufficient blood. A limited number of wards and armies can be recruited. Yeah, there are certain things that you need to... Um, prayer performed. I don't think we have it the high enough level. I think you we've got to get the... Um, yeah. To the higher level um, with approval with um, with the goddess before they become available. You can count on me. Takes a little uh, takes a little while. But yeah, um that will never work. Dinner is in the oven, but I probably won't have it for a little while. Probably wait a bit before I have it. I'll just let it cook, let it simmer a little bit. A I have a chicken burger for dinner. It was either chicken burger or uh, frozen pizza. I've got a, a rotisserie chicken in the uh, one of those uh, a rotisserie chicken leftovers in in the in the fridge, but I didn't want to. It, it, like midstream, it doesn't seem like a practical thing to have. Whereas a chicken burger, I can wolf one of those bad boys down in, you know, ten minutes, maybe less. The words of the Lord of Ithaca are always welcome. What do you have, Pontifex? I hope uh, everything went well on your date times are we're changing I'm looking forward to uh, the next time I get to go on a date but I have no idea when that may or may not be I uh, <laughs> yeah anyway not had a whole luck a lot of luck with the ladies these days and I'm kind of in a bit of a pickle of a situation right now with uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not allowed, not allowed out unless my brother is with me, and I'm supposed to be uh, supposed to be um, on house arrest. Well, I am on house arrest, so yeah, definitely a bit of a pickle of a situation. So I don't, I don't know how many options that's gonna lead for uh, too many dates for me. Um, you know, not looking super good, and. <laughs> I'm living in my brother's basement for the time being until this whole mess I've got myself into it gets uh, sorted out. Which, I mean, it'll eventually get sorted out, but I'm not going to be any younger. <laughs> yeah, that that's our... I, I would say that's our third major setback. Like, I, well, we've had two major setbacks and a couple of minor setbacks. This campaign has been uh, arduously slow. Uh, Pontifex says, don't worry, not much easier with the men. Wait, oh, why are you on house rest? It's a long story, my man. I, uh, <coughs> I was, uh, excuse me, I was arrested um, about a month ago. Uh, for some nonsense um, it's a long story I you know eventually probably I'll, I'll, I'll do a video and explain the whole thing because it's um, you know it's it's, it's deeply personal uh, decently personal it has to do with my my medical history as well that that uh, ties into it but I was I was arrested and I actually spent three weeks in um, in jail uh -huh, which was not <laughs> I don't recommend it it's not super fun um, and now I'm on house arrest um, uh, with um, a couple of other stipulations but yeah I, you know I'm looking at it as a blessing because I'm here at my brother's place and I've got the opportunity to um, to play Total War play a game I love uh, but yeah, I can't go into too much d details uh, about what happened, but the charges are, are troubling, uh, the charges, but I assure you I'm innocent. I'm completely innocent. I, I expect the the charges to be completely dropped and, and that there to be no criminal. Um, it's just sort of, um, it's a big misunderstanding is what it was. Like, I can understand why, you know, it's it, the, the crown, as I'll they call win. it, is taking what it so try? seriously. 
but at the end of the day i i didn't break any laws no one was harmed uh no property was damaged um you know like anyway it's a big misunderstanding but i can't get into too many details because it's you know i'm doing court on the 26th of march and you know like i have a lawyer like i you know there you know i can't really discuss um any of the details really or i shouldn't i definitely shouldn't discuss any of the details uh in, in a public forum which this is i mean i know i know that the likelihood of were you drunk not exactly but i was not in a, my right state of mind i wasn't drunk um but I, I definitely was not in um, a normal state of mind so that's all i'll say but um anyway rest assured I, I i truly didn't do anything wrong i mean you know anyway i probably maybe shouldn't have brought it up but i want to be you know as honest with you guys as possible you want to you know my my personal situation it's you know part of me wants to you know separate you know completely my personal life from my uh youtube persona i want to kind of create this uh sort of persona on youtube uh, you know similar to the way that dr disrespect has but at the at the at the end of the day i you know i you know wear my emotions on my sleeve kind of guy and um you know i have a hard time hard time not being forthright and uh you know and, and sharing that stuff and you guys you know especially uh the regulars you pontifex clueless morn uh wyvern uh, you know like there, it's a long list um you know have become it. You know, in a way, like family to me. Like uh, I, I know maybe that's a, a a little you know pushing things a little bit far, but I, you know, I appreciate uh, your company here, and and um, you know, if there's troubling shenanigans going on in my life, you guys are gonna find out about it one way or the other. But um, yeah, you'll you'll get the full details of it um, at some point. I'll uh, once it's all settled, I'll probably come out with um your know, explanation but anyway change the subject <laughs> but yeah i've you know the last two months of my life have been very chaotic and i honestly couldn't be happier to be back playing more total war um looking forward to getting into warhammer 3 when the when the big map uh comes out We've, once the big map comes out that like Warhammer 3 will take the spotlight. We'll be playing heaps of Warhammer 3 and we'll try and we'll try and steer away from the mainstream campaigns, but I mean it's hard to. There's so many Total War YouTubers nowadays that it's it's hard to steer away from that stuff, but um Kislev, Kithay are on the top of my list and um maybe maybe some uh Alithanar uh, Repence is on the top of my list of, of campaigns that I want to play for Warhammer 3 uh, when the big campaign comes out. But my first, my first Warhammer 3 video uh, will be uh, will be tomorrow, uh, tomorrow morning. Just gonna be a short video, a little little criticism, my my feelings of my impression, a first impressions video, shall we say? Uh, will be tomorrow, tomorrow morning. So I'll, I'll cover it piecemeal for now. But there won't be any Warhammer 3 streams until we get the rest of the game. Clue says, you mean Mortal Campaign in Warhammer 3? Yeah, the uh, the Immortal Campaign, Immortal Empires. Which is like, okay, fine. Like, I don't know. I knew it would have a different name than Mortal Empires, but that just seems a little bit lazy. Oh, let's call it Immortal Empires. Like, get out of here. But, um... Yeah, I, I'm I'm pumped for that campaign. But we're gonna be we're gonna be finishing our uh, our last Warhammer 2 campaign um, before that comes out. I'm gonna uh, start working on that next Saturday. I might actually push it up in the schedule because I know you guys love your Warhammer. Uh, but I was thinking for Saturday Saturday morning to play a little bit of that every Saturday morning. Just get that wrapped up. 
Uh, Clue says it's gonna be cool. Yeah, it is gonna be cool. And I was, you know what, Pontifex Clueless, why don't I give you guys the inside scoop of what I'm, I'm, I'm gonna try and put together with DM Wyvern. Um, so I want to do a siege, um, siege tournament for Warhammer 3. I don't know what the siege maps are like, but I know that, I know that the Tor Jervais, uh, map in, in, uh, Warhammer 2 and the Empire, uh, fort maps in Warhammer 2 are of a caliber that uh, a siege tournament could be possible. And so by siege tournament, That's not I want it, want it to be teams. Three, 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 men, uh, three men to a team, or women, uh, but uh, three people to a team. And it'll just be a, t a small tournament. And it'll be on the same day. And it'll just be four teams. So three, three sieges, essentially. We'll flip a coin, uh, or we'll figure out a way to randomly decide who gets to choose whether they attack or defend, and then winner moves on. Um, so I want um, I want Wyvern to be uh, my first uh, first guy in 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 my team. I have um, I have someone someone in mind. For my uh, my third, I have two people in mind. I have a ringer, <laughs> Commander Audet, uh, you know, a friend of mine on Steam. He's he's good. He's really good in the uh, the multiplayer. Like he plays, but that. he plays mostly multiplayer campaigns, and he's he's solid. Um, so I feel like he uh, would be a good ringer for uh, Siege. But I have someone else in mind. Another another content creator in mind but I'm not not entirely sure I'll be able to uh, get that person involved but I uh, I'm gonna reach out to some other content re creators to um, captain teams and let them choose their um, the people for their teams and um, it's the type of thing I'd like to do once a month plan it out have like yeah but anyway that's um that's kind of what I'm thinking. <laughs> Clueless says Pontifex. What do you think? Rags would never be drunk. I think. Lemon Pledge Total War says that Ragnarok Wild Sieges are no bueno in my opinion. Having two main capture points is a pain in the ass to defend. Especially since you can cap one and then do nothing and just wait. Well, here's the thing. Like if in a... In a, a competitive seed situation where you have three teams, we'll we'll make the um, the scale of the armies uh, large enough that so I mean you're gonna have three armies on the field, three armies on the field. It's not like a won't be necessary. Like not thinking um, not thinking in terms of uh, the sieges for for campaign, but the siege more more think more of the style of the sieges that pixelated Apollo covers but in a competitive sense in a multiplayer competitive sense and have like maybe maybe go with ultra armies ultra for for the funds for the armies and you've got three armies you should be able to cover you should be able to cover it I, I don't know I I think it's got potential but I don't know I haven't played the sieges yet so I don't know Clueless says, if I join, I got an idea on a teammate. Interesting. Interesting. Very interesting. You, you know, Clue, I could, uh, you know, if, uh, you know, maybe, maybe you're the person I have in mind as my, my third, uh, you know. But anyway, it's just, it's just a thought right now. I haven't, Wyvern's the first one I wanted to talk to about it. And I'm going to reach out. Lemon Pledge, you're, you're on the top of the list for it as well. Um, but I want to reach out to some content recreators and see if I can get some big names because I have a little bit of a rapport um, with Turin. Like I've 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 done some. I've been in tournaments with Turin and and had had to, uh, had a head to head match with Turin like a long time ago in a, in a tournament. So I have a little bit of a rapport with Turin, and um, I've got a bit of a rapport with Mercy the Mad. I think Mercy the Mad could be convinced to uh 
to captain a team. And I have a little bit of a rapport with uh, Heir of Carthage, sort of. So I, I'm going to reach out to those guys and see if I can get them involved and see if they'd be interested in doing it and, and fielding a team of their own. I don't know. Anesius uh, is another one. Oh, you know what? I got to reach... You know what? I'm going to write a note because I got to reach out to Anesius. He and I are going to do... Um, he's going to teach me how to play um, Hearts of Iron 4. We'll do a special one day and uh, and stream a Hearts of Iron 4. The greatest army and, um, and do that because I have no idea how... Like when I, I loaded it up... And it was just really overwhelming for me, the, the game. So I would love to do a, a co-op with him and have him show me the ropes. And especially in light of, like, the political climate, I think that would be a, a fun game to play. The, uh, the global political climate. But yeah, anyway. Siege Tournament. King of the Castle. Or Kings of the Castle. Or Kings of the Castles. King of the Castle sounds the best. Um, yeah. Four teams, one day. Um, it, it'll basically be three sieges, so it should be over in less than four hours. Um, you know, probably less than three hours. Clue says, Anesius is a cool lad. I do hope he is okay. He never responds on Discord. Yeah, I think he's just really busy with, uh, with uh, real life like um, I think his jaw like from the sounds of thing his his work is quite demanding and uh, he's a married man <laughs> I've lost I've lost many a good friend to uh, to marriage um, over the years I mean you know I jest of course but um, you know <laughs> the last time I was was at a um, the last time I was at uh, a, one of my friend's met weddings, I was lost. So oh, we lost another good man. Because that's what happens, you know? I mean, because, and, and I mean, it's understandable because your focus become you're building a family, you're building a life together with another person, you're making that commitment. So, you know, you have a lot less time for all of your extended friends. Pontifex says that at Clueless, probably eating waffles and smoking weed. <laughs> Oh, Anesius. But yeah, I think he's just, uh, I just I think he's just a busy dude. Have you guys heard from um, Edwin, Edwin von Karstein? Is he still uh, still making content? Ooh, 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 we got another, we got crossing of the Istros. As you go further, the weather turns. Nature itself becomes your enemy. Ill-suited as you are to such conditions, at last you reach the fearsome swift flowing Istros, near the place where it joins the Uxan Sea. Neither martial skill nor quality of arms will help you here. The river rages, spurred on by cold breaths of Boris. The local villagers ask you for help are simple river fishermen, but they tell you of camp of traders asked with carrying goods to the Uxan seaports, so one of them may know of a way around the river for a price. Oh, what do we do? Approach a centaur? Trader ship? Look for Ford. We can't do that one. Your preparation, or can we? I don't know. Looks like that one's trader with a ship. Only a few of the traders have actually crossed the mouth of the Istros to the north, and only one has done it often enough to be able to procure a ship. When he learns of your mission, his eyes light up dangerously. Not only will I help you cross, but I will do it for nothing. My parents were Is Isidonians, and the cursed arm Isithans and their lion eagle idols drove us from our home. They may battle each other, but they are really the same. The journey to the seaport is uneventful. Not so uh, the one across the Yuxin River, though the name welcoming sea by some more than one once it tries to make you per uh, permanent guests of its depths. Still, you arrive in more or less one piece. The Isidonian sends you off. Damn it. Give me more time, man. What the hell? Uh, don't trust the arm spans. A trader's warning. Your units have gained experience, but our units have lost some of their their health. So we've, uh, for those of you just tuning in, we're we we've uh, we've initiated an expedition. It's this um this button up at the top here. So, um. You can do it once per campaign, and you go on an, uh, the hunt of a mythological beast. So you choose between the griffin, 
the Hydra or the Cerberus and you commission an army to go, you commission a general and you recruit, it's just a small army, it's like maybe two thirds of a stack. But you have to you have to pay to recruit the units that you send and the units that you send i think are based on what you have available and they go on this expedition and so over the course of the last handful of end turns we've been getting the occasional um event and dilemma and based on our decisions on the dilemma the um expedition the army that we've sent on this expedition are getting uh both negative and positive um bonuses <laughs> clueless says the stream is ragnarok's wife <laughs> yeah something like that <laughs> um no idea and Pontifex says edwin did a stream or video right before the game released but not since um, and Clue says, uh, yeah, he did a foot of Gork vid vid three weeks ago. Yeah, I, I really enjoy Edwin's, uh, Edwin's streams. I think, um, I think Edwin does a really great job. Um, but I, I think probably his, it's the same, same sort of situation as Edwin is kind of the same, uh, in the same boot as uh, Anisius, just um, real life has its own demands. Uh, you know, like operating and running a YouTube channel, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. And I mean, you can do it in a way that it's, it's effort. Like the way that uh, DM Wyvern runs his channel, it's, you know, he's, he, that that's his time to, uh, to chill out, right? Like that's, you know, he, loves video games and he loves uh sharing that uh you know his experience with video games yeah obviously we're not gonna be able to win this so we'll just uh just uh strong tactics regroup here a little bit make me proud bring that death i don't know what i'm thinking here but it doesn't um Poison the well. Success. I think I just want trying to prevent them from recruiting. Maybe I don't know. But we're um, I should fall back to our own territory and regroup and recruit some new units because that army is in bad shape. We lost the siege there a little while back. And um, yeah, we, we had them outnumbered two to one and ended up losing. The sieges are. Are not a joke in this. Uh, we're rebuilding an army in Ithaca, so just trying to hold the pressure up on them, I guess. Yeah, I think I'm just trying to prevent them from recruiting. This is what I'm guessing. What what my logic was at the time when I recorded this. God, I can't wait to get back into this campaign. Yeah, so we have to gain more favor of Artemis in order to recruit those warriors of Artemis, which are, are much better archers than what we currently have available. They're basically, a, with this faction, with Ithaca, the warriors of Artemis are the best archers that we can gain access to. Because the elite uh, skirmisher unit for Ithaca is uh, are, are the javelin men. They're like guerrilla javelin men. They can, they can hot. They, I think they've got the stock ability and stuff. So we might, we might look into recruiting some of those as we get further on. But I, I don't know. You guys know me. I love, I love archers. Can't, can't get enough of those, uh, those arrows. <laughs> Clueless says, if you guess. If you ever just want to play a game where you run around killing rats and so, just get Vermintide 2. Yeah, I've seen Vermintide 2. It uh, looks like one of those games that would give me nightmares. <laughs> uh, I know a lot of people really love it, but uh, it doesn't really look like my cup of tea. Um, but I definitely... Like, the game that I, I've got a fond love for and you're gonna have to I don't know if you've played it clueless but mech warrior 
um, if you have it or if you've played it, uh, on Saturday, DM Wyvern and I are going to be uh, continuing our campaign. I, I won't be streaming it, streaming it, but Wyvern will probably be streaming it. But uh, yeah, if you want to join us. Uh, that's open to any of you guys, Pontifex, if you want to join, or Lemon. Um, there's uh, there's four mechs and a lance, so we got uh, we got room for two more, and we can we can rotate in and out, folks, as well. Um, but it is a ton of fun that game, super addictive. Disengage. Yeah, I think just trying to prevent them from from recruiting there. Yeah. They're not strong enough to come out and wipe out that army. Is it, they've only got two units and three units in their armies. But the garrison is strong enough. We're not strong enough to beat the garrison that's in there. But luckily the garrison the garrison can't reach us. Pontifex says, or to run around and kill demons. Get Warhammer 3. Yeah, well, I'm pretty sure um, I, I have the key for it. Um from uh, my early access with CA, right? Like I, I get early access for all the Total War games, or at least I usually do, knock on wood, I hope it continues, because um, I've been kind of inconsistent with my content. Um, but I've got uh, in my email somewhere, I have the key for it. So I'll be installing it tonight and taking my first uh, first impressions, my first, first looks of it. Blue says, I don't own Mech Warriors, but I saw you playing. Looks fun. It's a, it's a good time, man. It's a good time. And it's... I, I hope the game continues to get uh, a lot of uh, DLC and extra stuff added to it. Because, um, yeah, it's super cool. Um, yeah, I just hope it continues to uh, add more replayability. Uh, because the customizability of the mechs, I think, is the funnest part. Because you really... You know, you really get attached to your mechs when you when you discover a hero mech and and it's got like special equipment, and you know that special equipment can get damaged if you take too much damage in a firefight, right? So you become really protective of your mechs, and you you know you can customize them and stuff like a lot of really cool I'll stuff. There's actually, if you're interested in the game, he, let's see if I can find him. Eager for action. Oh, I'm trying to think out. of the name of the channel. Break some heads. I'll have to refuse. Baradul. Ba Bar Baradul. Baradul. So, uh, like it's uh he he plays it looks like he plays all of the Mech Warrior games. Really cool channel. Um, and he does some awesome builds for the mechs, some really, uh, really cool stuff. So if you're interested in learning about the game at the very least, this guy, you'll, and, and just watching some really fun, uh, him run some really fun missions and stuff and build some really, really cool customized mechs, he's the dude to check out. Baradur. Yeah, I mean our our home province is is looking good. It's only getting upgraded. We're we're getting a little bit of resources and stuff. So we've just had a number of setbacks. I, I've really been stuck in the mud in this campaign with my uh, expansion. I, you know, when I was recording this, so I was recording this in September, and I that that week that I recorded this, I did like, I was streaming. Uh, that week as well so I had early access so while I had early access I was recording this and streaming at the same time I did like 60 hours of recording I think that week so something like that which for me is some um, you know significant plus <laughs> plus I worked like 40 hours so you're talking about like a hundred hour work week that week so if my gameplay looks a little bit sluggish that could be um, that could be one could be why those 60 hours might be an exaggeration I don't know but a anyway it was a lot I remember being completely exhausted by the end of the week <coughs> the helping hand of fate I am 
enjoy a challenge. They're green. But yeah, this in a way, um, what we're doing here, the siege is not ended, but that we're, we're still sieging this settlement. So it's a sort of become a multi-turn um, siege of attrition that I, I believe us encircling the settlement prevents the garrison from replenishing as well. It should prevent the garrison from replenishing. So the garrison can't reach us if we withdraw and the armies that are outside the settlement are um, are not sufficient to be able to beat our army in the field. So we're just, um, it's basically a stalemate, the position there. So we've stalemated them until our, um, our, our rebuilt army makes its way over here. And then when that shows up, then we'll be able to finish them off. Looks like, uh, you yeah, know, Odysseus is still injured. But we've got reinforcements on the way. I think we've got access to the uh, next turn. I think we've got access to the Warriors of Artemis. So I'm excited for that. That general, or sorry, that building, that settlement, Mariasinos, I haven't realized it yet, but it, uh, I believe it grants access to, I think there's a special building there for the Giants, which are awesome. Uh, the Giants are really good. One of my favorite units in the game, really cool unit. I haven't um, unlocked any of the elite giants, but uh, they have um, they do have a cap on how many you can you can recruit based on I think the number of giant buildings that you have built. So you're able to increase the um, Get the cap. Back. But yeah, just keeping them locked in a stalemate. My God, look at the. Uh, <laughs> Look at how far we withdrew there. It's preventing the garrison from replenishing, I think, and it's preventing their armies from recruiting any units. Right, your journey to the Riffin Mountains passes on eventually. To your surprise, the villages are fewer and further apart, and the land is uniformly level and featureless. Despite the weather, you make good time, spurred on by the gigantic looming bulk of the Riffians on the horizon. One day, you barely manage to save one of your men as he almost drowns in a glittering brook. There is gold dust carried on the water. I swear by the gods. Another of your men jibes. Yeah, Celios. So you tried to drink it? Then what? Piss it into your water skin and be... I feel like there's more there. You're going to scroll down. <laughs> and be rich. The laughter stops as you notice a group of men and women approach from afar. They are clad in close-fitting leathers and gold. They are one-eyed and muscled like champion athletes. Even the women. They are the Armisopoi. Let the pseudos go to them. Skirt the Armisopoi's land or exchange weaponry for supplies. What do we do here, boys? I feel like exchanging weaponry for supplies would uh, replenish our troops, which we, we should probably do. But I, I can't remember. Oh, we don't have a centaur. Can't do that option. slave so I I think I'm pretty sure this is the one that I chose when I recorded this yeah so what uh, how did that work out as soon as he sees the Ar Aramasapoi uh, Sudos goes out to them before you can stop him he hails them in a tongue you do not understand and they strike up a lively conversation finally he returns 
They will provide you with any help you require, short of hunting the griffin itself. To your confused lack of response, he answers, I have always thought these people were a fairy tale. This land, I have plenty of tales of my own, and they love song and stories. I have told them that I will stay in exchange. He nods to you in goodbye, smiling a little, while you are still silent, dumbstruck by his uncharacteristically earnest display. Well, no use looking a gift in the slave mouth. God damn it. Is there? Uh, okay, so uh, you have recovered from a negative effect. So that's good. We've got an Arimaspoi Retuni. Our unit's health has restored some of their health. The expedition has gained armor sports hunters and skirmishers. Nice. That actually, all positive bonuses there. So that actually was a um, really good choice. <laughs> Suit is a slave. Nice. Yeah, the, uh, how many events? Are, I think that was like four events now over over the course of like a handful of interns. Is, the expedition it takes time, it takes a while. Like once you send the expedition out, it I takes a while. Do it. That's not an option. Hero material. Make me proud. Bring the pain! Take them out! Fighting fit! We will go down in history! Awaiting orders! Yeah, I think we've got about four hours Beyond left in the skills. stream, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, beauty. Kill the lot! Easy auto. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. That's one way to whittle them down. Just separate them and uh, deal with them individually. I'm surprised that army didn't back That's away from freedom. us, though. Nice. I love a challenge. Victory tastes sweet. Yeah, so I'm still not ready to make the siege. I still don't feel comfortable. That last attempt that we did, where we had 3,000 soldiers, they had 1,600, and we lost the battle. Um, it was incredibly sobering. Send them packing! percent chance failure <laughs> yeah no kidding three percent chance but I think that was to assassinate her completely I think to wound her was a little bit uh, I think it was closer to 50 percent I, I don't know didn't Courage quite catch it strong tactics. Odysseus, still injured, still haven't gotten him back. Bring the pain! Bring their deaths! Yeah, usually some of the early skill points I save some of the skill points because the the tiers that are unlocked I don't like them I want to save them for higher tiers wait till um, 
yeah with the general so that's why I haven't upgraded some of the um, some of the heroes I mean, the garrison is pretty much replenished anyway. It's just a couple of the units are a little bit. A little bit damaged. I should have started doing that right away. I think I think the first couple turns after the siege that I didn't um, I didn't think of doing that. Poseidon strikes. Wow, that's kind of shite. Cult level up, Artemis beauty. King's hand. Odysseus is back. Oh yeah. Look. About to take a bit of a break in between my recording sessions. Final look at things. We've got two more videos to finish tonight. It's about four hours long. I'm gonna, this seems like a good place to, uh, I'm gonna have a little bite to eat. So my um, commentary will, my glorious commentary will be gone. You'll be missing it for a little while. But the game will continue. I'll be back in uh, 15, guys. To war! Shining Odysseus. A glory! I can do that. I cannot do that. Sickness ends many ambitions. With sword and with wit. Off we go. Sharp of mind. March on. My journey begins. King Odysseus. Forging war. Massacre them. Break some heads. I have a plan. Favored by Athena. Thank you. 
bloodstained knife. I will petition the gods for victory. Duty first. With Athena's blessing. That's beyond you. Odysseus of Ithaca. Make me proud. All out attack. Questionable, but effective. Take them out! Those who oppose me meet Hades. can make your enemies disappear. The favor of the God. Massacre them! A well-placed blade can avert a war.
for Ithaca. You may find my dubious skills of use. Disengage! Odysseus the Cunning. Set up camp. I'll win or die trying. It will be epic. Felt 
believe their leaders are incompetent. Defeat is unacceptable. Make me proud. With sword and with wit. That will never work. Don't hold back! I keep the rituals. I receive divine favor. By my wits. I'll hear what you have to say. Works for me. Break some heads. We could talk, yes. Why not? I'm looking forward to this. That...
This should be a good discussion. No. What wise words. Send them packing! Get back! We will claim victory. Well, boys, I'm happy to report that the chicken burger was delicious. My only regret is that I didn't make two of them. But they're pretty quick to make, so if I want another one, I'll just pop it in the oven and uh, it'll be ready very quickly. But I probably shouldn't. I'm fat enough as it is. God, I love food so much. Yeah, so um, I was watching while I was uh, mowing down my burger, and uh, yeah, our Griffin expedition, it's ready to go. We can launch it any time, um, however, the state of our army is still pretty, uh, pretty well in shambles, uh, though I want some of these, uh, yeah, I, I think I'm going to wait until we have the uh, the army like the we want to take this major settlement here we want to finish this siege off finally um, this is over 10 turns it's taken us to get this siege and I wouldn't mind having some of those those archers those warriors of Artemis so <clears throat> wild hunt divine ability will uh, with three charges your own armies actually I'm not sure what that does it's sort of like a special army ability Pontifex says I had a chicken burger too yeah it was delicious I, I gotta uh, yeah I gotta get some some different toppings and stuff so that I can uh, mix them up a little bit but uh, I put a little bit of barbecue sauce on it nice toasted Divine. bun it was uh, it was scrumptious it, it had a nice seasoning on it it was just a frozen chicken burger so I was like I was a little bit uh, uh, trepidatious. I was I was a little bit worried what it was going to taste like, but it was uh, it was solid. Uh, got a big box of them in the freezer there, so uh, yeah, beating, enjoying those over the next couple of days. Perfect kind of kind of stream food uh, for for these longer streams. You got to be well stocked up and prepared. But yeah, uh, once once we get this uh, the siege settled away, and we get the army replenished, I think we'll be doing the Griffin Hunt. I'm not sure. I can't remember if I waited for the Warriors of Artemis, but they're they're pricey in, in that they they require bronze to recruit, but they don't require bronze as the upkeep, which is nice. Uh, they just require food as the upkeep. As you, <clears throat> before you start recruiting bronze, bronze units, units that require bronze as upkeep, you really should have a steady supply and um, a well protected supply of bronze coming in. I think early game, like first first 50 turns, at least, you want to secure as much food as you want, uh, as you can, and and just go volume for for troops. 
um, because you really you don't need food for anything else other than uh, recruiting armies so you can secure other resources to um, there's no real negative to this if I say no to this I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna question my cognitive abilities here um, what's what, what are we waiting for yeah obviously why not yeah <clears throat> lots of food I think early game that's the strategy and I'm gonna ask Wyvern if he if he's interested in picking up our um, our co-op campaign returning to our co-op campaign for uh, Troy uh, Troy mythos at some point see if he'd be up for that but um, in that campaign I'd like to use the same strategy just go for as much food as possible and just spam armies so many decisions like there's so much good stuff in here everything takes time I don't know Try to think if there's any buildings. I wonder if there's any buildings that increase your um, your research rate. Guys, hang on one second. I'll be right back. Not a chance. Foes, beware. Bring the pain! Make me proud. Take them out! Just wanted to grab a little bit more coffee. I don't want to drink. I've drank quite a bit of coffee today, so I think it's time to cool off on the coffee a little bit, especially considering what uh, it being in the evening now. But yeah, we've got a little bit less than four hours to go in tonight's stream. Break some heads. We should finish up around eleven o'clock. A little after 11 o'clock we should be uh, we should be all said and done Who needs dealing with? live seven hours 38 minutes we're 27 minutes into this an hour and 27 minutes and then the next video is One less obstacle. two hours and three minutes so we got three and a half hours to go so that'll put us just after 11, about quarter after 11. Tomorrow will be, I think, around the same length. So, two hours, hour and a half, so three and a half, four and a half, five and a half, half seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Yeah, tomorrow will be 11 hours. Just uh, pretty much almost 11 hours exactly. And then Tuesday. <clears throat> Tuesday is going to be re the really weird day where it was previously streamed. So I'll be communicating the the uh, the the commentary will be with a chat in the past and I will be in the actual chat if anybody's interested in uh, so it's gonna be a little bit of a weird wonky day um, on Tuesday and then Wednesday we'll be back to live gameplay which I, oh, I can't wait can't wait for I might actually 
after after the stream tonight I might load up the uh, the save file for a little bit and scout out the position so eight hours nine ten ten hours about ten hours um, yeah it's yeah ten and a half hours maybe on Tuesday of pre-streamed stuff uh, so that'll be a little refuse. bit weird but it, it'll make for a really really easy day for me though uh, I'm looking forward to get getting caught ba back up on some rest on Tuesday because all last week I was um, I've been pre-recording a another series um, uh, because I didn't have internet connection last week so I, I didn't want to waste the week um, and just sit here idle so um, I started pre-recording a series in Rome 2 that I'm hoping should be ready in two weeks two weeks time be completed and um, that I will release as a continuous stream I'm hoping it'll be like a anywhere between 70 and 100 hour continuous stream I've got about 30 hours recorded now and the campaign is going good it's going so good I can't wait it's it's by far my best ever Rome 2 campaign I've done um, and yeah it, the the nature of the campaign too I feel like I've improved a lot uh, it's a triple threat challenge campaign I don't want to knock on wood I don't want to um, say what the challenges are yet because I don't want to jinx it because <laughs> uh, if I lose the campaign at this point I'm gonna be totally crushed because it's you know it's still a long ways to go but it's in the position now where the campaign you know really if I, I lose the challenge if I end up losing the challenge it's because I've done something incredibly boneheadedly stupid but you never know it's just you know anyway I recorded a little bit of, I recorded about two hours of that this morning before uh, before I did the stream today so it's gonna be a 13 13 hour day for me today tomorrow will be tomorrow will be about the same because we've got 11 hours but then Tuesday probably Tuesday I'll probably nap a little bit while the stream is going on because there will be commentary it just be old commentary so it'll be a little, a little bit weird but Wednesday Wednesday it'll be all fresh stuff. Siege round two. We lost the battle the first time around. Three thousand units or three thousand three thousand soldiers versus sixteen hundred and we lost. It was a bloodbath. Sieges in this are no joke, man. You gotta... Like, the towers... The towers are deadly. But it's not... Uh, the force that we're up against this time is much smaller. than the previous time and so I don't know our, our the gods how big is our reinforcing force are here. yeah our reinforcing force is pretty big yeah this should be no problem, but I thought I thought the previous one was going to be no problem. Mm, it's a decent amount of units in there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There's 10 or 11 units in there, and, and that's kind of what really effed us up last time. So, similar... Similar numbers as the previous fight, so I don't know. Of course. Be history. Oh, 
But yeah, tonight we should get the Griffin Expedition in before tonight finishes up. And that's a wild battle. And the Griffin, the Griffin itself is an awesome unit. Once once we have the Griffin in our army, it's a whole <laughs> whole different game. Though I'm not not crazy about the um like the the unit mo model like the artwork it, it seems a little bit a little bit on the cartoony side but i i don't know i i i could make the same argument for a lot of the new units in warhammer 3 that war warhammer theory seems to have a, a cartoony feel to it to me oh my gosh i'm gonna <laughs> i'm gonna be trolling the Warhammer 3 fanboys so much. Um, <laughs> I've got some ideas for some stuff that is going to be um, pretty cruel <laughs> and hilarious. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of great Total War games out there. And the majority of the community only plays Warhammer. Or, you know in terms of content creators I mean there's not a lot of content creators that cover you know some of the uh, some of the other total wars and there's some great ones out three kingdoms is awesome Shogun 2 is awesome this game is awesome Napoleon total war is awesome Rome 2 is awesome those are just a couple Yeah, I'm just taking... Last time, I feel like I rushed in here. So, obviously, taking my time and getting set up properly this time and, and see if we can, um, you know, come up with a better strategy to take these fortresses. But I hate how, you know, in this game, they've adopted the ass ladders that are in, um, in Warhammer. I hate that. I think if, the, if, if ladders are in the game, that they should be something that the units carry to the walls and have to put on the walls and the ladders should be able to be pushed off the walls and stuff and should be able to pour hot water or like hot oil on top of them and stuff like there should be you know if, if that's a mechanic in the game if, if ladders are a mechanic in the game then it should be you know it's one of the big detriments to the sieges it's not just the siege maps but it's one of the big detriments to the sieges in Warhammer, in the Warhammer series, is the ass ladders. But I mean, it's opened up a, a whole slew of, you know, it, it makes, it, it was introduced basically to make the AI more competent in attacking um, settlements, see, walled settlements, that is. Um, but I, I don't know. I like how in Shogun, oh, sorry, Shogun 2, that what happens is when you, um, like, they, they use, like, it's the same kind of thing, but they use, like, grappling hooks, right? And when they're climbing the ladders, they'll fall down and, and, and die. Like, you lose a lot of units in that way. And, like, yeah, sure, okay, the, you know, you suffer a bigger penalty. From using the ass ladders but I mean for the AI that's basically nothing and and it I don't know it's just not a it's not a good mechanic in my opinion
Actually, you know what? Over the siren, over the... I just noticed this, but... Over the sirens, the, it looks like there's a, an ability there. That's interesting. I'd never noticed that before. Yeah, you know what? Building the siege equipment, I think, is definitely... Um, definitely a go-to for these sieges. Um... But yeah, the, the AI seems to respond to your movements quite a bit in this. But I mean, it's it's a very simplified siege setting. That's the thing. In comparison to to Warhammer or or, or other historical total wars, just you know, because the the very fact that there's no artillery and that the and the equipment that you can build is a little bit limited. Though I mean, it's basically the same stuff: battering ram and towers. That's that's you know, those are the equipment that you can build. But I think, as far as the actual towers go, I think you have to. Like you can get special towers like the uh, like the Trojan horse. I don't know what their attributes are. I haven't gotten that far. Um, I haven't played it that far. But your warriors are losing heart. Yeah, the sirens I find useless though. I'm interested to see what that ability does. If that makes them a little bit more viable, but especially you get a lot of them. You get the door down? Is the door broken? Yeah, see they've moved a lot of troops over to this section to defend against this um, this attack at the gate. But look at the you know those towers. Those towers do so much damage, like neutralizing the towers is key, and I mean that's usually the first thing I do when I siege a settlement, whether it's Warhammer, Rome 2, Attila, and like any total war where you have artillery. Pretty much the first thing you do is take out the towers so that you can attack the walls unfettered, but... Here in this situation, the towers, the towers not only can't, you can't neutralize the them unless you capture the, the victory point. A little bit slow on this attack here, that gate, that, that attack probably should have started already. The enemy gates have been destroyed. But look at how thin we are getting with our units here in the front. And uh, those giants in there are going to be tough to get through. It looks like we've got a little bit of a foothold on the walls, but they've got a lot of troops on the walls. These walls too are so thin that it's hard It's hard to arc your shots over them. Get the units in front. Like the, the units sitting on the walls are really well protected from archer fire. It's hard to get the right uh, position to um, but yeah, we're gonna have to come up with some better ways to siege these um, these fortresses. I don't know. I again, I'd say it's not going great. We're about to capture the gates. Are we? I don't know. I feel like... <clears throat> I don't know if this gate is... A, I, I feel like we should have focused all our forces on the on the center gate. Because the center gate's only got... The, this gate here has three, three towers that can shoot. Whereas the other two gates only have two towers. And we're taking way too long to attack... The center gate there. Sure. Attacked it simultaneously, I think.
Oh, I forgot to bring up you will uh, soon hold the enemy's victory point. The general. What? Oh. Oh my god. <laughs> I that was uh I'm pretty sure that was a unit that routed back there that um <laughs> ended up taking the victory point. That's ridiculous. It's not gonna be able to hold. One of it, your though. units has no more ammunition. But it's at least pulling those guys away from the wall there. In the middle tower, is pulling the good, these guys away from the wall as well. Which it's the the most difficult part of these sieges is is getting a foothold inside the settlement, getting past those walls. Slay them. With Athena's blessing. So those tower the towers. I don't think the towers shoot inside the settlement. But once you're once you're in past the gates. Your ladders have a foothold on their walls. Yeah, that, that was really a blessing that that unit, that routing unit captured the, the victory point because it pulled their units away from uh, from that central central gate. They've only got that one year archer unit. We should be in there no problem. And that may save this battle. Otherwise we might have equipment. lost this. Yeah. The, sh the towers don't shoot backwards, they only shoot forwards. So once you're in, unless there's towers within the settlement, within the you walls, have captured the gates. you're good. Yeah. <laughs> the Odysseus's uh, force there got spanked. It is tough. It is tough to take the walls. And I think... It there's three towers there. I think it was a bad idea to to attack that point to begin with. It should have attacked. You kind of have to attack multiple points to try and break up their forces. Because if you attack just one single spot, it is hard to break through. But once once we have the Griffin, it's going to be a lot easier to um, to cheese the sieges. Gives you a lot more options. The Griffin on its own can can win some of these sieges. This is a beast of a unit. I wonder how um, the Hydra and the um, Cerberus are in siege battles. I feel like the Griffin is probably the best out of those three units because it can avoid the towers. It can fly over the towers. Like this settlement here, you could fly around in the back of it and fly over those back mountain walls and avoid the towers completely. Your hero is and under then attack. you just slowly pick off the range units, pick off the sword units, and then the spear units bring in the troops for the spear units. But yeah, I would love to. Um, I would love to see some more mythical, mythical heroes and mythical units. Like they've added Hercules to this game. Um, but I don't think. Um, I seriously doubt we're getting anything else for it. But who knows? You never know. Yeah, capturing this gate quickly really saved this battle. Otherwise, I think we, we could have possibly lost this. We should be able to take him down pretty easily. Just an archer unit. 
Ooh, ooh, two hits right in a row. <laughs> Expert care. Ouch, man. Oh my gosh, that looks like it hurts. You'll soon be crying for mercy. Huh. Even your insults are perfect. Yeah, we got this now. Once we were able to get past those towers and get into the settlement, then we can start securing the... There's lots of lanes and areas where we can create choke points. And, um... And we still got a couple of units to get through, but... We're looking, uh, we're looking real good now. is trying to capture the gates. This should not take long. Odysseus the sharpshooter. I, gotta, I, I haven't done a good job in this campaign of, of maximizing Odysseus's power because he's he's got to be the best archer in the game. So I, I feel like that's that's something that you can really use to your advantage. And a Lithanar type uh, proto, uh, prototype. has claimed the enemy hero. I win the day! Looking good! Works for me! I'll sort it! With Athena's blessing! Combat ready! Don't hold back! Withdraw! 
much time we got left on this? One more hour on this. I'll get us to 8 o'clock. And then two more hours. So 10 o'clock. We're, we're, we're done in... Uh, yeah, we're done in three hours. I was thinking it was 11 o'clock that we we're going to be done. And I'm like looking at time. I started this at 11 a.m. If we go to 11 o'clock, that's... Then we're going to go over the uh, the time that I'm... So I can't... It has to be under 12 hours. <laughs> if this goes over 12 hours, then uh, this whole thing was pointless because... Um, all this footage will be lost. The whole purpose of doing this was to uh, basically re-upload uh, old footage that um, has been since lost to time. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I said we've got this, but they're they're still putting up a fight. You know, and they're the seeing the limited like the the skirmish uh, sword um, sword skirmishers are showing their limitations in, in these siege battles that their their lack of armor and martial prowess. Definitely has their limitations in these siege situations, and their hero, their hero up there in the middle is still at full strength, and that spear unit is still at full strength as well. This is no guarantee. I thought this battle was freaking over, but I don't. And they've still got giants. Those are some giants over there. So they are, um, they are running, and that spear unit is almost at full strength too. The trouble is, like, the garrison units in here are much better quality units than our units are. We've still got quite a bit of ammunition on our archers, but my god. They've got uh, a decent amount of troops still. I thought this battle was over. Those gi giants were routing, I thought, and now they're coming back. If we can keep the spears at range, we should have enough range to, to wear them down. But I don't know. My goodness, these these sieges never a sure thing. Definitely want to bring uh, some overkill if you can. All right, the giants are routing. They haven't shattered. Our two heroes are, are looking pretty slim. Their their hero is at full strength. Fuck! They hit the uh, they're healing. Giants. Oh man. Just depends on how much we can wear them down with the archers here. Oh, Dizzy is just routed. Oh my fucking god, we just lost again. Almost 3,000 units we had there to their 1,100, and we lost. Holy shit. 
That's our third major setback in this campaign. A welcome boost. A terrible day. Yeah, no kidding. At least Odysseus didn't get injured this turn, but fuck me sideways. Altus has been a real pain in my ass. I think the best way to siege the moat is to maybe um, just lock them in there and starve them out. Pontifex says, get good. Yeah, no kidding. Don't worry. I, you know, the sieging will be... It's going to be a totally different ball game when we when we pick this up again, but um, this was six months ago, and, and this was my first um, real forage into the game. I, I'm just learning game and just <laughs> realizing <laughs> the hard way. I learned most of my lessons in life, Pontifex. I, um, I learned my lessons the hard way, um, and uh, <laughs> this campaign has been no different. I didn't realize. I was thinking, uh, you know, I recall having a great time playing this when I was recording this, but I don't remember it being such a massive struggle. I mean, I remember the sieges being difficult, but I didn't realize I had uh, had failed this, uh, this catastrophically. My goodness. Wow. Wow, I got slapped back twice. Osman says, if you were a general in my nation, I would have you removed. <laughs> oh, man, that's harsh. That's harsh, Osman. And uh, well, uh, remind me again what uh, what part of the world, uh, what nation you... Uh, you are a part of <laughs> uh, because you know in some nations the way that uh, generals have been re incompetent generals have been removed has been you know via firing squad <laughs> Osman goodness gracious but yeah we we are soon going to have access to those uh, warriors of Artemis <laughs> Pontifex says in permanently. <laughs> oh my gosh, Osman! I can't or Pontifex! I can't believe you're advocating for Osman here, removing me. But yeah, no, I mean, I I don't really have much defense in this campaign. My God, the sieges have been bad, but they're tough. The the, the sieges in this game are no joke. Your options are so limited. And um, the the defenses are so strong with the towers, you know. In, in defensive sieges, there's no way. Like even with a sl slim force, the AI has no chance of taking one of those walled settlements. Um, even even when you have a slim force for defense. Courage and strong tactics. Off we go. Wow. Another major setback. Ridiculous. Right Th this is usually the point in the game where I rage quit, guys. <laughs> rage quit type. Uh, uh, Osman says, don't worry, I'm an American. Okay. <laughs> All right, all right, fair enough. The Americans are, you know, <laughs> if we were in uh, Stalin, Stalin's army, I don't think it would be uh, <laughs> Stalin's era wouldn't be so good. But yeah, we're we're gonna turn this around. But it's no wonder when I was looking at before last night when I was. Um, making all the preparations for the stream today and I loaded up the save pile where I'm currently at in the campaign I um, I was like my god you know like I played like 30 hours of this and this is all the territory I have it's like nothing and um, and now I'm realizing why <laughs> uh, it's been it's just been non-stop uh, banging my head against the wall but yeah the sieges I think the best way to approach the sieges in this is to just encircle the settlement 
and let them sally out against you. Either let them sally out against you or just like wait for them to starve. I think it's a much better strategy than trying to uh, take take the settlements head on unless you've got like overwhelming numbers. If you've got overwhelming numbers, then um, I think you, it, it's doable. But yeah, I, I don't know. Bonifix says me too. A couple of Americans, eh? Yankee Doodles. Um, I live for yeah, or the other strategy uh, that you could do is just avoid taking the the walled settlements when, when you're involved in a war until the very last. Scoop up all of the resources I can be and limit useful. what they can recruit for troops. And um, and hopefully get them in a position where they're suffering maybe attrition if they don't have any resources. So um, that would be more more along lines of what um, Sun Tzu would recommend. You know, avoid attacking walled settlements head on, and taking you know, scooping up resources and stuff, and building your strength and, and weakening the strength of your enemy. I think. But yeah. This has been good though because it's refreshing the game for me quite a bit because I when I when I loaded the game Last night just to just to double check that the save file was working that I um I Barely even recognize the interface, but uh, this has been a really good refresher. I Kind of wish I had restarted it just started a, a fresh campaign, but I just feel like that it would be kind of a waste for all this footage like I um, I wanted to get this footage uh, back on the channel and, and this you know this is my opportunity to do so we could have gotten peace there but I I guess <laughs> I guess I'm kind of frustrated goodness case we're gonna take that settlement eventually I swear We need to get uh, get a little bit of an upgrade Boy, on our archers. Business. There we go. Warriors of Artemis. Not a chance. Some lady archers. They're much better than the basic archers that we have have right now. The range the range is higher, and they might have more ammunition. I'm not sure exactly their stats and stuff, but they are a lot better. I have a. Divinely blessed. Questionable, but effective. Oh, are you shooting me? Are you are you seeing what's happening here? Not for the squeamish. Those fuckers. Their neighbors. I just. Killed myself trying to siege that settlement out for the last 10 turns. The road. We've been sieging them. And I've tried two direct assaults and we failed both down. times. Now the garrison is worn down to with just about nothing. And, and that full stack of the, the neighbors, whatever that swan swan uh, faction their 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 emblem is a swan there they're they're moving in to scoop it up you gotta be kidding me Wow, that's some bullshit King right there. I pledge my That 
will never work. Yeah, I think um, I, I I'm trying to. I mean, this was recorded last September, so I'm trying to <laughs> trying to think what was going through my mind at this point. But I think I'm a little bit flabbergasted at the moment and a little bit uh, annoyed that we put in all that work to take that settlement and um, we're not going to uh, end up taking it but at the same time we are unlocking a little bit uh, better quality troops so that's always a nice thing and we we can we can launch the expedition for the griffin at any point so I think most likely that's what is gonna be next I think as soon as we have a proper army built we'll be uh, we'll be launching the the expedition for the Griffin yeah yeah start the quest battle so we just need to get the army built up and we'll uh, we'll do that so it should be how much is left in this video yeah I believe it's uh, gonna be within the hour so that should be that should be an interesting fight I suppose we may as well talk. I anticipate coming out of this well. Yeah, probably just a couple of turns, and we'll, we'll hit that expedition, yeah. Odysseus's army is almost full, and these, uh, the Warriors of Artemis are a big uh, upgrade over, over the other archers. I wish I would have built that way earlier because that would have made the siege so much easier. Because that building that building there, it um, enables you to recruit units in that in that territory, uh, even though Never it's um, enemy territory, enemy controlled. Set up camp. We will claim victory. Glory awaits us. 
War makes the man. I don't know if I'm, I, like I'm planning mine. to attack the, the neighboring settlement there. I will do so. Yeah, honestly, I think the, the way move. to go in this game, I I think, is to scoop up all the minor settlements as quickly as possible. Not to worry about the major settlements as much. Because the minor settlements... Look at these fucking guys. Look at... We've got them outnumbered. The blue man group. And, uh... Yeah, balance of power is slightly tilted in their favor. I think we'll be all right. I think. It's just a small army. That balance of power is a little bit cause for concern. See, I mean, when I, when I was playing this, I'm still learning the balancing and everything for the game and still very much learning learning the game this is my first hands-on you know hands-on uh, gameplay the gods smile reinforcements are here mm -hmm. I think the clubs will perform a little bit better in melee than those sword skirmishers, but the sword skirmishers, sword skirmishers do have that missile weapon, which I do love. Looks like these guys are these guys cavalry units, or do they have sort of like a warhounds? I don't know. Maybe it's just the maybe it's just the emblem. Unit icon. <laughs> Get the old Taurus camera out. Yeah, they won't waste the ammunition on the single entity units either in this. Just wait till they get the army together, form up, and then attack them. Hopefully our numbers will overcome any quality. They don't look like they're particularly well armored and we, we've got a pretty well range based army. I think maybe balance of power in the auto resolve is tilted a little bit more to the melee, melee stats. Look at those guys, they're fucking glowing. Marksman of Elysium. They're all glowing. Oh shit, maybe. Oh, oh shit! These are uh, we're, it looks like we're fighting ghosts or something. Elysium. That's uh, sort of like Valhalla. Whoa! got a little bit of a high ground too they've taken up a defensive position that's a, that's another thing uh, I'm not as much used to um, 
You know, I'm gonna have to. This is interesting. I have to adapt my gameplay a little bit for this game because I'm I'm used to playing Total War games where I've got artillery and pretty much the standard behavior across the board for uh, AI in a what their their general is not glowing though. That's weird. Across the board, the general behavior for AI when you have artillery. Usually they just charge right at you unless they have art artillery like it. It depends if um, You've got the range advantage, but yeah, if you have artillery and they don't Almost 100% of the time they charge at you But the good thing is though a passive enemy is an enemy like a passive AI is an AI that you can usually usually cheese a lot more easily than an aggressive AI I mean you're gonna you can cheese an, an aggressive AI as well, but it's, um, you know, anytime you can expect the behavior of an enemy, you can usually find a way to exploit it, right? But, no, they're not completely passive. Can we outrun them here? I hope so. If they, if they catch our two heroes here, <laughs> gonna be a long day but the them separating their forces I think is a good thing for us that formation is a little bit too loose those archers should be a lot further up and a lot tighter but they've got pretty good range much better I've been playing as uh, play, playing as Sparta in Rome 2 and I've been so used of the Halid archers, which uh, Halid is a uh, euphemism for slave, I think. Uh, basically, the slave archers, and they're like one of the worst archers in the game. Short range and, and just not great archers. I mean, they're still good. They're still archers, but I've been so used to like the over the last um, the last week or so. I've been playing, playing a Sparta campaign and so used to the, having such short range. For archers, whereas these are these archers have a nice range, and we've got the um, in the back there. Actually, sorry, in the front row, I think is the um, this is the new archers, the warriors of Artemis, which have pretty solid range. Your warriors have been routed. Yeah, split up and just get them to follow you. But yeah, the range is getting the job done. Think. And the clubs are holding them in place. Oh yeah. Holy shit, you see the range on their archer unit? Looked like it was uh Uh what what is the Bombardiers, the Globadiers or there's a Skaven unit that shoots, like a, a little artillery unit that shoots bolts that look like that. Can't think of the name. I haven't played Warhammer in ages. Alright, I gotta get up and stretch while this battle fights out. I'll be back. One of your units has no more ammunition.
not ready. But this is bring death. Masters of war. Oh, we go. On the move. That looks like we're getting her done. It's taking a little bit of time. It's not too bad. It's a smaller force. And these field battles, like, we, we dominated the field battles throughout the campaign. It's just the siege of the walled settlements is a major bitch. I think we've got about two and a half hours left. Quantifix says, uh, you'll love Kislev all the bears. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I'm looking forward to it. Some bear cavalry. I, I saw they've got some bear chariot, bear chariots. Your hero is under uh, what's, uh, what, what are their range capabilities? What sort of, um, what sort of artillery do they have? I like, um... I like the looks of Grand Cathay's uh, roster. I think there's some cool stuff in Grand Cathay's roster. But uh, Kislev's got like a little bit more brute strength, I think. Though arguably, I mean, uh, the legendary lords have some pretty, pretty solid brute strength for Grand Cathay, like their dragon forms. We've only fought 13 battles over the course of eight hours. Um. We've had a number of defeats, <laughs> a number of setbacks. Yeah, I think Kislev is going to be one of my new favorite factions. I think Grand Cathay is going to be one of my new favorite factions, and I don't think I'm ever going to play any of the any of the demon factions. I don't know. I, maybe somebody will change my mind, but I just they just don't appeal to me. Progress feels good. Move it, man. I pledge my loyalty. You may find my duties. Odysseus of Ithaca. Immediately. Fighting for Ares. Uh, Pontifex says they have one artillery piece, but it's good. And apparently, Bear Stack is one of the few Doom Stack. Interesting. Interesting. Um, yeah, you know, if if the artillery piece is good, all you need is one, right? Because usually, 
usually for a faction, if you, a faction that has multiple artillery pieces, you just go towards whatever the best one is and use that. There's a few exceptions. Um, I would say the dwarves are one where, like, a, you know, depending on situations. Um, I mean, organ gun is arguably the best artillery piece, but organ guns are technically a I have a field, uh, like a field gun. They're technically not a traditional artillery piece, but they're super powerful, but they're, they're limited in their range. So personally for dwarves, I like to have uh, a couple of cannons for the range and then the organ guns. And then there, there are people out there who, who swear by the flame cannons that use the flame cannons and for the right situation, the flame cannons are really good. Um, Skaven, I think, are another one where you have. I think uh, I think people usually use like the the catapults and then the um, the rattling guns. But I, think I I would put the rattling guns and the organ guns in the same in the same class, not technically artillery. Even though the organ guns can take out towers and walls and stuff, whereas the rattling guns can't. Um, I, I would put them closer to the same class um, but yeah there, there are a few exceptions but usually artillery wise you lean towards whatever your best artillery piece is and go with that Cathay looks like they've got some good artillery Check but um defenses. I don't know indeed so War is my business. Yeah, we're limited to how many of the Warriors of Artemis. With there's a cap on how many we can. I can't remember if it's six or eight. But they are a lot better than the, um, the standard archers. But I mean, standard archers are the only thing that we can equip as Ithaca, or that we can recruit as Ithaca. I can't believe that we weren't able to take that settlement, that major, that uh, provincial capital. Uh, Pawnee says uh, Cathay has good artillery. Lemon Pledge says Cathay artillery is good, but does benefit from having a dwarven alliance and outposts to get more artillery. Oh, really? That's interesting. And Pontifex says, and the yin yang forces you to build melee plus archers. Ah. Yeah, yeah. It's not necessarily a bad thing. I, you know, I we think have um, much to discuss. even in Warhammer 2, you can benefit from a little bit of melee. And, and there, there are players out there, LHTV, for example, who um, uses plenty of melee units. In his armies, builds more traditional, balanced armies. He he puts together some really good compositions. I I really enjoy Illich TV's uh, work. I would put him on the same. He's the only guy that I would put him on the same uh, level as Legend. Um, totally different styles, totally different approaches, but uh, Illich TV is right up there with Legend. In terms of, uh, but I mean, I don't know. Recent years, with with the disaster campaigns, we will and the level victory. of cheese, legend, and, and with the stuff that legend does, he's he's in a class of his own. Um, he it, it's just insane, you know, some of the stuff that he's 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 accomplished <laughs> in his total war career, stuff that no one will will accomplish. But Alex is is awesome. He's um. He is a really, really good. Um, Mercy the Mad is another one who uses melee. Like his, um, his uh, when he when he plays with the uh, the high elves and he goes for his white lions, his white lion doom stack. But I don't know. I like to. Um, so I don't know. It depends on my mood. Sometimes I'll go all 
all range in Warhammer, but sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll recruit a handful a of melee laser. units just to hold the line. But, um, I don't know. Lemon says uh, they have cannons and Hellstorm batteries, essentially, but catapults are a nice bonus. Cathay is quickly becoming one of my favorite factions. Yeah, it's it's a great diverse... You know, I remember, you know, when I... It's the one faction that I researched before the game came out and, and uh, did a little preview video on it. Um, I was planning to do preview videos on all the factions, but um, just my life turned upside down over the last two months. Uh, or two or three months, but um, in any case, Cathay is the one faction that I know a little bit about, and I really, really liked the mechanics that they have, and the way that yes. their uh, their roster, their legendary lords are cool, and their um their position, their start position on the map is awesome too. Um, just such so many things to love about Cathay, I think. Um, Grand Cathay. Uh, what was I gonna say? I was gonna I was gonna add something to that. I can't remember what it was. But I their Hellstorm rocket batteries are less range though than the than the regular Hellstorm batteries are they not? I was interested to see how the 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 flying artillery that they have, like the the rocket battery that's a uh, air balloon, how those were. But yeah, I I'm, after after the stream tonight, after I finish up the stream tonight, I'm gonna install Warhammer Three, and um, scout it out a little bit and see if I can catch up a little bit on uh, how far behind I am. Ooh yeah, look at that giant spearman! Hell yeah! Creatures of Levin, legend, nice. Nice. Uh, the giant spearmen are a solid, solid unit, and you can get um, you can get an upgraded version of those, an elite version. We've also got another special unit, Spear, Spear Masters of Elysium. Uh, Lemon says the air lanterns are okay. Yeah, usually, usually. Those types of units, like, uh, for example, like, um, uh, the borders for Empire that that can be pulled. I think it's just maybe it might just be a regiment of Victory! renown, but the Empire, um, the Empire mortars um, that are in in war wagons. I don't think they have the same amount of like ammunition and stuff as the um, the other ones, and they're or maybe it's range. I don't think they have the same range as the regular mortars, but they have mobility. But usually, usually artillery, like the the main thing, the most important thing is range, um, because if you can outrange your opponent's artillery, you can you can. You can negate it. You can take out their artillery. So the range is always, always key advantage uh, for artillery. Like I, you know, I don't mind sacrificing a little bit of um, missile strength and and impact for extra range. Uh, Lemon says they can't avoid any missile fire. So unless the army is full of melee infantry, it's sort of a pain to micro them so they don't get shot at out of the sky. I would imagine they're slow too. I mean, they're a lantern, so they would have limited uh, limited use. But I feel like the way uh, like the way I would try them out is keep them in the back lines and maybe save their ammunition and wait till. Like if you were to use them within a melee army, for example, like if, so, if you're you're using like a traditional army with with melee range, and then maybe like a couple of regular artillery pieces, maybe have a couple of the lanterns and have the lanterns stay on your back wait lines and on. wait till the AI sort of um, blobs up against your own units, and then circle around and. Um, and use your artillery that way. I don't know, but you're right. Like uh, definitely, I don't know. Limited. War makes the man. 
you know it, it, it's more of a specialized unit but at the same time you know it could be a flavor unit if you, you just want you know to build like a flavor army or an experimental unit definitely i think i see them as an experimental unit where in, in certain situations they might be good war is my business <laughs> Uh, they're better than Dwarven Air Artillery, in my opinion. Uh, say what? <laughs> what do you mean by Dwarven Air Artillery? Are you talking about the um, gyrocopters? Or or are we talking about something else? Uh, Pontifex says, yeah, I put those guys in the back above artillery so they don't get shot. Unless they have no range. Yeah. Yeah, I would keep them, you know. The, you know. It's nice because they're, you know, if you keep them in the back, they're protected against stuff like, stuff like, uh, you know, warhounds, you know, uh, which can be really obnoxious for artillery sometimes. Um, so in that way, they're, you know, but if they, if they have the same range and range uh, unit, unit models and ammunition as the regular artillery pieces then i would i would prefer them and just keep them in the back line ah uh, lemon says yeah the gyrocopters and bombers yeah the bombers sucked because it's only one unit model if the bombers were like four unit models or came with like more ammunition or something they'd be great but it's a big target it's slow and it's only one unit model the gyrocopters with the brimstone gun are are good for taking out enemy lords, but they're so fragile. Like I, any time I've used them, excuse me, any time I've used them, I they go down real quick. Uh, Pontifex says I mean the lanterns. Yeah, no, I mean I, I I knew what you meant there with keeping the lanterns in the back lines. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I'm excited to play with Grand Cathay, but fuck me, I I don't want to play the campaign that's out right now. I want the rest of the game. I want the, uh, the grand map. That's actually not a bad deal there. I mean, it's a lot of bronze, but food, we could use the food, and we've got bronze to spare. Hmm. I guess it changed my mind. Single barter some turns. That's actually a pretty good deal. God. What, what, what am I thinking here? Come on. The thing is though, marble is pretty valuable. That's 117 marble for seven turns. I'm just gonna try and um, see if we can manipulate this deal a little bit. 10 turns. There we go. There we go, get a little extra food coming in. Motivation critical. Uh, this is a mechanic that I'm not exactly sure what it happens if their motivation goes down. I think, I don't know, like I don't, I don't think they disband, I don't think it's like loyalty where, where they turn on you. Turn 38 and we've got, what, five settlements? My god. <laughs> it's like my worst campaign ever. Uh, Lemon says, honestly, even with the bugs and issues with Warhammer 3 now, lack of DLC since it just came out, etc., I still enjoyed it a lot, LOL, all things considered. Yeah, no, I have no doubt um, that I would enjoy it a lot. I just, um, I'm, I'm way behind on content that I've wanted to finish up this campaign as an example um i i want to conquer the full map in total war troy and i'm i'm five settlements <laughs> 10 hours and five settlements in so uh yeah hasn't gone super well as of yet but um i'm i'm gonna enjoy the hell out of warhammer 3 when i um when i start playing it but i i just want to i want to wait for the big map um but uh, keep an eye out. I've got a, a short, like, two-minute video coming out tomorrow on Warhammer 3. A little uh, first impression video for you guys. Keep an eye out. Should be 
It should be, it should be, it should be a good one. I don't know why I'm sending that agent down there. Oh, you know what? Maybe to establish. So, so Odysseus's campaign mechanics. You need to send a spy to establish um, a network, like a, a spy network. In um, any, I I don't know if that's what it, exactly what it's called, but he establishes um, a spy network. And then once that's, a, so it's an agent action, and once the spy network is established, then you can build um, unique to Ithaca's faction, and unique to Odysseus's faction. You can build buildings in the settlement which allow you to recruit units. So I think what I'm planning to do there, if I remember correctly, is to establish the, um, the spy network, build the building, and then we'll send a general down there uh, to recruit, to recruit um, some troops, and then we'll we'll attack it. Um, but yeah, that's the island of the Cyclops. Though initially, when I was playing this, I thought that the Cyclops sure you would be able to recruit him down there. But he's just actually, I think, when you get it to tier four, he's he's part of the garrison. Or there's maybe, I think there's a special building that you build. Um, it's actually it's a really valuable building, a really good building, and he becomes a garrison unit. Uh, the way to recruit the Cyclops in your army is you need to gain the favor of Poseidon. I think there might be one or two other things, but I've never seen the Cyclops in action. That'll be on Wednesday when we're, we're live gameplay. That'll probably be one of the things that we start working towards is uh, getting a hold of the Cyclops. But tonight, before before this finishes tonight, we're going to be doing the the mission for the for the griffin i'm pretty certain i'm just waiting i think i'm just waiting till odysseus's army is in better shape which it's it's in pretty good shape now so it should be soon yeah i'm really uh really haggling it out here with the uh with the food no hesitation but i mean those little slight differences in the uh the balance there you can really get a lot of extra extra resources when you're when you're in your barter situation actually we might actually even be about to do it here his army's at full strength Master ambusher. That's he's got a lot of really good, uh, really good traits. It's hard to choose. Like there's um, pretty good customizability. I mean, it all depends on how how you want to uh, develop your lord lords. Ten percent range for javelin units. Well, seven percent range to archer units. Most definitely. What 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 are you doing? Stock. Oh yeah, so that's his person ability. Snipe and stock. I see points of target friendly units. Uh no, I don't think so. Yeah, I'm just kinda kinda scouting. The snipe and stock for him would be awesome. But the additional range for archers is you guys know how much I love archers. <laughs> and uh range is key. Okay, probably it, it'll probably be next turn uh, because these guys are not quite fully replenished yet. I think that's what I'm waiting for. I think it was debating whether or not I was going to keep that javelin unit. I'm not a javelin I guy. Expert archer. Even though Odysseus is, I think his Odysseus elite skirmisher unit for his faction is um is like a gorilla. Uh, javelin, javelin unit with um with stock, the stock ability I believe. Ready for war. Ready to march. Shining Odysseus. 
an encampment. Too bad there's not naval battles in this game, though. Up the pace. You know, it should have been really simple to put them in, too, because the naval battles wouldn't have been overly complex, right? On the move. War makes and, like, map. it's it's the same thing. It's the same freaking thing as Warhammer, it's which is not, it. like, the, the way that the naval battles work in Warhammer 2 is not bad. Like, it's, you know, it's a good... It's a good solution to, um, you know, to the problem of naval battles. The problem with it is in, in this game, or, or one of the problems with it in this game, is I don't think there are special, like, I think it's just a regular settlement <laughs> battle. There aren't actual special maps for the naval battles. You just fight a random... A random battle, like, a battle on a random settlement which kind of makes it um the only difference being at sea means is you have different stances um that's the only real you like uh, when you're at sea you only have you that's only have your regular stance and force march whereas whereas um on on land you have a variety of stances your army can use there's also different bonuses like some some general like Odysseus I think has has a lot of bonuses like his his movement at sea you can stack it really high if I remember correctly got a Hydra priest there as well those guys are actually pretty good they've got um, abilities that that function sort of like spells a little bit um, like I think they've got like some kind of poison ability they're they're not bad Yeah, I thought it was going to be the end of this this episode. We've got one more two hour uh, two hour segment for this uh, for today's stream, and then uh, we're we'll calling it a day. So we'll finish around. It's two hours and three minutes, so we'll finish up around around. Uh, around 10 o'clock just after about quarter after 10 basically but I guarantee you we're gonna get the griffin hunt in yeah I'm just trying to maximize how many of those uh, warriors of Artemis we can recruit there's a cap for it I think we've only got one Looks like we've only got five right now. I'm pretty sure we can get eight. Yeah, you know what? That wasn't a bad deal. Why not take a little bit of gold? We've got extra of the other resources. Gold, there's only so much gold as a resource, and we're pretty low on it. And there's certain things that you need I you need gold for. I think there's certain units that you need gold to recruit them, like your elite units. I'm pretty sure need gold, bronze, and food. Whereas your cheapest units just need food. Glory beckons. Words win through. 
All right, home stretch. It's been a long day. Great deeds. Divinely blessed. Giant spearmen are one of my favorite units. They are pretty cool. I can't wait to get. Um, I wouldn't mind putting together a giant stack. So they seem to function better with um, in combination with other units. Oh boy! The hunt, mythic expedition, the sacred griffin hunt. At another time, surely this place, the gigantic heads. All right. I guess we're, we're not going to read that. Here we go, boys. <laughs> Your enemies are shrouded in darkness. We don't know what we're up against here. It says the balance of power is even. Buckle up. Sometimes one would see them circling high above. It is safe distance from which to gaze upon them, and sometimes one would come walking right into the settlement, wings folded, and deposit a mangled corpse at a particular doorstep. Beautiful settlement. Such a majestic landscape belies the danger that awaits you here, in the mountainous home of the Griffin Patriarch, a true monarch of the sky. Taming such a beast will be no easy task. No easy task indeed. Worse yet, you trespass here on Arimaspoi land, and they will stop at nothing to prevent you from stealing away their treasured prize. Hmm. I'm not a big fan of these quest battles where you don't get to deploy your units that they're deployed for you and it's a mess and you're under attack right away um, yeah not a huge fan of that it's gonna be a little bit chaotic here in this first bit oh we got a griffin landing. How many griffins do we got here? One, two, I see three. There's the main griffin. Oh shit. Okay, that's our cavalry unit. Never mind. Oh, okay, those are the uh, Ariaspoi uh, reinforcements. So those are our, those are the Cyclops. Um, uh oh, that wyvern. I'm just trying to get organized. That, ooh, that's, there's the griffin. That's the, uh, the mama griffin. But, uh, oddly enough, she's attacking the spear unit, the one spear unit that we've got. I mean, we've got to, so what, what, ideally, what we'd like to get is the giants, the giant spearmen to hold, uh, hold her back. But I'm still trying to get organized. Like, that, you know, I don't know. Like, sort of an artificial way of increasing the difficulty, not allowing, not allowing the player to deploy in these quest battles. Yeah, just trying to turn around and, and deal with the situation. Though it's a, yeah, it's taking a lot of damage from our, our range units there. It's a big target. 
the uh, the mama griffin. I think we're getting it, getting it, getting her to back off the baby griffin. Yeah, now that we're a little bit organized, the frantic uh, beginning of the battle looks like looks like we're good. Oh yeah, oh yeah. That thing, it better get out of there. And the, it's uh, fighting with the giant spearman there as well. It's not gonna do. It's not gonna work out well for for that baby griffin. Yeah, the main griffin, the mama griffins, retreated back. Looks like, looked like it was regaining some of its health there. Yeah, now that we're getting organized, shouldn't uh, shouldn't be too much of an issue. Though we don't know what else is here um, defending them. Just cover the flank there. Yeah, the music is good for this game, but it's very repetitive. That's my only uh, only complaint. That it's, there's not enough variety for it. But it is uh, it is solid. It does fit the mood, though. I feel like in this particular part of the battle, the music is a little bit more intense than what's actually actually happening in the battle. So I guess we just move forward. It doesn't seem to be anything. Oh. What the hell was that? Oh. Okay. But was that Griffin still alive? All that time? Huh? Uh, repel the Griffin and its kin. Chase after the Griffin. Okay. Got to chase after the Griffin now. I'm gonna uh, circle around the other side and get these guys in position. I just want to get the army. Information before we go uh, a chase in the Griffin. Whoops! Just hit the melee mode. I do that all the time. The freaking uh, the hotkey for melee mode is F, and it's right beside the uh, the control for the camera, which is D. But I, yeah, I don't know. You guys know that. I don't think I'm alone in uh, in hitting the. Uh, melee mode key by accident all right I'm swing around be dangerous a little bit to get caught in um, in the middle here potentially It's, I gotta tell you, it's nice to have some cavalry units, though, in a game where, you know, cavalry is very, very limited. Oh, shit! What the hell did they... They just, like, appeared. I don't know if that's because of our line of sight, or if they just... They, did they just get beamed in? <laughs> What the hell? What was that? Like one second, like they weren't there, and then the next second, they were there. Bonifix says, I "Never use hotkeys." Yeah, I, you know, probably should turn that particular hotkey. Oh shit! Where did these guys come from? Did they just, did they just get beamed in? There was nobody there, and then all of a sudden, they're all there. What the shit? But there's... There's a lot of them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 16 units on this side, and there were a bunch of units on the opposite side. But there's a, there's a couple of, a couple of hotkeys that I use, like the R 
are the uh, changing the the speed of the unit. I occasionally use that, but usually, usually preemptively, like um, when I'm setting up, when I'm on the march, when I've got an army on the march, I'll occasionally use it. Uh oh, our giants could be in trouble there. It looks like they're all. I think they're all cavalry units. Look like they're all cavalry spear units. Uh oh. Yeah, this situ oh my god, there's a lot of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I think there's twelve of them over there on that side. Thirteen. Ooh, I think there's Somewhere in the range of 25, maybe more of them. Hmm. I think they're all cavalry units. Yeah, these guys in behind here, I think, are in, in trouble. Unless they can get back to the rest of our forces. They're in big trouble. And our forces are kind of stuck in... Uh, uh oh, we've got some archers that look like they're not on guard mode. Oh, oh, maybe I'm moving them up. Okay. Yeah, trying to trying to get them over there to try and save those other units. The rest of the army should be okay so long as the line holds. Though it looks like yeah, the line should hold. Those yeah, it looks kind of deceptively thin, but the the way that the the formation is yeah they should, though Odysseus, <laughs> Odysseus what are you doing man get out of there and yeah, he's Odysseus is kind of out in his own he seems to be holding it holding his own if we were if the Griffins were to attack us right now I think we'd be fucked uh, but the Griffins seem to be just chilling just trying to get in a better formation here Trying to get these guys back to the rest of our forces and, and trying to help them with those archers there. The the giant spearmen are getting a lot of work done. That unit's shattered. Odysseus is in a clusterfuck there, but he, it doesn't look like he's taking a ton of damage. And they're blobbed in there pretty good. We should they should melt pretty quick. A lot of units in the back look like they're shattering. I think the initial, it looked pretty scary at first, the way that they just popped in there, but I think we've got the situation under control. Those units in behind took a while. Yeah, those units in behind had gotten over here more quickly. We might have been in trouble. Our back flank might have gotten overwhelmed. But it looks like the giants in combination with our uh, our yes boy friends. It looks like we've got the situation under control. And this, yeah, our our archers melted their units, though we've got a bunch of them clumped in there still. We're running, we're starting to run a little bit low on ammo though. There's one thing to be concerned, but our our sword skirmishers are still in pretty pretty decent shape. Yeah, I don't want to say we're going to be okay because we've had some battles in this campaign where I thought it was over. I thought it, we, we had it. It was a lock and we ended up losing them. So I don't want to... Yeah, and if we run out of ammunition, these guys up here look like they've still got quite a bit of ammo. Yeah, we'll, we'll be okay. Oh shit, our giant spearmen are running off the field. I think they've rallied. It looks like they've rallied. It's hard to tell. I think this flank is... Um, I think it's okay. Just the archers over here. Some of them are running pretty low. Some of them are out of ammo. I oh, know. Nobody's out of ammo. Some of them still have quite a bit. 
think we're okay. I, I thought we were running really low on ammo down there, but I think we're okay. And up here, yeah, we got heaps of ammo up here. In this situation, even though we don't have much of a front line for those archers. Ooh. Shit, actually, this... Ooh, ooh. <laughs> this this might get ugly. We've got no one to hold those uh, those cavalry back. Though are they? Maybe they're not cavalry units. You guys, turn around. Shit. Uh, we've turned that flank. Get a couple of these guys over here. Hurry, hurry. Actually, I don't think those are cavalry units. Giants came back, that's good. And the area boy are holding the back line there. Just basically sacrifice them to hold the back line. Let's we'll get back into formation, boys. And it looks like we're gonna. Uh, they caught some of the archers, but we managed to save a few of them. God, that could have been bad. I thought those were cavalry units. Lucky, luckily, they weren't cavalry units. Those were cav. We, we, we would have lost that whole line of archers, and it would have um, would have made things a lot more uncomfortable here. But I think so long as there's not. Oh, where are you? where are those guys going? What are you doing up there? Well, I guess they're chasing those guys off the field. That's not necessarily a bad thing. Unless there's another another big bunch of reinforcements to come on the field, I think we think we've got this situation under control. Still a few units at full strength back there, but we've got ammunition. Bonifix says, "You know a feature I would love: choosing with allies, join a war. Uh, now it's either all or none. But especially now with alliances being rewarded, no point to have someone across the world join." Yeah, no, that's uh, that would be interesting. I, I feel like there's a lot of stuff that could be done in that respect. One of the things I've kind of uh, been advocating for is um i'd like to see situations where you know if you've got okay so survive the am air mass boy ambush yeah it was not an air air mass boy ambush they just beamed right in or they just peered out of nowhere one second they weren't there and then the next second they were everywhere um it's quite the ambush yeah just beam Beam me up, Scotty. Um, but I, I'd like to see situations where um, where you've got like three armies in the same area and uh, all of a different faction or, or even four armies all of a different faction in the same area and if there's a battle like all four armies be on the battlefield have a the potential for a free-for-all uh, battle and alliances can be uh, necessarily drawn or betrayed in the actual battle I think that would be kind of a cool thing to add to the game and you know you could program the AI in a way that their behavior in those type of battles reflects whatever faction they are like Skaven Skaven in a free-for-all if they've got an alliance someone with someone who could potentially turn on them I think that would uh, that would add a whole new flavor of spice for uh, for Warhammer, and you know they put free for all battles in 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 the multiplayer. So why not have them on the campaign? Why aren't free for all battles on the campaign? You don't necessarily need a free for all map, a special free for all map for a campaign battle. That's a free for all. Um, yeah, I think it would be interesting if we got free-for-all campaign battles. Especially now with this uh, new multiplayer mode with, um, you know, eight uh, eight players playing it at the same time. Anyway, this battle is still going. They still... Though it looks like most of their units have shattered. I think we got it. Okay, we've got the check mark for surviving the ambush. What have we got left to do? Are we supposed are we supposed to lasso the griffin? Because I don't I don't want to kill it. I I want to uh, I want to capture it. How do we capture it? Stop! 
steal these guys. There we go, they shattered. Ooh, that got pretty that got pretty spicy. Look at the carnage on this battlefield. We uh we lost a lot of good soldiers here. Some of our allies and whatnot. But it's uh I don't know, it's a little disappointing, you know, that the Griffins didn't, um, you know, the, the Griffins attacked us initially, and it was only, what, three Griffins that attacked us, and then, and then we got ambushed, and the Griffins just sat there, like, the, well, during the ambush, the Griffins, we should have gotten attacked by another wave of Griffins, in my opinion, I think it would have added another layer of um of challenge to the to the mission or the expedition but i guess i shouldn't be complaining looks like we've um looks like we're gonna get the w here let odysseus take her down Bring death. this battle is your last <laughs> to him Given out threats to a giant uh, bird beast. Oh my gosh! Look at that. That's gorgeous. That's gorgeous. Is your funeral pyre prepared? Beautiful design. My goodness. The backgrounds and the ambiance, the uh, the terrain in these Total War games. They really. I mean, the unit models sometimes like the the griffin unit model it's 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 a little bit on the cartoony side maybe it's not bad but it's it's definitely not their uh not the, the ca's best work but my goodness these um look at that grass how lifelike it is the way it's waving and stuff and uh look at that background my goodness that's one of the most gorgeous uh, backgrounds I've seen in a in a Total War game. Got the rainbow there, waterfall, beautiful uh, sunset, mountains in the background, griffins flying around. Run while you still can. Forest there, goodness gracious, they uh, they nailed it with this settlement. Uh, my my camera work leaves a little bit to be desired though. <laughs> there we go. Pontifex says that is amazing. Yeah, I think I might actually, I might actually clip this and uh, release this video as a uh, edit it a little bit, and we'll release it as an advertisement for this series. So this series is going to be playing Sunday to Sundays, Sundays to Thursdays in the morning, 11 a.m. Eastern time. Uh, for about four hours once we get into uh, a routine there may be a couple days where we may miss a you know there may be a bump in the road here and there but Sunday to Thursday 11 a.m. for four hours until full map completion so if anybody out there is uh, interested in watching a wee bit of uh, Total War Troy Mythos need a Troy Mythos fix uh, we got it here Ragnarok Total War. Bonifix says even has a rainbow. Yeah, the rainbow is solid. It, it the, the the rainbow really puts it over the top. You know, the sunset and everything, the mountains, the waterfall. You see that in other other Total War landscapes, but what really really puts it over the top is the rainbow. Is there a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow? That's the question. And that, that's pretty cool too, where where they've got their their nests and stuff and the the caverns there. Freaking uh, top notch. We're we're gonna have to maybe play some multiplayer battles on this uh, on this map maybe one of these days. Your best is not good enough. Good God, it's taking it forever to take that thing down. 
Odysseus, come on, man. We thought you were a better shot. Oh my god, my camera work. Huh? It's atrocious. Yeah, maybe take some time, edit it down, edit this battle down to about 10 minutes. And then what we'll do is we'll, uh, maybe I'll put in like a little bit of, uh, a little bit of sound effects or something. And, um, yeah, advertise, uh, advertise this series, try and try and see if I can get a little traction that way. I gotta, I gotta start trying some different things for the channel. Definitely taking a new approach coming back. Uh, <laughs> Bonifix says taking my photo without consent. <laughs> um, what I was, I was in the hospital recently, right? Um, as it has to do with my, um, my recent, uh, uh, my recent, uh, troubles and tribulations. But anyway, I was in the hospital recently, right? And there's cameras all around in, in, in the place where I was being, being kept. And, um, uh, you know, like the, there's security cameras and stuff, but there were signs up, no recording, I forget the exact wording, but no recording without consent, no recording or photos without consent. And I'm like, you know, do these people appreciate the uh, irony of this? You know, I didn't, I didn't give their consent to photo me, to record me. Uh, you know what I mean? So I, I'm just like, oh shit. The Griffins came back. There's four of them. Holy shit, this is not over. The Mama Griffin's getting pretty pretty low on health though. But uh, the Baby Griffins, there's like four Baby Griffins over there. Defeat the Griffin. There's a fourth, there's a fourth check mark we need, brother. Oh, there we go. Boom. <laughs> we didn't have to defeat the baby ones. Once we defeated the main one, they all, uh, really had number 14. Whew. Cadmian victory. What's a Cadmian victory? Is that Peric? I, I guess that's the, the Peric victory for this. Good God, there was a lot of them. Holy shit. Holy shit. Lives as bar. Holy shit, lives as bar to 229 gold. That's not bad. Not a bad deal. Spearmasters of Elysium? Yeah, why not? Get a little bit of extra coin. Gold plus 300. In an enemy's heart than marching into battle there it is. The, pride the Griffin and majesty of the Griffin. Not bad. Yet if they are to fight alongside their historic foes, the Adamaspoi, they must first learn to coexist. Building Adamaspoi camps and Griffin eyries will surely aid in forging harmony between the two. The Griffin Patriarch and its offspring will roam the skies on your behalf. Groovy. To the winners, the spoils. Glory awaits us.
Pardon me, guys. Oh, Glory there's my boat. Us. There's my boat and my longhouse. Oh my god. Icing Shining Death. That's the, the name of my boat. It's a uh, frost dragon, and there's the. Uh, god, man, oh man. Pontifex. We gotta. We gotta do a trip to Helsinki, brother. Sorry, let me get the uh, <laughs> campaign back up for you. Great deeds. All right, this feels like what do we what do we got for time left? We got about an hour and a half left. Seems like uh <laughs> oh, you missed it? <laughs> uh, I just showed a clip of uh, here. I'll, I'll bring it back. Up. Uh, what boat? Here it is. Uh, bu -bu 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 uh, right there, brother. There it is. Icing death. That's my boat sitting in the harbor in Helsinki. And right there, that's my longhouse. Once Finland joins NATO, then I'll go. <laughs> Man, I don't know. It's uh, everybody wants to join NATO nowadays, but uh, Putin, you know, rightfully so, gets getting a little bit of nervous. The, the problem is right now we we're living in a world with three superpowers, and um, they all want to be the lone superpower. Um, and um, I don't know. Nobody wants to be left out of the party, kind of thing. So I don't know. Hopefully it doesn't uh, escalate uh, further than it already has. But my gosh, tensions in the world right now. You know, especially after, you know. Why is it in Helsinki? Um, um, because my ice princess is in Hel Helsinki. So that's uh, that's her ride. I, you know, let her, let her, I loan out my boat to her, you know. Go visit, take the canoe out for a spin and, uh, you know, go visit. She gets to, uh, you know, she by rights she gets to keep the, uh, the big old boat. But I got I got more than one boat, Pone effects. More than one boat. Here, let me. Uh, do I have it in here? I don't think I have it in here right now. Shit, I don't have it programmed in. But uh, ever heard of the Blue Nose? That's my other boat. That uh, that boat's fast, but uh, um, you know what? <laughs> Let me find a video for you, Pontifex. While this plays in the background, um, fighting for air. One of the absurd things I I, I did. Oh. Uh, <laughs> um, just give me like two minutes to find it. Videos. Uh, Foes, beware. <laughs> yeah, blue nose. Sharp of mind. So of this is uh, no the the convoy that showed up in. Um, The convoy that showed up in um, in Canada. The con when, when I first got word of the convoy, excuse me. This is uh, this is my reaction to getting word of the convoy. What the hell? The volume's too low. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I gotta I gotta learn how to. Uh, yeah, I've got a lot to learn with my stuff. But anyway, that uh, yeah. I I just I I don't know. I love this. Um, this is a live camera in Helsinki, and I love um I love this harbor. It's a beautiful harbor, and I don't know where this boat is headed or where it's where it's uh what the plan is for that but i would love to catch it when it leaves harbor and find out where uh 
where that bad boy is headed. Glory awaits us. But anyway, let me get the, the, the game back up for you guys. I'm gonna take a one last stretch, and we've got about an hour and a little Ready bit out. left. A little bit, a little bit less than an hour and a half. So I'm gonna take probably ten minutes here, and uh, we'll try and finish strong. Maybe, maybe get another tea or something. Odysseus the Cunning. With sword and with wit, I have a plan. I live for battle. Odysseus of Ithaca. Favored by Athena. Enemies beware. Get going. March to glory! Victory has come our way. Odysseus the cunning. With sword and with wit. Best foot forward. Discipline pays off. Odysseus of Ithaca. They'll fall to us. For Ares. Victory beckons. I pledge my loyalty. I'll make my mark. I'll win. Or die trying. Favored by Athena. We will go down in history. Odysseus the Cunning. State your orders. We can all be proud. Speak to the gods on your behalf. Mr. 
Mistress of Portals. By my wits. Fighting fit! Glory beckons. Never faltering. To victory! You can count on me! Companion of Ares! On the march! We have arrived! With courage! With sword and with wit. We earned this. A well blazed wit. I have a plan. I keep the rituals. Shining Odysseus. Wisdom in war. I love a challenge. Odysseus of Ithaca. I live for battle. Hero material. Favored by Athena. Victory awaits.
Get this ship underway. Odysseus the Cunning. They'll fall to us. With sword and with wit. To see. All hands. Skim the waves. Where is Odysseus headed now? Guys, I'm going to be kind of honest. I, I'm a little bit pooped. Um, I, I wanted to provide commentary for this whole whole thing as much as possible, but I, you know, it's been a long day for me. Ship I recorded uh, a couple of hours this morning, and we've been going for about ten hours, so we're about it's about a twelve-hour day for me at the moment. And counting, we've got one more hour left on the tape, approximately. Um, an hour and 15 minutes left on the tape. I think for the next um, for the next hour, I think uh, I think I'm just gonna lie down, and it's gonna be uh, without commentary. Um, so enjoy the gameplay, guys. I'll come on for the last uh, 15 minutes or so and uh, do my sign off, and then we'll uh, we'll come back tomorrow morning, 11 a.m do the uh, the next part of this bad boy and just get this uh, get this Awaiting, come on. content up on YouTube and get back to some live gameplay on Monday but yeah Griffin is recruited interested to see that uh, bad girl in action look at that. and uh, has uh, special skills that you can unlock at various levels so uh, cool cool um, unit special unique unit you can only get one of these griffin patriarchs in the campaign uh so i'm be interested to see uh how that uh that bad girl performs but it should should uh most definitely uh change the dimension of our sieges so guys i'll, I'll come back the last couple minutes of the campaign enjoy the gameplay Divinely blessed. War is my business. I know their weaknesses. I'll make my mark. Defeat is unacceptable.
Savage and Strong Tactics. They'll fall to us. War makes the man. I have a plan. King Odysseus. Might prevail. the sacred fires. To war! Fighting for Ares. To battle. Awaiting orders. I live for battle. Off we go. They'll fall to us. It will be epic. Set in course. I'll win or die trying. For glory! We've docked. State your orders. Glory awaits us in Ares' name. Fighting for Ares. Under sail! For Ithaca. We will claim victory. I'm coming! 
Breakers away! I'll be in my cabin. Praise Poseidon! Never faltering, glory beckons. Awaiting commands. Accurate knowledge leads to faster progress. Make way. We'll move soon enough. I live for battle. I pledge my loyalty. Osman! Go down in history! Forging war! I love a challenge. Wisdom in war, sharp of mind. Questionable, but effective. People deserve the truth. Well, a truth. Odysseus of Ithaca. War is my business. War makes the man. Victory beckons. Destiny unfolds. Right now. Get this ship underway. By my wits. Glory awaits us. We will claim victory. Favored by Athena. Odysseus the cunning. Ever faithful. Land ahoy! I pledge my loyalty. Landfall!
I'll make my mark. It will be epic. for action. With sword and with wit. Foes, beware. Companion of Ares. Fighting fit! Shining Odysseus. Are you so inadequate in war that you must bargain?
I have a plan. They'll fall to us. Odysseus of Ithaca. I know their weaknesses. Favored by Athena. To victory! Let's hear some of this legendary wisdom then. Sacrifice and prayer, we court the gods. To war! As ordered. I'm on it. Forging war! We may as well speak now.
Wicks. I'll win. I'll die try. Ithaca's Lord. I love a challenge. Great deeds. I'll make my mark. Odysseus the Cunning. I accept that words also have their place in war. This works. Defeat is unacceptable. Never faltering. War is my business. will fall. Nothing is a... The unseen threat is the hardest to combat.
with sword and with wit. I have a plan. By my wits. Hero material. Courage and strong tactics. Sharp of mind. Odysseus of Ithaca. It will be epic. Favored by Athena. Poseidon protect us. To battle. I'll win or die trying. We will go down in history. Ship moving. Hitting the road. Under sail. Glory beckons. To see with courage. Anchors away. Odysseus the cunning. I love a challenge. Get going, man. We have arrived. Lord of the hunt. With sword and with wit. to live. Divinely blessed. War makes the man.
I have a plan. Man or beast, all are mere prey. Ends justify means. Fighting for Ares. My mark. It will be epic. You can count on me. Odysseus of Ithaca. Favored by a few. Words win through. All right, boys. Sorry about that. I needed a, I needed a good little rest there. It's uh. We've been going strong for 10 plus hours, 10 and a half hours, and uh, I did do two hours of recording earlier, so that's 12 and a half hour day. We're on the home stretch here. We got about, we got 37 minutes left. 37 minutes left. That's nothing. Nothing. Home stretch. Um, and then we're back tomorrow. With another 11 hours <laughs> hopefully we accomplish more in the 11 hours though um we did pick up the griffin uh so that's pretty big we've got elite archers in the movie uh in the army uh who is this guy i aggie aggie Keros? who's this fella
But we are, uh, yeah, while things I have been, there have been a back. number of setbacks. Number of setbacks. But um, I think uh, things are shaping up and I'm headed to uh, the Cyclops, uh, Cyclops Island. So we've only got four settlements. Turn 44. <laughs> Turn 44. Four settlements. One settlement every 11 turns on average. Good God. <laughs> oh, and considering that you start with one settlement, that's even worse. This is one of my worst, one of my slowest starts to a campaign. My goodness. But uh, when, when we get back to live, I guarantee you guys, when we get back to live content... It's gonna, we're gonna pick up the pace. It's gonna be rumble time. I guarantee it. I guarantee it. We're gonna turn this campaign into an unstoppable force and conquer the entirety of this map. Looking forward to it, boys. Really, really looking forward to it. But yeah, it's been a good day good to see everyone i know it's not like this is not the format of content that i'm going to be putting forth but this was an experiment and i'm just seeing the experiment through um and it's a campaign that i want to go back and finish may our dealing and, be uh, honest and sincere yeah but uh, but don't expect this type of thing to be a regular thing on the channel we'll, we'll normally be playing live campaigns from you know start to finish kind of thing uh for the most part there'll be i will be pre-recording some series um i i have that planned but i'll be pre-recording it with content and it'll be the type of thing that i release on the channel as a continuous stream and it'll be the type of thing that I release on the channel when I want to take a break from the channel, basically. So, like, I will, um, you know, the type of thing that I can just leave the automated stream running and I can um, I can have a nice rest and um, not really worry about it. Like, the stream can basically run itself. So, I'll be doing stuff like that in the future because, uh, yeah, just to, to try and generate as much energy behind the channel as possible and try and generate as much um, you know possibility for exposure um, I want to sort of develop a oh, reputation as the uh, the Total War Iron Man is kind of one of the uh, reputations I'm uh, <laughs> I'm going for because right now right now I would say I've probably got a reputation for uh, Total War Yahoo, um, you know, every campaign is a possibility for disaster, but that's uh, that's going to change very, very quickly. I, uh, yeah, when I, the thing is, when I'm focused in a campaign, and when I, you know, once I've gotten into a Total War game and I know and I understand the mechanics, and I'm learning the game more and more, like every time I'm playing, I'm learning more and more, and I develop a, a mastery of the game in a certain sense. I and I, I stay focused. I can do some pretty, pretty awesome stuff. I think I can. Uh, yeah. Anyway, I don't know. I think there, there's definitely. I've got a, I've got a lot to prove. Um, and over the next couple of months, I will be trying to prove my metal that I can. Uh, I can compete as a content creator with the elites. Um, that's what I believe. And that's what I want to come out to improve. So, I mean, this this campaign, this is uh, old old content that I'm, you know, breathing a little bit of new life into. But the quality of my content, I think, is going to both in terms of, of gameplay, my ability in the game, and, tr and in terms of production value, I, I think is going that. to. Uh, I, I want to continue to raise the bar. And uh, yeah, uh, you know, as a as a streamer, I want to, you know, work towards the goal of becoming the best there is, the best there was, and the best of ever there ever will be. My my uh, my wrestling hero, Brett the Hitman Hart, good old Canadian boy, Calgary, Alberta. But that's kind of you know not necessarily you know I 
there will never be a Total War player that's better than Legend of Total War. He's just, you know, it's, it is what it is. He, he is going to go down in history as the best ever. Um, and I don't think, um, you know, I don't think that'll ever change. Um, but in terms of streamers, streamers, you know, I would say the best streamer out there is Dr. Disrespect. And that's, that's where I want to head. That's, you know, that's the bar right there for, uh, streaming ability, whether or not my ability in Total War, um, you know, it's never going to, it, it does, you know, to, yeah, anyway, I'm just kind of rambling, but, uh, big things planned for the channel. Um, and we'll see how it goes. I mean, maybe delusions of grandeur, certainly, certainly, but I've got a lot of time on my hands and there's a lot of stuff that I've had planned that I've wanted to do for the channel that I've never really had, um, had time to do. And I've got heaps of resources in terms of, of books and knowledge here. I want to tr start incorporating more and more of that stuff in the channel. I've got lots of ideas. And yeah, it's go time, boys. It is go time. The one thing I need is some, some paper. I'm, I'm running out of paper. I need paper, more paper for notes. I don't know. I forgot. Every time I go back to the apartment, I forget uh, something. And one of the... One of the many things that I forgot in my last trip was uh, they some fresh uh, sheets of paper. But anyway, I digress. I hope everyone's having a great night. I hope everyone's enjoyed this. We're uh, only two, three turns away from the settlement down there. Taking an expeditionary force. Looks like we're oh, we're taking some attrition on the high seas. Ooh, we almost they almost just got swallowed by that sea monster. Good God. This dude is, uh, yeah, he, he's got a timer on him. Six turns left. I forget what he does. I wasn't paying attention when, uh, when I recruited him. I was just, um, I was just up stretching a little bit and, and doing some dishes and tidying up around the house while we run out the clock on this, uh, this last section. Foe tracking. Okay. Upon acting against a foreign settlement, reveals on the campaign map the owner, factions, all other settlements, as well as all its characters. Holy shit. Orion is removed afterwards. That's, uh, that's kind of, kind of, uh, OP. Look at his eyes. Oh, 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 he looks like a badass dude. Not someone you'd want to run into in the middle of the forest when you're alone in the forest. <laughs> Definitely not. Uh, um, you know, especially if you're doing something wrong in the forest. Doesn't look, you know the very edge of the world it would be yeah it, it's too bad that this game is you know it's just a total war saga but it would be kind of cool if uh, they they released like an, an Atlantis expansion for this but obviously obviously that's never gonna happen but uh, Atlantis total war that would be kind of cool And I wonder what uh, I wonder what the next saga will be, the Total War saga. And I wonder if we'll get a Total War saga before we get the next historical Total War. Really curious to know. What? Yeah, and I wonder if what. Uh, I wonder if CA, if Creative Assembly is planning, planning 40k Warhammer. Total War, or if they're uh, gonna dip their toe into another area of um, of fantasy Total War. Omen, speak to me. Definitely like the Pantheon. I haven't quite, you know, grasped the the exact way all of this stuff works, 
But as you get deeper in the campaign and as you have more temples and priestesses, I would imagine it's um it's a lot easier. Yeah, see Poseidon. Trying to read it there. Um I'm pretty sure Poseidon, if you get it uh, to the max level, you can recruit the Cyclops. But uh, you might need the Cyclops Island, actually, because it didn't... It Hmm, that's interesting. I have to look into that a little bit more. Odysseus's Palace, why not? Well, it's been a good day. It's good to be back. I mean, I know it's not, you know, exactly live content, but I mean, technically, I, you know, I feel like I'm not exactly back just yet. We'll be back with live content later in the week. This is sort of live, pseudo live content. But tomorrow. Gonna drop a video, my first impressions of Warhammer 3. <laughs> like a month late. <laughs> Better late than never, you know? Yeah, I got a lot of ground to make up in terms of Warhammer 3 and understanding the game, but most of the stuff that's there now, I, I don't really care here to learn. But I'm, I'm really interested, interested to learn Kislev as a faction and uh, Grand Cafe. Those two factions. Gonna be some fun. Yeah, Angry Joe. Angry Joe uh, did his review. I watched it last night on Warhammer 3 and he was complaining about the difficulty of the game and I feel like CA is in a tough spot in terms of difficulty because the um, you know you at the top end you've got Legend of Total War who just breaks the game and just demolishes the AI every which way you know <laughs> you can imagine and then on the other end, you've got the casual guy like Angry Joe, who's a gamer, big time gamer, but a casual Total War player who, you know, plays on normal difficulty and finds normal difficulty, you know, tough. So you've got a really big gap in and between those and you're trying to continually make the AI more and more sophisticated, right? And um, do things that the player may or may not uh, expect and you know like I said at the top end you've got a guy that continually breaks the game um, yeah I you know I, I, I feel a bit of sympathy toward the developers uh, for the games I, the <laughs> I, I I'm a big fan of especially with um, your major settlements um, adding a little bit of extra garrison because uh, you know losing minor settlements is not such a big deal because they can be retaken with relative ease but losing a major settlement in a total war game and this one as well is in particular is a really big deal because as we've seen in this campaign how difficult the sieges can be but I, I think there's um, there's ways around the difficulty with the sieges um, that you don't necessarily want to um, 
take the settlements head on unless you, you've got overwhelming force. God, I can't wait to get in here and play this. This is kind of, for me, this is kind of like a big tease. I should have probably just started a fresh Troy, Troy campaign. But the thing is, where this campaign, the save file for this campaign is right now, the latest save file, it's at a spot where I really, really wanted to camp play the campaign. Like, my, my plan for this was to go down to the island of the Colossus colossus like consolidate the territory would have liked to take a little bit of more territory in and around ithaca but my my plan was never to invade uh greece you know if we can get on good relations with a lot of these greek factions we can um we can confederate i believe we can confederate most of them but um whether or not we're going to be able to do that remains to be seen because i think we're already kind of you know, on, on shaky grounds with some of them. But my plan was uh, to create more of an, a maritime empire and not necessarily just do something a little bit more thematic because we're playing as Odysseus and have more of an Odyssey type adventure, right? And so there's actually different ways for victory. Like there's the total victory, which, you know, complete uh, map, but you can follow along and get a Homeric victory, which we may do first and then continue, which actually we probably should do first and then follow along and uh, and do full map completion. We're definitely going to do full map completion and we should definitely try and get the Homeric victory. But my, my plan just personally as the sandbox experience, I wanted to hit the secret island there and uh, visit the I island of Colossus, which we're on route or on route to now. We're headed in that direction. And then after that, hit Kenosis and conquer Kenosis. Because I, I'm wondering, I'm not sure if the Minotaur is in this or not. I think there's a Minotaur in this, but I don't know. Um, so Kenosis is where we're headed uh, after, after we... Uh, after we consolidate the territory or the island after we secure the island uh, of the Cyclops so that is the plan and we're almost there yeah there it is Kenosis but I love oh my gosh this uh, I love this setting I'm a Big, 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 big fan of this setting. And um, I think this is the perfect setting for a mythological total war. And I hope, I honestly hope we get some more mythological total wars in the future. here it's one damage to all units from poison plus one damage for like what is it's five percent success chance mm. plus five percent casualty replenishment rate it's not bad but 12% movement range is pretty good. There's more movement range up there too, it looks like. Tracker. A lot of good options for the... Um, for the heroes and generals. A lot, of, a lot of variety as to how you can plan them out. in terms of what sort of builds you want to have for them. Decent amount of customization. Meticulous planner, eh? Discretion guarantee the unseen threat 
is the hardest to combat. They'll believe their leaders are incompetent. I have a plan. He's got a plan. We're almost there. Glory awaits us. How much time? Yeah, 15 minutes Close left. Beware. I think probably the next part, uh, very early on, we'll get the, uh, so tomorrow morning probably we'll, uh, we'll be doing the siege there, which will be our first, uh, our first look at the griffin in action, which should be, should be, uh, pretty good. I love a challenge. There's a lot of seagulls. I'm just noticing that. Look at the seagulls flying around there. There's a lot of them. It reminds me of uh, a little bit of Rome too. Yeah, you know what? And I, the griffin, I think I've got the griffin to like maybe level one where I am right now. I'm interested to see what the other special abilities it has. Is it definitely a cool unit? And it adds like a whole different dimension and flexibility to uh, to the army. And it, it's got some cool um, campaign mechanics as well. It, it there's a there's an army stance like a, a hunt like a griffin hunt or something that like significantly increases your army's movement range for a turn or two. Something like that. I forget exactly how it works. Actually, I'm not entirely sure how it works. I think we'll have to test it out a little bit. And then um, it's also got some. It's a. It's an agent as well. So it's also got some agent abilities. Wants my gold, my bronze. Uh, get this guy leveled up a little bit with a um, couple of agent actions and stuff while he's down there. I mean, might as well. It's relatively cheap to do that. The plus 10%, plus 10% critical success chance of all agent yeah but I don't understand that one the agents action points will not be drained if an action fails oh damn cold-blooded that's pretty good if he fails basically he gets another try let me think about that his action points won't be drained if he fails an action does that mean he can perform an action over and over again, or his action points are King Odysseus. are just like his movement range. That almost sounds to me like if he, if he fails, he can keep trying over and over again. <laughs> That's what it sounds like. I think when I recruited that guy, I didn't really understand what his, uh, I thought he was, um, yeah, 
I think that I thought he would, would be able to embed him in the army and use him as a uh, as a weapon in the army. Still, his ability is really cool. 14 units is a pretty big garrison, but we should be able to see all of their other... Because declaring war on them down here means uh, we, we've got to go to war with them up here. So we've got to consider that um, while Odysseus is... Uh, yeah, we, we are neighbors with them, so we got to consider... Oh, and that's a pretty big stack. 18. What's the garrison like in our minor settlement there? we got to be prepared, yeah. I think the uh, build the guard house here would be the way to go. Anticipate coming out of this well. I sanction. Yeah, that's um. Odysseus no doubt has some trickery planned. Oh shit! I forgot to. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness! I forgot to cancel that and. Um. Now we're gonna have to wait ten turns or suffer a pretty it big hit. Diplomatically, I don't know if I'm gonna sit down there for ten turns. My goodness, I so many common mis like so many like rookie Defeat mistakes in this campaign. Um, goodness gracious, you know <laughs> it's it's almost been like it it has been really hard for, for me to watch this because this is this is definitely I, I didn't realize how bad my gameplay was in this campaign until until today. I thought I thought the campaign was going relatively smooth. I remember having so much fun playing this and I'm just watching this and this campaign has been a struggle from the very beginning and it's been littered with mistakes heaps of mistakes rookie mistakes the type of mistakes that uh, you know at this point in my total war career my, my knowledge of the games you know, um, I shouldn't be making them, even if this was my first time, uh, my first playthrough of, well, uh, technically not my first playthrough, but my first playthrough of Mythos, my anyway. Wits. Yeah, a lot of mistakes, but... Sharp of mind. This army is gonna, this army is, this uh, a lot more competent. To see. Coming ashore. It yeah, here's the annoying thing with the Griffin, right? Like, I have the envoy in Odysseus's army to reduce the upkeep costs, right, of the units. But Not because possible. the Griffin counts both as a unit and as a hero, as like a hero, um, Ship docked. It, you can only, you're only allowed to have one hero in an army at a time. Victory so because we have the diplomat in the army, even though the diplomat doesn't count as a, as an actual unit in the army, we can't put the griffin in the army at the same time as the diplomat. Like we have to take the diplomat out. The diplomat's just in there to lower the upkeep cost. So it's a little bit annoying. What? Yeah, we're just reorganizing things before we make the attack. But the attack will be tomorrow morning. We're just wrapping things Enemies up. We've only got uh, a couple more minutes here. Six minutes. Basically Veil finishing up us. here for the night. want to thank everyone who showed up today. Stopped by to say hello. 
we won't be doing these kind of marathon streams every day like this is just sort of like just to get this old content up and out of the way and uh, to continue this campaign on Wednesday and then Wednesday on will be uh, pretty much live content moving forward we won't be doing we will be doing pre-recorded stuff as I've said uh, a couple of times today but it'll be a different format than uh, than this I interpret the will of the gods. and it should be it should be a lot better quality hopefully because this yeah is it's no a little bit eye-opening trickery planned maybe maybe <laughs> maybe I'm just realizing I'm a lot worse at these games than I've than I've realized that I've always my um, my impression of my abilities has uh, been quite a bit inflated Ancient Marines. Move a spy through the following region. Get a reward, Masters of the Sea. One of these, like, 12%. Wow, how long does that last for? How long does the reward last to? Last for. Plus 12% movement. It does. Doesn't say. That there's a time limit for the reward. Faction wide, twelve percent. That seems pretty extreme. Reward for just moving a spy to that uh, unit to that area. I don't think we have any free units or any available units nearby, though. That's the only shitty thing. Three minutes. I think it's just the uh, this end turn, and we're good for the day. So 11 a.m. Eastern time tomorrow uh, is the second part to this. The third part is on Tuesday. Both parts will be around 11, 10, 11 hours, and then Wednesday, Wednesday morning, 11 a.m. We'll do a four-hour live stream um, and uh, get some some real real work done we'll uh, pick up the momentum and uh, show off some I've been practicing I've been practicing all week and I'm feeling uh, I'm feeling pretty sharp with uh, though I mean practicing in a different total war game but I mean all the total war games are very similar and especially to with the newer total wars with the the, uh, the controls and the hotkeys have been basically you know they're basically the same in, in most of the Total War games, uh, the newer ones. It's just um, you know with games like Warhammer and, and this with the the heroes, you've got a little bit of uh, extra bells and whistles with the hero abilities and things like that. And it's just a matter of learning those. But the fundamental mechanics and gameplay are essentially the same for uh, across the board for all the newer Total Wars. And so many huge quality of life improvements in terms of um, how you control the armies in the games. And I'm excited. I'm excited to get back into this. Halt level up Poseidon. Yeah, Poseidon is a uh, movement range is powerful. I mean, all of these... Um, these, this pantheon it's pretty cool it's definitely a cool mechanic and they're all depending on what route you're going down you have um, quite a bit of nice bonuses for you it's got a decent amount of food and decent surplus of food We've got room to recruit some more troops 
Never faltering. Courage and strong tactics. To war! But yeah, that's just gonna be about it for today, guys. Um, a lot of fun. It's good to be back streaming, but I, I'm looking forward to getting back to more, you know, more of the usual commonplace type of uh, type of content. But yeah, helping hand just wanted fate. to get everyone, anyone who's interested in seeing this old footage, um, everyone caught up to the series. Uh, we'll be uh, sieging out. We should have a siege nice and early tomorrow morning. Taking on the Cyclops should be interesting. Hope to see you then, boys. Have a great night. Ragnarok uh, signing out.